Hello and welcome everyone to the third annual rivalry match between o the Ohio State University and the University of Michigan. Uh, some have called this rivalry match the eSport equivalent of the greatest rivalry match in sports. Um, I'm Brodo Baggins and I'm joined by Derek here for our first match, which is StarCraft. Yeah, pleasure to be here. Excited to commentate one of my favorite games. It's the first time we have StarCraft in the rivalry matches. I yeah, it uh, should be a fun one. Yeah. Uh, I hear both players are pretty hyped and uh, excited to get into this match. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. Um, I don't know if they're ready in the lobby. Um, yeah, uh, so I guess it'll be a few minutes before we get into game, but for player, for those that are at home right now that have never played StarCraft before, what are some basic explanations you could give before we head into the match? Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. So... Um, StarCraft, for those who are not familiar, is a real-time strategy game. So we're going to see players basically building uh, infrastructure, building a, a, an army base, uh, and basically creating armies to go to war against each other. And whoever uh, kills the opponent's structures first, all the, their structures, wins the game. Although most of the times we see that the game's ending a little bit sooner than that. Um, I'm going to be trying to explain the basics as we go along. If I'm told correctly, I think we're going to get to see all three matchups, which means um, in StarCraft, players pick between three races, Zerg, Protoss, and Terran. Mm -hmm. um, so in total, we, we get nine matchups. Um, uh, our player here at OSU plays uh, Zerg, and I'm being told that the Michigan player plays the three races. Um, so th for those who play Zerg or are familiar with Zerg, we're going to get to see all the Zerg matchups uh, today. That's going to be pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, that sounds quite interesting as we head into the game soon here. Um, any thoughts on, uh, I guess, uh, how matchups could potentially play between the races? Uh, yes. Um, so I, 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 feel, I think all the matchups are, are very different. Um, for example, when you play Zerg versus Protoss, a lot of times it's very counter-based where like a lot of Protoss units hard counter the Zerg units and you're going to be seeing them just trying to get that information game of who whether the Protoss can figure out what the Zerg is doing and, and vice versa. Um, whereas other matchups like Terran, they're more uh, micro-based. And here we, get, we start with the first game with a Zerg v Zerg. Um, in the upper right corner, we have the blue Zerg representing University of Michigan is Hellstorm. Yep. No. And uh, in the bottom left side, we have the Ohio State player, uh, Giga Jura. Uh, should be some interesting matchups here. Yeah, so, so this is a Zerg with Zerg. So we call this a, a, a mirror matchup. Both players are playing the same race. So they basically have the same set of tools to play against each other. Uh, this makes things um, very volatile. Uh, it, it, I'm interested to see, usually I feel like mirror matchups are more aggressive mm -hmm. uh, than each other because their, their economic bills kind of always hit at the, uh, at the same time. So if you know kind of what your opponent is doing, if he's going too greedy, um, it's easier to target those weaknesses. Uh, uh, so generally in mirror matchups, would you say the player with a bigger army or higher economy? Yeah, uh, so right now the, the players are picking their, their, their build order. And right away, if you see uh, the map is littered with this mineral and gas patches. And those are the places where you can create bases. And uh, the more bases you have, the more workers you can create. Mm -hmm. uh, and this leads you to more economy. So right away we see both players opting for a relatively early second base which kind of means they're not going for the most aggressive strategies, like they're not going for cheeses. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we might still see uh, something going on maybe a, a later on, like at midnight five or six. Um, right away, bo both builds seem to be pretty similar. If you see the supply is 19, supply to 20. Um, basically the same. Uh, Hellstorm's uh, spawning pool is a little bit early, and right away we can see the upgrade on metabolic boost that's going to make Serlings a little bit faster and eight Serlings right away. So you can see Serlings are army units. So for Serg, every time you create an army unit, you're not creating workers, Okay. Uh, which means he must be planning to use the army s uh, in some way. Otherwise, the army is just resources that are not being used. Uh, so to be efficient, I, I believe 
an attack is coming from the side of Hellstorm. Okay. Um, so do you say this this is quite the aggressive play since he's not uh, playing for the uh, economy economy build up? It is is definitely not a very economical build. Um, it's not the most aggressive one, but it's definitely something that Gigandura is gonna have to see. And we can see already pathing the Sirlings to avoid the overlords from from Gigandura. You can see his vision there. There's he has three overlords. And the way he passed the Sterlings, he can only see them coming until now. And what's the reaction by Gigandura? Right away, we can see eight Sterlings in the production bar. But there is almost no army here available. And this is going to be a lot of damage. Oh, man. Uh, what would you say is Gigandura's best uh, option towards? Well, well right now, we've got to focus on these attackers. Six workers already down. Gigandura just has to find time. The queens are important here. They have to find spaces. Sterlings are melee units, so really the, your best bet is trying to find those choke points where your queen can attack um, efficiently, reducing the surface area from the Sterlings. It looks like finally Gigandura managing to repel this attack. Um, but, oh man, that was a significant amount of damage we can see 16 workers to 19 right now Gigandura though all still ahead on workers and the supplies are even so overall this was mm, pretty even all things considered pretty good defense uh, uh, I will say okay um, so I guess did uh, Hailstorm receive any benefit from doing that early play then or it, it looks to me to be about even right now, Hellstrom pulling ahead a little bit. Uh, we gotta keep that eye in that number of workers uh, number. Uh, that will tell us roughly where the, econom the economic advantage is. Um, and it looks to be that even. So this, this right away is looking like a great first match between players. Um, in the production war, we can see that already Hellstrom is transitioning with a Roach Warren. That means that he's gonna try to get some more expensive units that are going to be able to trade more efficiently uh, in battles against Sterlings. Uh, and in the meantime, we can see some skirmishes here, but nothing big should happen here. Both players have a sizable army uh, trying to get that bailing to get a good connection, but good micro by Gigandura um, using two Sterlings to trade with the bailing. So both players, it seems like the game is going to stabilize after that, that opener. Okay. Um, so I guess we have some time here to maybe you go back to some of the basics here. Um, yeah, so right now we, we just came out of a, uh, an attempt and an attack from, from Hellstorm and both players are going to try to stabilize. Your default is usually always try to get more economy. With more money you can get more things. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why you can see already that Hellstorm opting for that third expansion uh, maybe thinking that Gigandura is a little bit scared after you know you, you get shaken off, you get you, you get attacked, and mm -hmm. then you're, you you think you need the defenses. So a very common thing is to say, okay, he's scared. I'm just gonna be greedy and and take the try to take the economic advantage now. Uh, so that third hatchery, we can see here there's there's three bases against two bases. So if Gigandura doesn't expand or attack soon, uh, Hellstrom is gonna start taking a little bit of an economic advantage. I'll expect and already. And as I said before, with the Roach Warren, that's, he's also trying to take that uh, um, technological advantage, mm -hmm. too. Um, so, I guess just looking at some of the basic stats here, what exactly does the supply entail, or is that the equivalent of the economy? Yeah, so the, the supply just means how many units you have in total. Okay. Uh, so that includes workers and army, and you can see in yellow it is the number of workers, and in orange is the, is the army size. So mm -hmm. usually workers is an indication of economy, uh, whereas army is an indication of your army. Okay. <laughs> uh, so that, that's two things that you need to keep in mind. And the third thing will be upgrades, which you can we usually just look at the production bar and see, oh, he's upgrading. Uh, he's doing the upgrade for roaches. So that's another investment they're doing to make their units better. Oh, right away with a little bit of a sneak attack by Gigandura trying to find some workers. Doesn't find a lot of workers here and instead finds the army. So uh, it was a great idea. I, could, I, th I think that caught Hailstorm off guard, but not finding a lot of damage regardless. Um, a big attack is coming up for Hellstorm. This is a great timing attack. You can see how he's timing the attack so it comes exactly when the Roach upgrade is about to finish. And 
Gigandura just doesn't have roaches of his own, so this he doesn't have the correct army to stop it, right? As I said, that reinforcements are arriving. Loses the hatchery though. Uh, but you can see here the positioning is not good for Gigandura. In this type of battles, whoever has um, the concave is the one who has the advantage. Like whoever is surrounding the other player's okay. army. So that's why you can see the blue circle is trying to spread the army to create this kind of circle around the, the red army. Uh -huh. um, and this is not gonna lie, this is looking pretty rough for Gigandura. Losing all the supply, trying to make some defensive structures. But this is looking pretty rough. Yeah, this is. Uh, Gigandura gives a GG and Hellstorm taking game number one. Wow, that was a quick, uh, quick attack by Hailstorm coming off of that surprise attack by Gigandura. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, it looked to things to be pretty even, but Gigandura kind of a little bit shaken by the first attack, uh, playing a little bit too passive. And uh, Hellstorm just taking advantage of that and going in straight off for a timing attack. Uh, great play by the by, by the players. Yeah, um, I think we'll head into match number two here shortly. But uh, what were your uh, biggest takeaways from that first map? Uh, my takeaways, I, I think if I were to give Jugandura a little bit of advice would be maybe a little bit better uh, scouting. Mm -hmm. Because there's a third res uh, well, yeah, a third resource other than mineral and gas in StarCraft, which is information. You want to know information is key. If you know what your opponent is doing, then you know what to do to counter it, right? Mm -hmm. So in particular in matchups like Cirque is Cirque, you usually try to use your overlords to, to your advantage. Cirque is a special race in that they start with a flying unit, which is really hard to deal with at the start. So it's really hard to prevent the player from just looking at what you're doing a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. Um, so Zerg particularly is a pretty good race for scouting. I feel out of the three races, uh, Zerg is excels particularly at just scouting players, playing passively a lot of the times, and just playing a reactionary style. Uh -huh. um, so maybe a little bit more of that. Um, but I, I, I don't know, as I said, I, I don't know if Hellstorm is going to try playing a different race. I, I am I'm told he... Um, also plays Protoss and Terrans, in which case the matchup, it would be completely different. Okay. Um, so, uh, in case he does play Protoss or Terran, um, how would the uh, Zerg player counter, or play into the uh, Protoss or Terran? Yeah, th th there is a complete different set of openers, so we are gonna check here, and right away we see here in the lower right corner of the map of Hardwire, we have the Red Zerg representing OSU is Gigandura. Yep, and in the top right corner, we have the blue, uh, I believe Protoss, right? Yep. Um, representing you, Mitch, uh, Hailstorm. Yeah, so this is PVC. So um, I myself, I am a Protoss player, so um, this is probably one of my most hated uh, matchups. I think I mentioned this before a, a, a little bit, but PVC. I feel it, is, it, it relies a lot on knowing, if you're the Protoss from the Protoss perspective, it relies on knowing what the Zerg is doing and um, kind of finding that right composition. Okay. Because um, Protoss units, a lot of them are really counter-based. Th there's this unit called the Immortal, mm -hmm. which deals absurd damage to armor units, which the Zerg uses a lot of times it uses roaches. Uh -huh. So if they go roaches, then you want immortals. But then if if the Zerg is going for a light army in the composition like Zerlings, uh, Mutalisk, then maybe you want something like Phoenixes, which are flying Protoss units that uh -huh. deal incredible damage against light flying units. Um, uh, so basically, uh, if you're playing Protoss here, you want to wait to start building up your army until you uh, so scout out there. So, so that's the tricky thing. So, so also, Cert is the, uh, as I said, is a reactionary race too. Mm -hmm. So, Certs have uh, the ability to pretty much explode their economy really fast. And in this matchup, it's up to the Protoss to try to slow. Th well, th there's two options: either slow the Cert down through an early attack, or 
go for an army composition that is too hard to deal with. That's uh, I, I think that's a more uncommon strat, but usually I will expect some sort of attack from part of Hellstorm uh, to try to do some economic damage, uh, try to see what the Zerg is doing. The attacks often double up as a way to scout what's happening. Okay. Um, and I, I should clarify that, that I think Protoss is should start attacking in a way that doesn't try to end the game outright, mm -hmm. but tries to deal damage to the economy. Just okay. try to hinder the amount of resources that you're getting. Okay. Uh, so here, right away, we see the key structure here for the Protoss is the Stargate. That means the Protoss is going to be opting for an air army instead of a ground-based army right away. Uh -huh. um, also, so everything else seems to be pretty standard. Uh, you can see that the Protoss often in this matchup specifically uh, puts their structures in a wall formation. And that's because Zerg units, a lot of them are melee at the start. So uh -huh. you want to prevent the units from getting into your base. And th that's why you do this type of wall formation. Okay. Uh, just, just to delay the, uh, the melee units. Well, it's to make your, your units more efficient. Because now with that one adept in, in that one spot, it can defend a huge amount of Zerglings. Okay. So it's a way to play more greedy. And right away, we see a plus one air weapons upgrade and a void rate from the side of Hellstorm. Gigandura, um, I don't think he has done much scouting, but right away, that, that attack will give away the technology uh, from the side of Hellstorm. So Gigandura knows that there is a void rate on the field. Um, so how would Gigandura go about countering that then? Yeah, so usually... Right now, Zerg doesn't have an amazing anti-air unit other than the Queen, which is a, a mostly a defensive unit. Since the Queen cannot, well, it walks really slow outside of Crip. Mm -hmm. uh, so I will expect uh, Gigandura to try to build up the Queen count and maybe transition into Hydralis, which is usually the unit that you would use to counter air compositions. Okay. Um, that being said, uh, uh, the I think lately in the StarCraft metagame, uh, Void Risk have been a quite a problem. It's kind of like that meme strategy that people complain about in forums. Uh -huh. So I'm sure uh, Gigandura might not be <laughs> very happy of seeing this, this Void Raid. Um, and right away we see some harassment going on. Um, as, I, as I mentioned before, right now the, the objective of the Protoss is really to bother the Zerg, uh -huh. not outright killing them. Uh, already taking down a couple of overlords. Each overlord is a hundred minerals each. So, you know, those things are up. You know, you yeah. know that, that that costs money, and you have to make them back again. Mm -hmm. uh, but Gigandura defending pretty well, not losing any queen right now. One is in orange life. But Hellstorm circling around, trying to find some angle that is undefended. It seems like he's gonna try and attack on the main base. So uh, is, is he just looking to maybe scout out or attack the refineries? He's or? he's trying to find workers okay. or a building, targeting the building, activating prismatic alignment. That ability is gonna make Boydris do extra damage to structures. You can see already losing a structure and a queen, and it seems that's gonna be about it. Um, that is interesting. Usually, when you do this type of attacks, you want to kill workers because that is what hinders the economy directly. Each worker is pretty valuable. Uh -huh. um, and targeting the spawning pool, you know, it's annoying, but it's not the biggest of deals, usually, I will say. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're trying to go to Hydras, because you're not trying to produce Sterlings. Um, so how... Uh, what, what structure was it that he destroyed there? Uh, the spawning pool. The, okay. the spawning pool allows you to upgrade your Zerlings and produce Zerlings. But against Earth Compositions, then you might not need Zerlings, although, you know, it's always nice to, to have a couple around. Uh -huh. uh, already finding a little bit more damage here again. Uh, getting another Queen. A two-prong attack here, attacking both on the main and on the third base. Gigandurian ready on both sides, um, losing three workers. But, I mean, this is very annoying from Hellstorm. And we already see Hellstorm behind is already at three bases. Um, and the Zerg is at four bases. So, uh, at three bases. So, in PvC, 
you if you're a Zerg, you usually want to have one base more than the Protoss. That's usually your target. You feel pretty good if you're in that position. Okay. If you're even... You're feeling uncomfortable, you know. It's playable, but it's not great. It's not the ideal scenario. So already looking pretty good for part of Hell's Term. The supplies are even to um, building up into a bigger air army, a very expensive army. We, we see some disruptors too. Those are um, units that create a huge AOE explosion on the ground. Uh -huh. uh, great at countering Hydra, so we're looking at um, very expensive composition okay. by Hellstorm. Um, so I know you said the win condition for the Protoss, is, or the early game for him, is to kind of harass the Zerg a little bit, not mm. look for uh, too much offensive capability. But uh, what would you say is the win condition for the Zerg player here? Oh, that is, the, the, the win condition usually for the Zerg player is to uh, get enough economic advantage to hit a good timing. Um, or build, uh, you know, uh, their best their best version of their army. Okay. Um, I don't know if they succeeded. This is this a lot of Hydras and... Yeah, Gigandura has some army, but they are spread around and already losing a lot of Hydras here. Workers going down, the main is in trouble. But Hellstrom decides to retreat, okay. Already doing five workers in damage, though. Uh, as I said, workers are your source of economy. Uh -huh. And yeah, each worker is worth 50 minerals, but removing workers also removes your ability to get more money. So they're, they're actually worth a lot more than 50 minerals, losing workers. Mm -hmm. Oh, a little bit of a run by attack by Gigandura, trying to find worker damage. Oh, targeting the pylon, though. But, uh... Good reaction by Hellstorm. Finds. Oh, targeting the disruptor. Oh, but that you see that huge shot killing all the Hydra Lizard. At least the good news is that Gigandura did find one disruptor in exchange, but not the not the best attack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh do, do you uh why, why exactly did he try to go for the pylon there? Uh, uh, that, that, that is, uh, that's a little puzzling. Usually when you see uh, certain run buys, uh -huh. certain are really good at killing workers. And if you lose them, it's whatever. There are 25 minerals each. And as I said, each worker is more than 50 minerals. Uh, so you just want workers usually, but he went for, for, for the pylon. And, but now he's gonna, he has a bigger trouble to deal with with this void race in the main base targeting the overlords. Okay, getting a Void Race. It's gonna get another one here. Void Race are expensive units. These are um, high-tech units, so you don't want to lose them specifically. Okay. But really, I, I kind of feel they have done their job at the same time. You can see in the supply bar, 139 supply to 147. You, we can also see that Gigandura are floating a lot of minerals, floating a, lo a lot of money. And that this is usually something that you don't want to do, because uh -huh. uh, money that is in your bank is money that's not being used. You want yeah. the money to be proactive. Okay. Um, so, so what's uh, what's one way he could use that money proactively? Uh, that's just using. Um, uh, uh, depends on this, this this strategy, but it could be used for a lot of a lot more hydrolysis, which would be very useful to counter in this composition. Where do you see this is? Um, the probably the most annoying style of protoss that you find uh, online, mm -hmm. which is a protoss that plays with a lot of defensive structures. If you see all the bases from the protoss, they are filled with defensive structures. But right away, Gigandra trying for a, an attack, but I don't think this is enough Hydras to, to deal with this amount of Void Rays, and the Void Rays killing a couple of Hydras does manage to cancel out the uh, fifth base now for the protoss, but... Um, Overall, that was uh, that was probably worth it. Yeah, losing a couple hydras for for for, th for the base. That being said, uh, Gigandura must be pretty scared looking at the void rate count. And if you see this void rate count, you know that carriers are on the way. Carriers are basically the most expensive um, protos air unit. Well, second more expensive because there's the mothership, but it's usually the the best Protoss unit that, 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 that you build late game. Okay. So, how much uh, 
How, how many minerals would that unit kind of cost? I forget. It's like 400, 300. Okay. Like 400 minerals, 300 gas. Something, something like that. Uh, but we, we see that um, uh, Hailstorm already has three of them. Up in two. And now Gigandura manages to find them. But you see here, it's so hard to find damage against Hellstorm because he has invested a lot of money in defenses in their bases. So basically, we call this like a turtle strategy. Uh -huh. You just fill your bases with defensive structures and go to your perfect army. Okay. It's not the most flashy style of play, but it's very effective. Because uh -huh. you end up with what we call a death ball. Yep. You get this unbeatable army that just marches across the, the, the field. Very hard to deal with, requires a lot of micro. And yeah, you can see here, Gigandura trying to find this damage. This time going for the workers. He's gonna find a couple, but that shield battery healing the workers at the same time. So, uh, I, I know you said that uh, Hailstorm could potentially be going for a death ball composition here. But what what is Gigandura's best uh, play towards countering uh, Hailstorm from achieving that stage? Yeah, so Gigandura is not teching to uh, hive tech, so Zerg uh, tech is in, in layers, and his army is just not technologically at, as advanced as Hailstorm. He's still using Hydralis, and we can see how hard this is to deal with here in this attack. Mm -hmm. uh, Gigandura just scrambling to try to find some damage, but this army is looking maybe a little bit too strong. He needs more sophisticated units, he needs Vipers, he needs Corruptors. Ah, uh, this is looking really rough for our Bokai player. And I feel a GG is on the way. Yeah, that is it. And Hellstorm takes game number two. Wow. Um, very, very strong play by Hellstorm. He's looking to be a very tough opponent for, 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 for Gigandura. Great. And, you know, it, it is so hard to play more than one race in StarCraft. So hats off to Hellstorm. That is uh, that, that, that is amazing. Uh, I, I, I try to off race often and your level, if you don't practice enough with all the races, the difference in level is so much. Okay. I, I feel like I play like bronze level when I'm playing like <laughs> off race. Yeah. So looking someone playing like three races at such a high level is, mm -hmm. is always like a treat. Certainly, and uh, it seems like Hailstorm is quite a high-level player by the looks of it. Uh, hopefully, Gigandora can get out a win here against, uh, I believe, Hailstorm might play uh, Terran here, right? Yeah, maybe uh, to complete the cycle. And this is... A, I, I don't think I've talked about Zerg versus Terran. I think Zerg versus Terran is a matchup of, of micro. There's a lot of mechanical skill involved in that. Uh, the reason is a, a lot of the... Terran units are very fragile, mm -hmm. and the Zerg units are also fragile. So what, what happens is that whoever, like, it's very easy to lose large clumps of units. Mm -hmm. um, so what, you will, you, what we might get to see is a lot of players trying to spread their army out or controlling them in a way to mitigate this area of effect damage uh, mm -hmm. abilities. Um, and this, I cannot stress out enough how hard it is to keep your army separated and, you know, controlling a lot of little groups of armies. Mm -hmm. And this is the matchup where you get to, like, experience um, that type of gameplay. So I am very excited to see. Um, I think in general, in, in the soccer community, I think people make have made polls and they say uh, TVC is the their favorite matchup to expectate. Okay. Uh, I believe we'll be heading into game three here soon. Um should be an interesting one, as you said. Uh, requires a lot of micro. Yeah, all right. And we are into game number three on Curious Minds. We have in the lower left corner the Red Protoss playing for OSU. Oh, I didn't read the chat. Did you um, read that? Yeah, I believe they're remaking for... Um, is it the wrong map? Or? I think so. It might have okay. been. Um, uh, this, is, this is very common. They're like uh, <laughs> uh, A lot of times people forget to put their rays, they, they, um, they, they, their map is wrong. Okay. Um, a lot of times, you know, StarCraft is also like a, a place where people upload their, their, their own stuff. Uh -huh. So people will upload like crawl maps that mm -hmm. have is like exactly the same name as the official map, but they change like an I to an L. Uh. And then they just mess something up. They make like one mineral patch, <laughs> like super like rich mineral patch or something, or, 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 or they will mess up with the game code there. Dang. 
Um, yeah, so, so it's always good to to to, to ch- check on that. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. That seems quite a lot to check for uh, yeah. trying to start a big match, but. Uh, uh, I think that was a bigger problem in the old days. Nowadays, you you see like the little uh, blizzard icon into it, but mm-hmm. it still happens. You know, when you when you did it a thousand times, you just click on the map. You say, "Oh yeah, that that looks like the correct map." Gotcha. <laughs> um, so I guess uh, going back to what you said about a lot of the micro plays, um, what would you say is like um, like a specific time frame? I guess that would uh, lead to. All right. Well, h- hold on to that. Let's uh, present the players first. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have in the upper l- uh, left corner, uh, we have the red Sir uh, playing for OSU is Gigandura. Yep, and in the bottom right corner, we have the blue Michigan player playing for Michigan, uh, Hailstorm. Ooh. Yeah, one way, one game away. This is uh, best of five. So already two games up, and yeah, indeed playing that Terran. Uh, so yeah, w- w- what I would expect here to see the most common openers that uh, that we see usually in uh, Zerg versus Terran is uh, the Terran going for a Reaper expand and the Zerg going for an expansion. As we see, the Zerg already opting for an expansion first. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of new players will feel uncomfortable not going for at least a little bit of economy, but Zerg players have optimized their opening so much that they know, oh, I can just take a new base right away without even taking my first uh, military structure, you okay. will say. Uh, Hellstorm, sending an SCV, this is a common strategy in order to get early scout. It's important to see this because a lot of Zergs, uh, especially if you feel they're going to go for like a very aggressive strategy, you want to know. And, and right away, you see, th- you see that hatchery, you know exactly what's happening now uh-huh. if, if you're a Hellstorm. He's just basically trying to get as much information as he can to... Yeah, get, getting some early information. Uh, the, the second thing is that in this matchup, a lot of Zergs will try to take even a third base okay. early. Uh, what you will see here is that uh, the first unit that the turn's going to uh, get out is the Reaper, which is, a, which is a unit that in an army is pretty useless, but is very fast, and it heals itself. Okay. So it's a great unit for scouting. And it, as you can see, it can jump cliffs too. So it's a great unit to get into the base, see what's happening, maybe get a couple of shots, make them you know, at least waste their APM a little bit. Uh-huh. And it's also going to try to check for the timing on that third base, because that's a very important thing. If the search doesn't go for a third base, that usually means they're going to try to attack you and end the game uh, relatively early. Uh-huh. So right away, we see the Reaper trying to find some space, finds the Serlings. There, this is where the micro starts. Four Serlings versus a Reaper, usually none of the players should lose a unit as long as the Serling stays on Crypt and the Reaper is being micro. Uh, so yeah, the, the Reaper just trying to find a couple of things. Good micro by Gigandura denying that scout because that Reaper really wanted to get, uh, well, get a lap around the base to see what's happening. Gotcha. Oh, trying to suicide the Reaper and it manages to do it. The Reaper survives. Oh, doesn't manage to jump that cliff. So so what exactly was uh, Hillstorm going for there? He was trying to, sac- well, n- not sacrifice, but trying to tank all the damage because the Reaper will heal itself if you micro it enough. Okay. But he just really wanted to get in there to see what was happening in the race because, okay. as I said, if, if the Zerg is going for a very aggressive strategy, you need to change your build. Uh-huh. And right away, I think because he, d- he didn't see this, uh, going for a bunker, that's a defensive structure for the Terran. So a bunker on the front, four Marines, uh, playing it uh, safe. Uh-huh. But we can see from the side of Gigandura that already not um, not particularly aggressive. It's going for a bailing uh, not just for a third, so maybe it will be. Uh, what can happen is what we call a bailing boss, so like a Serling and... Oh, wow! I'm surprised uh, Gigandura with that little run by forcing the Terran to do a quick retreat, which I was surprised given that there was a bunker with four Marines and this is like eight Serlings, but this is all, oh, more Serlings inbound and this could be very annoying to deal with for uh, Hellstorm. Uh-huh. Uh, right away we see that bailing strat, as I said, trying to find damage. The Terran doesn't even want to deal with this, just conceding, conceding the natural. Sometimes you just have to pick your losses. Uh-huh. And yeah, just trying to wait until you get the army to deal with this and already a tank 
And this is what Viterra needed to defend in the tank. As this unit able to hit those Serlings even from above the first, uh, the, the main base, a very long range unit. Um, and it looks like Gigandura might be transitioning out of this. You can see in the production bar already producing two more workers. Um, you would usually see more uh, Serlings if he was going to keep on the attack, but realizing that with a tank it might be too hard to kill the Terran. Uh, going for that third base and microing back up. And this already makes the game complicated because now the build order, like your your plan, is at least delayed uh, for either player. So mm -hmm. um, you are going to have to adjust if you're a Hellstorm. Hellstorm going for a drop. Uh, this is a common strategy for Terran to go harassment. Oh, but the Serlings found the drop. I don't know if Gigandura was putting attention. But if you look at the minimap, uh, you see that red, uh, that blue dot going across the map. Uh -huh. You should know that there is an attack incoming, but it's, it's really hard to see. This is a, basically you have to look at a little blue dot. That being said, Gigandura trying to find more damage. So the tank unit is quite effective for countering these smaller Zerg units. Then. Yeah, you can see that tank just doing so much damage, but Gigandura also finding damage there. Ooh, the, the, the drop also not work uh, deciding not to do the drop there because not finding the third base where where it will you will usually find the third third base finding it now it is on the odd spot on the triangle spot let's call it uh but no workers still in the third base gigandora should be able to defend this relatively easily loses one marine and the game should kind of stabilize as of now but as I said, TVC is a game where you will see like all these skirmishes. The Terran wants to do a little bit of damage. The Zerg wants to do a little bit of damage. Mm -hmm. and it just gets uh, pretty messy. Oh, but Gigandura is not putting attention. Yeah, uh, good move by Hellstorm beating the army. Oh, but the the Bailings are too slow. So uh, what exactly do the Bailings do? The Bailings are kamikaze units that will uh, do AOE damage on impact and die. Okay. Um, so they're good for sieging uh, t um, buildings and. Er no, well, th they're great against marines because you can see marines oh, are small okay. units. They are oh. light, so if you hit them in the center and they do not split the marines, uh -huh. you will kill all of them. And you can see already see the marines are all with low health because of that, but no more bailing. So there is not a lot of damage available for Gigandura, and already the Terran now sieging the third base for the Sir. And now is the turn of the Zerg to scramble a little bit. Usually the Zerg will want to like get a bigger army before doing that, because that tank just has such a big presence in the battlefield. Uh -huh. And you can just position it quite, yeah. quite a distance away. And already we see that Gigandura losing that third base. That is a big blow, and Hellstar not stopping there, going for the main base. With this double drop, but no, ta the tank is not available here, and it's on creep. The Zerg's units are significantly more uh, stronger when they are on creep, which is you know the goop around the the, the screen. Uh -huh. um, but already, this attack did more than enough damage to make up for it, and uh, uh, a very successful attack by Hellstorm. Going back, regrouping, maybe trying to go for an attack with a bigger army at a later time. We already see a two engineering base. Um, which means basically he's gonna try to macro into uh, the upgrades, which will make your unit stronger. Okay. Uh, and meanwhile, Gigandura just struggling a little bit to rebuild the economy. While the, the Terran already has the, the third command center, so going for the third base, um, poised to enter the mid game uh, very strongly. Uh, so, what sort of units is Hailstorm looking to produce here? Uh, so Hailstorm. The Terrans is a very versatile uh, race in that Marines are amazing units. They, they, they are good throughout the whole game. So I, I expect Marines to keep being pumped out. And all you need is supporting units, such as uh, tanks. Uh, you can produce more, more medivacs. You can start producing some liberators. Uh -huh. um, but right now, he's just content with this Marine attack. Uh, losing a lot in this drop, though. So uh, 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 a little win there for Gigandura, for sure. Uh, this drop not doing anything, losing basically two medivacs worth of units. 
So, um, what what is Gigandor? Is he looking to build more anti-air units here, or just more uh, bailing to counter the uh, Marines? Uh, on, unless you see units for the Terran, I, I, I don't think you need to worry about air units uh, okay. right now, sir. With Turkey, you just really want to deal with the uh, with the, a bunch of Marines, right? So. Uh -huh. Uh, a, a common composition that you will see would be like Serling, Baneling, uh, and Muralis. Muralis are great at having map control. Uh, they will also kill Medivacs, which is what heal the Marines, which in okay. turn, if you kill what heals the Marines, then they will, they will get weaker, right? Yep. Um, especially since Marines deal damage to themselves when they use their steam ability, which increases their attack speed, but they deals damage to themselves. Okay. Uh, so right away here, there's a small drop with four Widow Mines. Widow Mines are deployable units that will deal AOE damage. Uh, already we see a lot of damage dealt with these uh, with these uh, Widow Mines. 11 workers lost, and these are invisible. So now Gigandura has to find a detector unit, such as an Overseer or a Spore Crawler, in order to detect this, these units. But these Widow Mines, they will hide and they will attack every like 10 seconds. Okay. And they will deal like big AOE damage basically. They are great. They are people really like to just basically suicide them because one shot can kill like five workers and okay. that's pretty much enough. Uh, we see here another double drop uh, with what I assume are also uh, four Widow Mines. Uh, it looks like Gigandura is not putting attention. He's going to lose another 12 workers. And you can all, this is going to have a big impact economically for, for Gigandra. Already we see, see, we see it in the supply differential. It's 87 supply against 141. But still, Gigandura with a lot of money available, he definitely can make something happen. He just needs to find the... Um, the correct transition, stay, just staying in this Cerning Bailing composition is not finding a lot of success because the Terran is getting more and more, more sophisticated in, the, in their army now. Having Widow Mines, having tanks, having upgrades. But the, the, the Cerg just scrambling with this uh, Cerning Bailing army. Um, so for the Zerg player here, what, what is his best course of option towards countering that support tank unit? So for, for the so Zergs, th th there's a couple of options when you go uh, later in in the game. Uh, you could try to go for Vipers, which are great against uh, tanks because they have an ability which makes it so um, they disable range attacks. So the tanks can no longer siege, okay. uh, or they are useless while siege. They could also go for like just like a strong arm strategy and go for Ultralist, which is like the big unit. Uh -huh. But call that uh, a big attack coming for Hellstorm. Already you can see the micro there. The Marines being split in the back, uh, moving them back a little bit to avoid the hits of the Bailings. Now a couple of Hydralis coming in, but no frontline to support. And it's Gigandura is going to lose all the Hydralis to these Marines. Marines are incredibly cost efficient. Hydras are great units, but they need that frontline to tank. They, are, okay. they have low health and high attack. They are the definition of a glass cannon. Uh -huh. Uh, so once you see Hydras without a front line, you know they're gonna die pretty fast. Well, mm -hmm. Marines, Marines is the jack of all trades. They, the people, people say Marines have no counter. Um, they are, they're, they're basically good always. So it's very hard to deal with that. Okay. Um, so what would be the front line unit for uh, Gigandora to start? Uh, oftentimes we with Hydras. You usually like to pair them with roaches because they are both uh, range units that can share upgrades, uh -huh. and then you can go for um, uh, yeah, you can go for for lurkers. And but it's a little bit interesting that deciding to go for this uh, Sterling Baneling Hydra composition, um, he might be able to make it work though, and, uh, and might be a strategy that I'm not very familiar with. But these Widow Mines just, just keep doing so much consistent damage. He's losing the Widow Mines, but they're just killing so many workers. <laughs> so you said for Widow Mines, in order to be able to attack them, he has to build a special special typing unit or building? Or yeah, so he, Widow Mines, are, uh, when, they, when they burrow, they become invisible. So uh -huh. you need a way to detect invisible units. 
which he has none of, as we see here. Or one in production, uh, but you need an overseer, which is the upgraded version of an overlord. Okay. Uh, your the sport crawler, which is the structure that you see in all the bases close to the mineral line, that is also a detector. Okay. So that will be able to deal with them. The problem is that by the time that you you can see them, but you also have to kill them before they shoot. Okay. Uh, in order to prevent their damage. Oh, a little bit sneaky. So you can see there, right? You, you, he he sees the widow mine, but still managing to get some damage in. Mm -hmm. uh, very annoying stra uh, strategy. And while Gigandre is distracted with that, already an attack on the fourth base for the Zerg. And GG, it's too much aggression by Hellstorm and Hellstorm taking the series 3-0. Yeah, definitely an interesting series. Uh, yeah, congrats to, to Hellstorm for a very strong play. And... Um, right. I believe we are going to have Hailstorm here for an interview in a little bit, but until then, we are going to be at a short break, so don't go anywhere. Be right back.
And we're back here with the winner of the StarCraft II match, Hellstorm. Congratulations. How are you feeling? Thank you. Uh, it was a very um, serious. Um, I will be honest, the opponent I was had had a little <laughs> bit of an MMR dispar discrepancy. But overall, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Yeah, you look very strong. And uh, I was talking about this. I'm very surprised how you played three races at a very high level. Um, do you have yeah. like a, a stronger race or do you just play random in, in a ladder? Um, so I used to actually main Terran. So that was the last, um, you know, mm. game I played it with. And then after kind of hitting uh, High Masters and Grandmaster, I kind of thought I should learn the other two races. And actually being able to, you know, learn them and kind of get an idea of them actually helped out a lot with the other matchups, which was very good. Wow. Uh, do, do you think your other two races are like Master Level 2 or...? Uh, yeah, I would say my other two races are low master level, yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about how the StarCraft two scenes scores in Michigan? Uh, do you have uh, a, yeah. a lot of players? So uh, we actually have a very good amount of players this roster. Um, we have around like 8 to 10, so it's a very strong scene. Hmm. Uh, I actually was the one who founded the team uh, my freshman year, and to have it start out with a ragtag group of three people to a uh, more professional organization, you know, that can have all these great players. Um, I'm very proud and uh, amazed that we have such a strong scene here at U Michigan. Yeah, definitely. And I can definitely identify with that because we're, we're also like uh, a university that didn't have like a StarCraft II scene until very recently. Mm -hmm. and we're trying to just bring things together a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Um, are you guys participating in like C C E A, like the collegiate series? Because th that's what we're doing. Like we, we play every, every. Oh week. yeah. So um, realistically, we have just been kind of trying to get the whole team together because there has been like a surge of people who've been joining. Mm -hmm. So as of now, we've been hosting um, small cups. Like so, you know how there's the GSL. We've been hosting something called the USL, which is a UMish Starcraft League, mm -hmm. and kind of just having <laughs> nice. champions and you know players <laughs> just having a rivalry between. But I think later on when we work with the scene and our um, captain, um, we should be able to join these collegiate you know, series and actually play them out very well. That is that is awesome. And I'm now that I know that, that UM has a scene, I'm looking forward to whether we can get some scrims going on between. Yeah, the definitely. Teams. We can get some more uh, <laughs> fun tournament matches going, you know. U USL uh, can doesn't have to be just UMish start. Uh, University StarCraft League, you know, we can open up the roster. And yeah, I'm excited for the potential we can have between OSU and Michigan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do, do, do you have any any shout outs you want to make? Uh, yeah, you? obviously I want to have um, shout outs to the team. They uh, helped me train a bit for uh, this match, even if I um, was just playing a couple games. Um, and the fact that, you know, we just have such a big team now, I'm very thankful for that. So shout out to that. Shout out to my roommates who are... Uh, dealing with me and to cheer me on in the back a little bit. And awesome. uh, overall, shout out to Michigan for being the Big Ten champs <laughs> and uh, overall winning that game in Iowa too. All right, man. Thanks for joining us. And again, congratulations for your game. It was a pleasure to cast and I'm very happy to to have some StarCraft 2 in this rivalry matches. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah? sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to hear. Nice talking to you. All right. So we're going to go to a break and next we're going to have Rocket League. So stay tuned. And we'll be okay. right back.
What is up, everyone? Welcome back. About to bring you guys another matchup between OSU and Michigan. This time, heading over to the field, playing playing some Rocket League. I'm joined by Bobcat. Bobcat, how do you think the match is going to go today? Um, I'm not sure. We recently went through a roster change. Now, instead of uh, Coop, we have Juventus. So, you know, it's. I think that it's going to be a close game for sure. Um, definitely looking forward to seeing some demo plays coming out from Clavin, seeing how um, OSU defense can can deal with that. Absolutely. Clavin being one of the veterans here in CRL alongside us, though we do have Master and Sleppy looking to bring, you know, just a huge momentum change coming off of a CCA open win. They won the third play-in day and the fourth one, taking home first place overall, um, upsetting a couple teams as they went. And, you know, moving into spring, both teams I know looking forward to try to compete, get into CRL spring, qualify this time. Unfortunately, they both missed out in this past fall season. But going into winter break, hopefully both teams will have some time to take a little break, come back, and be ready for the action. Yeah, I, you missed. We we did qualify, actually. Our oh, qual you called for fall. The, yeah, uh, the, the playoff games didn't go too well. Okay. Our record wasn't the greatest, okay, but gotcha. we did qualify. Yeah. Well, that, that's good. OSU Beans slightly missing out, I believe, in the losers play in match. They they fell in a best of five. I, yeah. I believe it was a reverse sweep or a uh, a bracket reset. So unfortunate. Oh, but that hurts. I believe the game is ready to get underway here. Maybe in a second. We'll see. We'll see. But anyways, so I know we just had StarCraft going on. Valorant's coming up later tonight. Are there any other matches that you're looking forward to watching? Um, I am looking forward to CSGO for sure. CSGO? Valorant. Yeah, CSGO and Valorant, I'd say. Okay. Um, I don't keep up too much with, with our CSGO team anymore, but I know that Valorant, Penguin, is uh, a force to be reckoned with okay. in the collegiate scene. I play some Valorant myself, but I'm, I'm god-awful. So, looks like we're finally <laughs> getting into the match here. As I said, Sleppy Master Shiro, the usual beans lineup going against a talented Michigan lineup with Clavin. And you said the new sub in here as well, taking it into the corner of the field, looking to get his first couple touches on the ball. The Masters there to keep it away into the middle now. Shiro getting a nice little block, looking to get something going. And it'll be interesting to see, you know, how quick the play starts. I know a lot of the times these teams like to fill out the opposition for a little bit, see what kind of strategy they're going to run. But OSU always looking to attack while also trying to maintain a strong defensive wall. Yeah, absolutely. I can totally see Umish coming out uh, aggressive to start. Uh, I think that, that the tendency is uh, kind of an all-out force at the beginning and, and try to get an early lead if possible. Um, yeah, Clavin and Flamadiddle have some experience playing these guys. Juventix, not so much, but Clavin and... Uh, Sleppy are, are locked up in a rule one right now. <laughs> a great save from Flamadiddle. Great save indeed. OSU trying to take advantage of this 2v2. Juventix now off the back wall. Shears there to cut it out, though. Trying to maintain a double touch. Can't quit it. Masser now on the ball. Looking for a block. Now looking like a counterattack. Maybe a double touch here. Can't quite find it, but Shear is going to maintain possession. Looking for a one-on-one -on -one with Juventix. Trying to get a demo. Can't quite get in. That's a nice clear for Michigan. Both of these teams evenly matched. We've seen a couple matchups matchups between the two before. Shot there by Masseter, knocked away by Fomadoodle. But today, you know, it's it's one of those days. It's rivalry rivalry matches. Uh, we've seen in in you know football as well. Teams are not going to perform the way you want them to. But hopefully OSU can can maintain their strong posture here as we head into just about two minutes into the match. Oh, missed opportunity there from Flamadoodle. Uh, unfortunate center there from, from Masseter, but Flamadiddle uh, flubbed the shot. Now Shiro on the ball, booming it down the field, trying to maybe get a double tap, pass into the middle, goes for Boos instead, and he's little clear. Clavin still in the rule one. This has been going on for, what, at least a minute and a half now. Shiro able to make the save, but the danger is not gone. Now it is Masseter looking like it's just going to be a game of ping pong. The ball has been going back and forth this entire time and it's not looking like it's going to come to an end anytime soon. Flamadiddle trying to get it. Maybe over one. Master's able to get a touch on it though. Shiro taking his time. Eventix with a little bit of pressure. Looking for an air dribble. Maybe a flip reset. Good defense there by Flamadiddle. 
And Master's going to have to try to take this one in. Clavin and Sleppy still in the rule one. A good demo there from Shiro. And it's going to be a 1v2. But Master's going to take his time up the wall looking for a bounce. But that's going to be dangerous. Shiro getting up there in time to clear it away. But back into the middle. Clavin with another dunk. And that's going to be a goal for Clavin. Uh, did he break a rule one there? Is that what, is that what I saw? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm having a little bit of broadcast issue on my end, so... Well, um, just to catch you up, Clavin jumps out of the rule one just to get a pass middle, and the University of Shane is going to go up 1-0. Just under two minutes left to play in this match. Shiro up on the ball, challenging for a 50. Go to get it, shot into the bottom right corner. Ohio State ties it up 1-1. Shira there just getting up just in time, slotting it into the right corner. And it looks like Flamadiddle just could not get there. A little bit of banter going on in the chat. Wanting to redo a little team one, or a rule one. Uh, but we'll see how this progresses. Sleppy now on the ball, looking to get a shot. Cleared away by Juventix. Master up again, looking for a double. Can't quite get it. And it looking, it's looking like it's going to be kind of a stalemate between these two teams now. After OSU is able to tie it up. And they're going to look for maybe an offensive opportunity right here. Shiro gets it right into the middle of the net. Michigan not able to get up in time. Looked like there was a little confusion there on the backboard. Clavin and Flamadiddle both in the same spot. Aventic's not ready for it. And Shiro puts OSU up 2-1 to one with about a minute and a half left to play. As now they get the kickoff in OSU's favor. Shiro... Going to try and look for it down. Can't quite get it. Blocked away. Clavin looking to bring his team back into this. As now Clavin gets another touch on it. Sleppy going to try to pass it middle. Still in the middle. OSU not able to have an attacker there, though. Don't want to press too high up. Trying to maintain this lead. Clavin's going to do some spinnies on the ball. Get it into the corner. Master now on it. Looking to maintain possession. Maybe a pass over to Shiro. No, he's going to take it solo. Flamadiddle able to get a touch and pick up the boost as they now try to reset a little bit. Shiro looking for a shot. Knocked away by Clavin. But Master is still there to keep the danger alive. Flamadiddle, another nice little touch. But Sleppy is there once again. Maybe going to drop it down into the middle. And Michigan looks like they escaped for now. But Shiro's there with a nice little touch. Looking for a pass off the corner again. And... This OSU offense right now is just relenting. Michigan has not really had control at all in the past minute or so. Finally able to get it onto OSU's half. Sleppy going to take it down into the corner looking for a double, but doesn't get it. Now Clavin's going to try to work around, create an opportunity here, but it looks like that's going to fall out. Masters now going to just dribble it down the field with 10 seconds to go. Michigan looking for something to keep the ball in the air. Time does not expire until the ball touches the ground. Clavin, an air dribble, looking for a pass middle. It's there, but knocked oh. away. And OSU is able to escape with a 2-1 victory and take a 1-0 lead in the series. Such a close chance at the end there. Thankfully, um, I was able to join the game, so now I can spectate properly. Um, really, really close opportunity at the end there. Dexter's Juventus is probably kicking himself. Absolutely, and it, it really was a very close match. OSU just able to scrape away as we take about a minute break here getting ready for game two sleppy there you see him at the bottom of the leaderboards but that's not to take away from the fact that you know he was creating lots of opportunities once getting out of that rule one and a little bit of shade to be thrown for for Clavin breaking that rule one and allowing a Michigan goal as well but you know I, I like what I see from the OSU side you, you have a lot of offensive pressure Michigan looks like they tried to adjust just not in time and you know OSU takes a very close game one yeah, um, OSU absolutely kept up the pressure uh, extraordinarily well most of that game. Um, we had that period of time where that rule one was going on. It was just like a back and forth 2v2 for a while. But as soon as that broke free, OSU kind of had us locked down in our defensive third for a while. Um, so looking forward to next game, hopefully Clavin can shake off the, that bad juju <laughs> from breaking off the rule one. Oh, yeah. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll see what they have going into this. Flamadiddle is coming into this a little bit cold. Um, he, he just returned in time to play the game, thankfully. Gotcha. And, yeah, I mean, like you said, that, that 2v2 opportunity that we had, it looked like it was just a lot of ping-ponging ping the ball back and forth. But, you know, 
luckily in the end, I guess we were able to get out of it in time to allow enough time for us to score two goals, put us up to one and take game one. But it was kind of interesting to see. I was looking for a couple more air dribbles maybe from the two that, uh, you know, were not in that rule one. But hopefully this game we'll see, see a little bit more flashy mechanics or a nice little goal as well. Yeah. Clips are always appreciated. <laughs> of course, of course. All right. Hopefully getting into game two soon. But here we go. All right. Kickoff. Going to be a stalemate. Shiro winning the ball, sending it deep into Michigan territory. Clavin able to get up just in time to clear it away as this game is already starting quick. Sleppy now looking to take it into the half. Looking for a dunk. Can't quite get it. Shiro now going to have to deal with that. A big clear into the middle. A little bump there from Flamadiddle on Mazer in goal. But Shiro's going to take it over. The Bentix there to make a clutch save early on. And Ohio State's coming out. Just trying everything they can to put that first goal away. Juventix now with some boost on the ball. Shiro able to get it over. And Yumish is kind of forced to shadow right now. Wait for the play to develop. Juventix now sees an opportunity. Gets the ball. Forced for a solo play. Probably would have liked to pass that, but opportunity was not there. Flamadiddle now off to the corner. Able to get a follow-up touch or not. Shiro now off the backboard. A little bit threatening here. Sleppy on the ball still. Clavin able to clear it out. No boost but he has an opportunity here. Goes for a bump and now OSU on attack. Yeah, Clavin there being a little bit ruthless. Trying to get a little bit greedy. Knock Shiro out of rotation. Maybe trying to open up a slot in the defense for one of his teammates to sneak a shot in. Uventix now trying to put it top corner. Shiro's there to knock it away, but the danger's not gone. Clavin sends it across. Sleppy's going to deal with that, but it's going to fall right back to Michigan. Looking for a 1-2 play here now. Clavin's going to get a shot on. Masters able to deal with it. Send it into the corner, but, you know, it's starting to, uh, you know, change tides. Michigan looking very offensive and very dangerous here as we head into about a little over a minute and a half into the game. Yeah, I... Uh... Clavin was talking the other day with this new roster change they have on Juventix. Um, both Flamdiddle and Clavin believe that Juventix is the most pass-heavy player that they've ever uh, teamed up with. So a little bit of forcing play styles there for both of them, um, trying to get more connections in. Uh, as you see earlier, there was that 1-2 that play that had a decent shot opportunity was saved. Um, so keeping an eye out, decent flip reset opportunity, but saved by Shiro. Yeah, you know, I think both of these teams, like you said, have a very, you know, fun to watch play style. They both go for a lot of these passing plays that you love to see, looking for a one two or sometimes even the solo plays as well. I know Sleppy, Shiro, Clavin all have just insane mechanics and you know they're they're kinda on top of the world with the rest of the CRL players. So trying to see something out here today, bring a little bit of life into the teams as well. This first goal going to be crucial change the momentum as well set the tone for possibly the rest of the series you know a lot of the times in CRL it's going to be a best of five today playing a best of seven we'll see which team has more stamina to keep up as we are a little bit over three minutes into the game absolutely still waiting to see who draws first blood here on the scoreline Juventus across the back over to Clavin gets a big clear Master now able to control, but Flamdiddle with the pressure. Gets it off the backboard with a pass in the middle. Clavin not quite able to finish it. Juventix going to try to keep this in. Nice 50. Flamdiddle barely gets beats the ball. Clavin now in a scramble getting back. A little bit of time here. Uh-oh. Mistake. Possibly. Clavin's able to save that one. Could have been dangerous there for Michigan. Master had the ball right in front of the net, not quite able to capitalize. Now Shiro is going to try to take it to the right side of the field with a one-on-one -on -one with Clavin. Clavin with a nice pinch down the field, going to buy some time. And Uventix goes up, goes back down. Flamadiddle looking over there, getting it to Masseter. As Masseter is now going to take it up the wall. Looking for a little play here. Another touch underneath, can't get it. Uventix there, staying strong, able to keep Michigan in this. One minute left to play, but OSU is going to keep pressing. A little miss there from Flamadiddle, and hopefully a touch there from OSU into the middle. And no one is there to capitalize, but Shiro's back again, sending it over to Sleppy. Sleppy's going to take it down, go up the wall. We could see a nice little play here. Gets a flip. 
but Michigan is going to deal with that now with about 30 seconds left. Michigan is going to try to capitalize, clearing that ball away. Clavin sending it up to Ventix. Shiro is there to stop it. This is going to be an intense last 30 seconds as both teams try to take that first goal of the match. Yeah, Clavin there off the ceiling, gets a good center ball. Now back to Juventix with an opportunity of his own. Goes for a fake play. 50s out to Flamdiddle. Now the ball distributed back to Michigan. Good pass across. Sleppy beats Juventix in the air. Flamdiddle, his job to do with this what he can the last three seconds. But it, they are just going to let it kill him. Now we're in overtime. Golden goal. First overtime between these two Hopefully we're going to see a couple more here today. OSU Beans kind of known for taking games a lot longer than they should, going to best of fives basically this entire summer. I believe there was a, a running joke going that, you know, OSU, I think it was six matches in a row, which was just absolutely insane, taking wins over Akron as well. Just one of those being highlighted. But now Shiro's going to try to take the ball. Sleppy getting a nice little touch, maybe looking for a mid pass. Clayman's not going to allow it. Send it deep into OSU territory. Master able to deal with that now. Flamadiddle taking it up the wall, but Master is there to quickly challenge. This could be dangerous. Ventix has to deal with it. Can't get it. Sleppy. And it is blocked away, but a very dangerous opportunity there for Ohio State. Just not able to put the ball in. Shiro, a bit of an awkward spot here. He is able to get a 50 on the follow-up touch. Now Sleppy, plenty of boost to do something here. Gets a 50. Flamadiddle opportunity back to Shiro. As the play develops here, Clavin able to get a big clear, but Sleppy again everywhere on the pitch and gets the bump, but Clavin's there to clear it out. Oh. Follow up touch. Not enough boost to continue with this, but he does pick up mid. Master now on the ball. Flamadiddle. A little bit of a misread. Sleppy now. A little mistake there from Michigan, but they're still able to keep possession. Master able to send a long clear almost off the post. Sleppy going to keep it down on the half. Shiro's going to try to make something happen. Drops it in. Goal for Shiro and sends Ohio State to their second win of today. 2-0 in the series. Yeah, great placement there by Shiro. Just enough, just fast enough and high enough for Juventix not to be able to reach it in time. Um, great game from both sides, though. Absolutely. Love taking it to overtime. Lots of opportunities for both teams. Um, and OSU just came out on top. Yeah, I think Shiro there with just a huge defensive performance. As you can see, five saves with two more coming from his teammates. You know, you can't really do much more as Michigan. Going to have to just kind of try to adapt a little bit, look for some bumps, look for something to open up the net. But, you know, overall, I thought both teams did a very good job of possessing the ball, looking for the passing plays throughout the middle. And, you know, like you said, I mean, going to overtime 0-0, it's just one of those defensive battles. And OSU able to find Shiro, who uh, clutches up and puts it in and gives OSU that win. Yeah, um, both. I mean, like I said, both teams, there are lots of opportunities on offense. But OSU, I think, just kept up more consistent pressure that game. You, Mish, I would like to see have a little bit more of a breakout defense to get some counterattacks in the mix in the next uh, upcoming games. Absolutely. Now we're going to head into game three. OSU looking to continue their streak. Michigan looking to bounce back and change the momentum of the series. As here we go. OSU winning kickoff. Going to send it deep into their corner, Sleppy. Trying to force something into the middle. Masters already up, getting a nice little touch, but it's saved. Shiro putting it back into an open net. And Ohio State's going to take an early 1-0 lead. And that is the way that you would love to start a game. A little bit of a, a double commit there defensively from Clavin and Flamadiddle. Very, very awkward after the kickoff. They uh, probably just weren't sure who was supposed to go there. Ended up both going, and Juventix just couldn't recover in time. Um, but now Juventix on the ball. Gets it past one, but Sleppy with a perfect spawn. Yeah, and it's really, and it'll flip reset. between these two teams, it's really going to come down to, you know, who has the first defensive breakdown. We've said it multiple times today, and Clavin, there oh my is. goodness, able to slot that one in. You know, both of these teams just having such good offenses. It really comes down to whose defense is going to break first. Sleppy just not quite able to get it. Clavin 
able to tie this one up only about 30 seconds in. Yeah, already seeing more action on the goal line than last game. Juventex now. Flamido left in a really awkward spot here. Is able to get a touch off the backboard, but it's out to Shiro and they have to defend still Clavin that gets a nice block. Flamdiddle trying to make it unreadable enough for OSU not to do anything, but readable enough for his teammates to follow up. Here's Juventix. Gets a good center ball, possibly going for a dunk here. Flamdiddle into the corner. Juventix with a kill across the pitch, relieving up a little bit of defensive pressure. Clavin goes for one of his own. Proceed across middle. Cleared out by Sleppy. Has a little bit of time. Gets a pass out to Shiro. And Shiro, Clavin actually does get a touch on that. I thought for sure he had him beat. Could have been very dangerous. But as you said, Clavin able to get a touch and stop the counterattack. OSU now going a little bit more defensive. Shiro's up in the air for that one. Looking to pass it to Master, who's going to take a little touch. Maybe over to Sleppy. And that's a 50 that falls in Michigan's favor. Ventix now on the ball. Looking to make something happen. Over to Flamadid. Old Master has to get up in time. Off the backboard. Oh, and can't quite finish. Oh. Michigan struggling to put that one into the net. OSU escapes and keeps the game tied. Shiro now up as well. Able to clear that one away, but Uventix is there to stop it. But now Slep on the ball. Looking for a demo is Flamadiddle. He gets it, and a little oh. mistouch there. I don't think either of them really expected the ball to hit off the car like that. And, you know, you hate to see it. It really does happen coming from a Rocket League player myself. But OSU able to go up 2-1. Bit unlucky there on the pass back from Flamadiddle. Um, yeah, did have just got a bunch of speed off of that little top top touch. Clavin now, though, with a clear. Plenty of time left in this game. Still very competitive, especially with that demo. Here's an opportunity. Juventix gets a good pass with a boost stolen in the corner. Flamadiddle. Going to be able to keep his presence up for Clavin to come in and get that ball. Pass across the mid. Juventix now is demoed in the midfield. And that's a shot opportunity for Sleppy, which gets saved by Clavin. And Juventix forced to clear it out. Yeah, very dangerous there. Clavin barely able to get back in time, but makes the save. OSU thought they had an open net, not quite quick enough. Sleppy sending it into the middle. Masseter there for the rebound. Sleppy almost putting it in himself. But OSU is now going to take a comfortable two-goal lead just about more than halfway through this game. 3-1 Ohio State. Kickoff now. Falls back into Michigan's yeah, I mean, half, again, but Clavin's going to uh, get it. A bit of a misplay on the defense. Flamidal was left in a super tough spot. Flamidal. Nice little air dribble there, but Master's going to be there to clear it away. Sending it over to Sleppy, who's going to intercept the ball from him. Making something happen here. Can't quite do it. It's cut out by Clavin. A nice little beat there, but Master's ready for it. Sends it back into Michigan's corner, looking for another mid-pass. And Flamidale with a little mix there. Ventix there to take care of it. Maybe looking for something more. Another touch. Sleppy's going to let Shiro handle that one as they now look for the counter attack. Michigan needing to make something happen here with about a minute and a half left to play. Sleppy with another shot. Flamididdle there to clear it as now the ball is going to fall back into OSU's half. All three Michigan players looking to make something happen. And it's at this point in the game where, you know, if you're Michigan, you really just got to maintain control. Try not to get too worked up and see if you can make something happen. Yeah, I definitely anticipate seeing a little bit more uh, risky plays coming out for Michigan to try to close this gap with just 60 70 seconds left on the clock. Um, Flamididdle gets a decent pass opportunity to Clavin. Cut off by OSU. A decent redirect attempt, almost making it 4-1. Sleppy now gets it across. Flamididdle unfortunately bumped into his teammate. And now Clavin going to be able to play it out the back here. Possibly looking for a pass, but it gets blocked by Shiro. And Juventex is forced to deal with this one. Nice little touch there, Michigan coming down, needing to make at least a goal here and another one to tie it up and send it to OT. But OSU, you know, as Michigan has started to become more risky, OSU's defense has only gotten better. Slept now, able to get that 50 that clears all the way across the, the room. Clavin there, not quite able to 
get it down to his teammate. Shiro now going to take a nice little touch, try to maintain possession. Michigan looking for the demo. Shiro with a great flick. Clavin has no boost. Master is going to try to put it back on. Not quite there. Sleppy past him, down to Shiro. And now the ball is just going to probably boom around the map for the last five seconds. Michigan just trying desperately to put at least one in here, but looks like they're not going to be able to do so. Sleppy going to just dribble around Shiro with another redirect. Can't get it off the crossbar. We'll see how long this, oh, there we go. Okay, as soon as I start to mention <laughs> that. But of course, OSU going to take this one. I believe it was a 3-1 win. Yes, it was. And now they move to 3-0 in the series. Just looking for one more to put it away. Uh, but, you know, that's not to take away from this talented Michigan side. You know, you mentioned that you have the sub in here today, or the new player, uh, excuse me. But, um, you know, they still look very strong, um, and hopefully they'll be ready for this next game. Yeah, they have an uphill battle for sure um, with OSU at, at series point now. Um, I would, you know, I, I don't think that Clavin has thrown in as many demos as uh, he normally should have or normally would. Um, but putting some of those demos in there in the play and kind of ra uh, frazzling the OSU defense, I think would be um, a good way to, to break out of this couple game slump that they're in right now, because that last game did seem a little bit dominated by OSU. It wasn't nearly as close as game two. Um, yeah. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully uh, you Mish can figure out what's, what's going wrong here and capitalize on OSU's faults. Yeah, I mean, these, you know, mid-series adjustments between two teams, especially in the RL scene, you know, it's it's not uncommon that, uh, you know, games get almost reverse swept or reverse or teams get reverse swept, but, you know, you got four more to bring it back for Michigan. OSU not going to want to make that happen. Another Ooh. own goal, it looks like. Sleppy there going to get credit for that one, uh, but looks like he was just trying to rotate back. Sleppy throwing in some spins. Flamadiddle, unlucky touch there, sending it right back to net. OSU taking the early lead. Unfortunate that uh, another own goal have to ha had to happen. Flamadiddle probably in his head right now. Hopefully he can shake it off, regain a bit. Gets a nice follow-up touch and a good dunk. Forced to go off the ball now. Clavin's opportunity to center this. Does get a good center, almost with the demo. Forces the defense to jump. Shiro, though, with a great clear. Juventix might be able to get back to this, and he does. Just barely. Shiro, though, really high ball. That's a great pass across the center, but Clavin's going to be able to clear it away. Looking for more passes to develop. Juventix barely cuts that one off. Clavin with a big clear. It looks just like ping pong from UMesh defense right now. That's the method until we find some way to break out. Juventix finally with a slow play across. Yeah, and that's OSU strategy, trying to take as much boost as they can, force Michigan to play super defensive, and eventually get to the point where, you know, they're just trying to clear the ball. They're not really focused on what the next touch would be, rather instead just trying not to get scored on, and OSU is able to maintain their boost, able to, you know, look for passes throughout the middle to keep the offensive pressure going. Michigan now looking to make something happen. Master able to take it away. But, you know, I think that's really the best thing that Ohio State does is once they attack, it is just relentless, and they keep it up the entire time. And when they need to play defense, you know, they come through. They have that wall, Shiro now, looking to get it, can't quite, but Sleppy's there to, you know, take the reins. So it'll be interesting in this last three minutes to see if Michigan can break through Ohio State's wall. Absolutely. The last 30 seconds or so, we saw Michigan go on a little offensive tear, but didn't amount to any goals. And now OSU again on the goal line. But here comes a counterattack. Blocked away. Sleppy able to follow it up. But Juventix keeps up the pressure. Shiro on the wall. Able to get a controlling touch. Flamadil with a low 50. Going to try to follow this up. Maybe get a pass off the backboard. Not the pinch that he was likely hoping for. Juventix gets an early challenge here. And is able to clear it across into some open field. If he gets this mid boost... Possibly looking for a pass across the middle. Shut out by Sleppy. Clavin now. Back to Flamadiddle. Who hits it across. Maybe going for a follow-up. But Chiro's just too quick. He's already to the ball. Gets a great clear. Juventix now. Trying to follow it out. But he gets demoed. Clavin is close enough so that a counterattack can't 
start. Flamadil, a little bit of a miss jump. And now nobody's back on Umish defense. Master not quite able to capitalize there. Looking for hopefully a pass down. Clavin there to play some good defense though. As now Umish takes it into OSU territory. Shiro trying to cut it out. Flamadil is there. Ventex looking to get a touch, keeps it back to his teammate, sends a shot, and that's going to be a goal for Michigan right into the upper right corner, and Michigan tie up the game. Nice shot. Flamidal saw that opportunity, and he took it, executed it perfectly. Um, I know Umish has tended to try to go for some passes this game, but I think that switching it up and actually just sending one on net was definitely best-case scenario for him. Absolutely, and Flamin Diddle able to bounce back a little bit there. Hopefully a momentum change for him. Sending it in is Masseter, but blocked away by Flamin Diddle. Shiro looking for a back wall pass, but that's going to be cleared out to Sleppy. Sleppy looking to make something happen on the ball, keeping possession, but out of boost, and a little bump there sends the ball into Umish territory. Clavin now going for the air dribble, but can't quite stay on the ball. Back into Sleppy, who's going to try and block it into net. Can't quite get it. Flamin Diddle forced to jump there and demoed by Shiro as OSU is looking to take <coughs> sorry, take the lead as we head into a little under a minute left to play. Clavin gets a little demo now on the back line. Juventix has a good opportunity to get it across. He does get it over one. Great top corner save by Masseter, but Flamin Diddle with another pass across the middle to nobody. Shiro, though, with a misplay. And Juventix is on the ball, able to get a pass across. And they look for that give-and-go play, but unfortunately the rotation just didn't allow it. And now Shiro's going to send it back into Michigan's side, but is going to do everything he can to prevent that. Sleppy now. Touchdown into the middle. Shiro trying to make something happen again. Can't quite find the touch, but it's still in dangerous territory for Michigan. Gets a touch around an OSU defender. Masters there to bump him out, but a double commit, and that's going to leave OSU a little stranded, but now Shiro's going to try to take this ball. Zero seconds on the clock, looking for a dribble. Clavin keeps it up. Sleppy in the air, dropping it down to Masseter, who Ooh. can't quite find the power. All three Michigan defenders, though, were in his way. It would have been just a miracle to even get the ball past them, as now we head to the second overtime of this series. Both teams looking to capitalize. If his shot wasn't on zero seconds there, I think that it could have been really threatening getting a low ball that bounces um, because there was a scrambled triple commit on defense there. Just a last ditch effort to try to block. Thankfully, saved by the bell with that zero seconds. Now Master looking to get back inside. Shiro is now going to have to deal with it. Looking for a 50. Looks like all players low on boost right now and a demo coming in. Sleppy is now out of the play, but Master able to take control. Clavin now looking to take it around the backboard, looking for a pass. Going to take it down instead. A nice little 50 ball. He's going to send that one high for his teammate. Looking for another pass. Shiro able to cut it out. That could have been a very dangerous redirect. As now Masters off the ceiling, putting it down. Clavin just able to knock it away. As now Sleppy's going to look for a little flick. He gets it. Looking for a demo. No one's there. A good shot. And Clavin with another clutch save. And Michigan escapes for now. Excellent defense here for Michigan. I think this is, might be the, the best we've seen all series. Um, their, their touches have a little more purpose behind them as it seems like it's less of, of just blasting it away and, and more of thinking about where that ball is going to go and where they want it to go. Um, so now Sleppy out to Flamdiddle who goes for a pass or a shot, cleared away. Over to Juventix, looks in the middle. Now Juventix to follow this up and try to get a block off of this corner. Goes for a demo. Doesn't connect. Shiro flicks it over one, but Clavin keeps it in. Yeah, and OSU looking a little bit more defensive for the past 30 seconds. Trying to get out of their half. Maybe get a little bit of boost. Get a nice little flick, and Sleppy does just that. Flemming it there to keep it at midfield, though. Another touch around. Sends it right to Master. Master is just going to clear it on the field, forcing Clavin to waste some boost and go up for it. And Sleppy's going to get around his defender as well, putting off the backboard, forcing Flamididdle to jump. And now OSU's looking for a mid-pass, and Sleppy gets it. Top right corner, Ohio State is going to take it in overtime and just get the 4-0 sweep. And wow, that was, that was just, you can't do much about that as a defender. 74 miles an hour into the upper corner of the goal. Ohio State 
is going to take the lead. And take that the was a, a beautiful pass. Um, directly across the middle. Nice little lateral ball. And, uh, yeah, I mean, OSU just came out on top. Really, really well done by them. Yeah, Clavin throwing some shots in the chat saying, we'll see you in the college football playoffs, sadly. Um, you know, Ohio State not quite in it. But, you know, best of luck to Michigan and, of course, to, uh, you know, the Michigan Rocket League team as they move forward. OSU able to take the 4-0 series. But, you know, as we kind of mentioned, I believe it was after game two or three, both sides were looking good. And, you know, if you're Michigan, you shouldn't look down on today. Um, you know, it's a new roster. You're starting to build into some team chemistry as well. But both sides – did what they could, and OSU just able to take it away. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it was a pleasure casting with you, Queeds. Absolutely. Um, and I'll see you in the post-game interview. All right. Stay tuned, everyone. All right, everyone, welcome back. Today, I do have Master with me for a quick little interview. Master, how did you guys feel going into the match? Um, I think it's the same uh, every year against this team. They're pretty tough, even competition. And um, obviously, over the years, we've gained synergy with all the OSU players, intermixed however you please. So uh, it, was, it was confidence going in. 
And did you feel like you had to make any adjustments throughout the series? I mean, it was obviously a 4-0 win, but, um, you know, what, w- what was Michigan doing that kind of threw you guys off? Um, nothing out of the ordinary for Michigan, that is. We expected a lot of demos from Clavin and Flamadiddle just because that's how they normally play. Um, but, I mean, we had adjusted to that prior, you know, mentally and rotationally. So uh, nothing we really had to fix mid-series. And, you know, moving forward, obviously did not qualify for fall CRL, but moving into the spring, you know, what do you think it's going to look like? Is Sleppy going to be coming back? Uh, is there going to be a couple roster changes? And, you know, hopefully you guys are feeling confident for it. And, uh, you know, what what do you think heading in do you guys need to change in order to get that spot? Uh, spring looks like a little bit of a toss-up right now. We don't know who's going to return, who wants to put in the, the time and effort to grind Definitely, at the very least, expect some roster changes, some switcheroos or new players. Um, but overall, it's just going to be you know a bunch of friends competing to the best that they can. So, whatever happens, happens. Very fair. And you know, I, I do know that you play a lot of other games. Uh, what what's your what's your top three games right now outside of Rocket League? Oh, the only other game is Pogo Stuck <laughs> that has devoured the entire last few weeks of my life oh and my God. it's getting in the way of finals at this point but oh really we'll stay strong <laughs> are you are you on the leaderboards right now i heard you were uh doing pretty good speed running wise i hoping to get a top 10 run before the year ends wow oh my God. are they still coming out with new maps as well uh early january should be the new map everyone go check it out pogo stuck it's on sale for like four bucks on steam okay it's a rage game <laughs> it, it is i've played a little bit of it I gave up after about 20 minutes, I'm not going to lie. Um, I, I honestly don't know how you do it. But one more question for you real quick, um, probably the most important one I'll ask. Um, who on cam- or What on campus, who serves the best pizza? On campus? Or it could be off campus as well. Come on, come on, master. You know, okay. you know the answer to this. Cecilia is, is there great. It is. It's Cecilia. It it's, it's 100% it's open. Cecilia's. It's open whenever you need it, and it slaps every time. Absolutely. I think really that's all the questions I have for you right now. Uh, We're going to kick it out and take a short break, but stay tuned. I believe Valorant is going to be up next. Thank you, guys.
What's going on, everybody? My name is Kbot. I'm the president of the Buckeye Gaming Collective, uh, and I've been kind of working behind the scenes so far on the broadcast today, making sure that everything's coordinated. Uh, but we've got a little bit of an interesting thing, and I've got to explain this to you uh, a little bit before we hop right into it. Our Valorant match today actually just happened. It was a best of three series. It started at 1 p.m. in the big time playoffs uh, conference. And so, uh, it was kind of coincidental that the University of Michigan and Ohio State ended up playing against one another earlier today. And so for this next segment, we figured it would be best to just re-give you uh, the match that just happened. It was a best of three. We'll be watching the final map of that series. The University of Michigan won 12 to 10 on bind, and then BGC bounced back with 15 to 13 on ascent. Casting is Broskers and Phasmite, and I'll hand it over to both of them uh, back in the past. Take care, and we'll see you on the other side. All right, and we are back on Icebox. Map three here. And we are now in the pick phase. Uh, quick yeah. picks here. Jet, Ajma. I mean, Jet and Sova on Penguin and Ajma. Spin on Sage. While as OSU has the Killjoy pick locked in. Looking at the KO. Along with the Sage and the Sova. Yeah, I think KO can be a really big pick here because a lot of the uh, the defensive angles and spots to hold from are sort of cramped together. Uh, can also give a lot of intel, which this map, because there's uh, it's it's just so busy, so visually, there's a lot of places that people can hide. Having a lot of intel is going to be really crucial. So you know, for KO to be able to throw out his uh, his knife, tag people, know where people are, that's going to be big. Of course, we're going to see the the uh, the obligatory Sova picks that can do. I mean just do that but on steroids where you know you're tagging you're actively updating you're tra you're tracking tracing and watching people um all sorts of uh all sorts of intel i think is going to be super important here i think kildra is a good pick here from the uh choose your agent from the team honestly could really could really go either way we see a very very similar loadout here with pretty much just the uh the swap of which uh which duelist the uh, the opposing team prefers? All right, and going into this, it looks like one of those near mirror comps instead of the jet. We've got the Reyna. OSU tends to favor that, whereas Penguin on Michigan, mm -hmm. big fan of the jet. We're gonna see yeah. how this works out here. Going into the first round with Michigan on defense this time. Be sure, be sure. And you know, both uh, games, the teams kind of swapped which side they were better at. Uh, the first game, Michigan seemed to do a lot better on attack, whereas the second game, OSU is the better attacking team. Or, yeah, no. I <laughs> I messed something up. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's yeah, I mean it's it's been all over the place with it's last been game a going long while. Yeah. <laughs> last game being almost a wash into a double yeah. overtime or like this game. I mean I'm just excited to see how this game turns out with uh the OSU team starting on attack again. Oh, we're gonna see Fizzy behind three people here. Oh, gets the timing on the alarm bot, but still gets vulnerable to end all three turn around and shoot him down. Alvaro dying on the B site to the two pushing main. Wow. Ajma picked the orange. I mean, yeah, time and time again. We see these pistol rounds. I mean, Big Daddy and Oz doing really, really great on these pistol rounds to just sort of dominate, get in there, get the kills. We saw 3K last round, 4K now. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, that's going to put OSU into their buy. And Michigan not forcing. Did that one time, but not this time. As we go into the second round here. With Alruro solo holding B. 2 mid, 2 A. As OSU also spreads out. A similar spread. Looks like we're gonna see some pushing here from spin and mid. Swings out. Doesn't actually see the viper that's back there. Yeah. Gets shot at. 
<laughs> as OSU leans over to the bean B side. Yeah, trying to make a little bit of a something happen in here right now. Looked at mid, didn't really you know see that opportunity being super prevalent. So they're gonna try and put the viper walls up and uh, push on to B here. I think in in maybe just a second or two. As we can oh, see, bro. mollying the, the default plan here. The defensive utility going up, trying to just stall them a little bit, make the rotation a little more practical. As we can see, uh, Ajuma and um, and Fizzy come over. The Sage Wall's up, trying to protect them, gets the plant down. Now they're in a post-plant situation where they can kind of back off, play yellow, play main. Uh, as the defensive team pretty much all pushing up here into mid, trying to distract, trying to pull a little bit of the, uh, trying to pull the crosshairs over to the spike. As uh, we see they try to push in, try to molly them off, try to get them out of position, out of rotation, out of places that they feel comfortable in. Forcing them to push up. Big Daddy and Oz getting one pick, trying to keep the defense off as more and more drop one by one. The defensive team disappears and the attackers win with a four man uh, lead there, right there at the end. Wow, I mean, just how quickly that retake happens. Gary. Yeah, very big round there for OSU, only dropping the one man. They have a, a pretty forceful bonus here in the third round. Could go very well for them. They've got a Bulldog along with three Spectres, and it looks like Sean's going to force up a Vandal here. He was the one that died and lost his Spectre, and going to spend his credits to have that stronger rifle. For sure, for sure. We're going to see going into round three here. Almost uh, two back full buys from each team uh, with uh, the OSU team bonusing just a little bit. They're going to try and make something happen. Try and push up here. OSU starting to clump up at the A side here. But Michigan's got a bit of a crossfire here on this entryway. This could go either really well for them or really poorly with these four about to push out here. Penguin wow. gets one, dashes off. Alru gets second, third. As Sean tries to get the trade, but Alru gets a third, and Ajma gets the last kill on belt. Looks like it went really well for them. Yeah, um. <laughs> Definitely, I mean, these these two rounds back to back have just sort of been really quick bloodbaths in in one centralized location, whether that's B, whether that's A, and all the action just happens within maybe a 10 second window, after you know 30 seconds, one minute of prep, and it's uh, it's been scary, but it's it's finally gone in uh, in Michigan's favor, so we could see things are things are tossed back up into the uh, to the eco hands of uh, of chance right now. Yeah, this round's really going to determine the tempo of the rest of this half here. Sending one of the teams into a half fight, depending on who loses. Mm -hmm. As OSU decides to send four through B main. About to hit the alarm bot here. As we see down. them drone up. Trying to look for Fizzy something. Fizzy hearing multiple there. Go for the they know Fizzy's at the top. Trying to keep this plant from happening, but he actually he plants a little bit uh, a little off there. That's that is not a super huge threat to any uh, mollies or lineups. And this sends it into a five v five retake here with one yellow, one mid. Big Daddy Anas gonna miss the contact on Alruro and go for the mid peak. Get one. Almost get a second, but dismisses. Yeah, trying to have to find a look for that safety instead of the uh, instead of extra picks here. But now it's just spin on sight. I'm gonna have to make a retake. Kind of pinched in between, uh, you know, rock and a hard place right now, and not able to get it here. Picked off by Villa, looking and staring him down the barrel. Another round going to the attacking team here. All right, and with that, we send Michigan into that. Forsaken, uh, almost light by. They actually have enough to buy rifles and some light armors. Interestingly enough, they seem to have saved enough in the first three rounds that the recon isn't as bad as it could be. We are going to see full utel from them, too. Always you looking for some contact anywhere on the map. Kind of just spread out. 
We're gonna see Ajma push into this mid smoke here. Not actually peek out. And just hold under tube here as OSU groups up outside of B main once again. We do see Fizzy holding an aggressive angle here. This could go really poorly for him. Getting scanned by the dart. Man, and run away to... before getting shot. Having to drop that angle though is a little unfortunate. Trying to stop them, trying to stall them more so than just go for a retake position because he knows, you know, it's better if he can get more team to prevent a plant than try and make a post plant happen. Trying to get the dart out, see if he can scan anybody through the wall. Looking for a pick, does not get it. I mean, also going up tube right now could be bad for Michigan. But it looks like Penguin's about to go into kitchen. As we see. Kame get that timing on him. Trying and to see. swing out and get Alruru as well. Gets the dink on Fizzy. A bit of a wall bank, so he doesn't get the kill. kill. Trying to see if he can get the kill. It's just right now, again, yet again, another one man try and retake situation. Put into the vulnerable situation. Take 2x damage from everything. And he drops there pretty handily. Uh, and that pretty, push pretty from Kame up tube there. Very important for OSU. And he got a 4k <laughs> off of it. Very good yeah. timing. Very well played. Top situation for Michigan, losing that buy round, going into sheriffs here. But it's very similar to how the ascent match went. Uh, yeah. One four, one five is what that map started off with, and looks like we're seeing a repeat here. Hopefully, we don't see a, a double overtime again. But yeah. Uh oh, Cap made through his nade early, and it's now stuck. Unlucky. Yeah. Busy getting pushed by five once again. Only as a sheriff this time. No util. Trying to see if they can uh, get something. Busy wanting to get there before the wall goes up, but he does not get it. The plant comes down. Big Daddy and Oz pushing up a little bit. Might get caught here. Gets seen by Fizzy. Fizzy getting the pick before Big Daddy and Oz can convert into a kill. But he's down to one shot. Two players on site down to one shot. Having to wait and hope that their, uh, their, their teammates can get here in time. The attacking team getting another res, trying to find some players, not able to get really anything on it. The wall's up, giving them a little security to move around and get the uh, get guns, try and make something happen. Looking for a, for a tap there, but the attacking team able to have nades to keep them off of it. Right now, Aurora falling, or oh, almost falling, that's my bad. But Penguin doing oh a my great God. job here. Wow. Penguin with the great kills there, gets five and... Big, big, big round for Michigan there. For sure. Huge I mean, played by Penguin. Every player being down, down to what? <laughs> barely one shot. And Penguin be able to just take that confidence, dash in there, blade storm, and get the kills to make the uh, make the post plant a uh, realistic win for Michigan here. Which I mean, that's crazy. These uh, these Jets can can really show off their strengths here. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason that Penguin. Tends to like playing Jet over the reign of it. You see on OSU, mm -hmm. he... Just the duelist preference. Anyways, Fizzy holding on B site here alone once again. Uh, has Util out this time. It's all placed. He's gonna hear quite a few push. Here's the Sojourn. drone. I wonder if we're gonna see the Killjoy ult or not. Mm -hmm. I see, looking for a very similar uh, attack pattern here. Where they just go up, get the wall down, get the plant. Trying to break through the wall, trying to get the kills. Been doing a really good job there getting the wall bang off. Uh, and now they're just going to try and shut it down. With the push, gets the Viper Ooh, who's trying to plant. And <sighs> deflates that Viper's pit. Yeah, that As Ozu is now in a really tough spot. No wall and no bomb. Yeah. This is not a, a great place to be. I think at this point, Michigan had caught on to the attack that they kept trying over and over and over again. And they're dropping now to an op. That Penguin's got back sight. You can see last round being able to win that really converted into such a huge advantage for them now that they have an operator here. Taking advantage of a villain, getting one pick, trying to look for a second one. Gonna have to peek the off here. Crouching, looking a little too high. And then that's gonna give Penguin the last kill of the round that they need to sort of sort of start building this momentum and take their lead for the uh, for the match finally. Or get closer to taking the lead, sorry. Yeah, very well played there from Michigan. Very aggressive uh, retake before that the bomb actually got planted, which was very important for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I gotta see, I wonder if, if OSU at this point is gonna decide to uh, change up their uh, their attack style because, I mean, 
that was a pretty pretty sore loss or handed loss from uh from the attacking team catching on to just what they had been trying to do you know six rounds in a row and uh it's not it's not gonna work the next time you try it so they're gonna have to rethink what their plan is right now England with y'all wow barely manages to miss Audrey we're getting Ajima. such a good shot there for the smoke we see a little bit more of this contact in mid um uh, perhaps looking for a trade here at least from a from spin trying to uh trying to make something happen as osu groups up outside a main here looks like panic gonna sit inside the smoke as villa gets a pick on al river with his marshal penguin bigger gun go boom gets the kill on villa as sean tries to plant the bomb gets pushed off stuck in a rough spot trying to get the plant down the walls up making the plant trying to get it the op misses the shot knows he's above him knows where he is trying to get the comms to spin the spin swings around looking for the kill and there it is good relay good relay of information there and that's gonna bring it to 4-4 here tie a game as both teams are on a bye penguin with the op you know osu having a little hard time at their b pushes but it's scary to go a given that penguin had been holding there with his op but it looks like with osu pushing towards b we do have this penguin op now in b main so it's gonna be interesting to see how this goes here as silva decides to peek out in a second here except he doesn't yeah he's arrow wisely and doesn't pay yeah. for his, his life i think both teams recognize you know what their strengths are now and uh always you initially being able to you know set the pace be fa go fast play play around them um michigan definitely adapted to it realized hey we just have to we have to counter them and hold them as hard as we can and right now it looks like they might be trying to force viper out of the alt with the uh with her own alt uh of her own killjoy here um but not exactly pulling the trigger on that plan yet so a dart spots at least one as now, the silver drone goes yeah. into the viper's pit you should run. tries to find viper doesn't Oh, they it do. does get the thing yeah. on Viper. And I think they're going to try and ult him off here. Pushing in. Push Ajima yeah. destroys the Killjoy lockdown with his ult, but gets killed for due to it. Aruo doing a great job picking people off in this ult, but Sean getting a kill here. This could be a 2v4. If they can get the plant down, it could be a safe thing. Jet, Penguin sees him barely. What a flick! Holy cow! Are you kidding me? He wasn't on. He was barely on screen. Are you Are you kidding me right now? Sometimes nah, it's mean, just uh, the penguin difference. Nah. for Michigan. <laughs> and that's Actually, gonna that was gonna help bring the round to five four. I mean, yeah, he saw him earlier. He knew he was there, but to be able to oh just react like that, uh, that is extremely impressive and a very very good kill there to to keep him from getting traded off there. And the, that could have been lethal if he wasn't able to connect that. And it looks like we're going to have that jet op towards B main once again. Wow. Penguin gets the kill. As the arrow gets destroyed by someone else. And Wait. now a 4v5 push for OSU. Tough situation, especially even they're on a sheriff by here. Yeah. I mean, when you're playing a bit of a half buy, you just you kind of gotta hope what you make, uh, what you can make out of it. Uh, get what you can, see what you know. What is the other team trying to cook up? And with an op staring you down, B B main, it's not exactly a, a place you want to peek right now. And you can see they're uh, oh, no. playing a little slow. Mike jiggle peek it. Sean oh. trying to bait the shot. He almost gets it there, but uh, looks like Sean ducking out before he can. Putting the wall up, trying to trying to make them think that they're pushing up B main a little bit, forcing Jet to drop here, and uh, let's see if the attacking team can take advantage of this. As so they instead choose to go and rotate to A. Spin still here, Oruro still here, making a bit of a noise, making the play, starting to commit to this push, trying to make something happen. Orb gets picked up, Plant goes down, as two, three of them 
Wow. Spin. All four shots go down in quick succession with spin being three of them. Healing. That's crazy. Very well played from Michigan. Mm -hmm. Though, Absolutely. to be fair, there was a bit of good, uh, a bit of a gun dip there. So uh. you can't fault OSU too much for losing the run. Kind of just a, a tough situation to start from. Yeah. I mean, Spin just playing really well there, being able to uh, just catch them off guard while they're trying to move in, and Spin Spin just shows up there, gets one, two, three picks off, and um, definitely definitely the round determiner as the uh, Michigan begins their their two point lead, and maybe uh, if the attacking team gets uh, thrown into alternating rounds by by force, by force, by force, What's gonna happen for them as uh, as this uh, this half closes out? Two more rounds left. Yeah, very important round here for OSU. They have to win this, otherwise they're in a tough situation mm -hmm. for the last round of the half. Looks like OSU's gonna have three towards mid right now. Just trying to get contact anywhere, trying to see what they can get info-wise. Gonna have to push into this Killjoy Util and be main as they all start stacking towards it. The Soviets are on mid. Not yeah. Sure if it's on anything. I mean, luckily for them, they've been able to push up so far. They know that the uh, the op is not on B, or at least not staring down B main. So it gives them a little bit of comfort to push up here and make some space. They might try Mich and make something happen as they see him staring them down from the other side. Michigan pretty confident that they're towards B with the three stack along with one in mid. Playing this really well at this point. As Sage yeah. goes through the Sage wall. They're above him. The plant. Fizzy wow. jumps on and gets that kill. Stops the plant. No one able to cover that for him. That is so unfortunate. Barely seen out of this corner of his eye. I mean, Fizzy's doing a really good job setting up, trying to keep that plant from not being a reality. Ajima getting one to drop down enough to the uh, spike carry yet again. Not being able to make a rotate here, so they're going to have to push up and make the spike. The op is now on site, and it's up to Panic to, uh, to make this happen. Yeah, 11 seconds, a 1v4. I don't think there's a reality where you want this, unfortunately. Panic did the last shot of that round. And now they're, uh... They're gonna be able... They're not gonna be able to, uh, to make full buys already on the last round. And it's, it's a... It's not a place where you want to be forced to save, because it's not like you really can. And the attackers are gonna call for a timeout here, trying to at least, uh... Looks like they're not gonna want a, uh, at least a four-match... Four round swing going into the half, trying to at least get one more round before they uh before they do go in. And we're gonna see the timeout from OSU. Pretty wise idea to get to call this on this half. And ultimately gonna try to figure out what to do in this last round. Little banter and all chat here from the from the Michigan coach, silly little guy, trying to stir up drama. But uh, yeah, we're gonna see this very odd buy from OSU. Probably gonna get two more rifles here. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, with light armor. But yeah, their ult actually, economy is looking pretty well. I gotta say, maybe they just called the timeout to really think about how their buy was gonna have to go. Just need that extra time to figure out how to most efficiently use your uh, use your money here. As we see, you know, some full shields, some partial shields, some, you know, if you can, can get rifles, they are getting rifles. It's definitely going to be interesting for them to, uh, to make this happen. As we see, OSU sending three into A pretty quickly here. All five, actually, all, all grouped up now. Penguin holding... Yet sitting a very strange off angle. As an wow. angle, barely can barely see his shoulder. Gets the res out. Oh, yeah, that is so unfortunate because I think they really wanted to use that life and that res to get intel, and they run. don't get anything big out of it. Now they're going to be pushed back by the Killjoy ult. It's not going to be super detrimental to them, but they are going to have to be put into a situation where they have to retake the two operators now, or at least uh, with extra funds. Looks yeah, like they're going to go in for. Uh, but OSU's gonna flood out onto site. Now cleared by that ult. As yeah. Michigan has to take this 5-3 five, uh, five take. Yeah. I think they're definitely gonna be looking for post plants here between the mollies, between nades, between 
you know, Sova's got his ult and his uh, and his Util. Looks like they're playing back a little bit for lineups, looking for flanks. Yeah, there's the Sova ult going to destroy the Killjoy ult. Doing really well. I think right now at this point they're just gonna try and play for post plan, try and play for what they've got. Jet knocking out Sova, which is unfortunately gonna be uh, a big loss here. Trying to get the mollies out. No mollies left on the spike. They're gonna have to push in and make something happen. One player left on the defending team gets knocked down as three picks come quickly in succession for the attacking team. They're able to get one more round before they leave and uh, switch sides here now, leaving the responsibility for the uh, for Michigan now to to be the attackers here. Yeah, very big ground for OSU. That timeout seemed to have paid off well because they seemed very together that round. Uh, their mm -hmm. plan went according to I mean, what I would yeah. hope is their plan, and yeah. it, it just re <laughs> uh, we went really well. Yeah, uh, very much so. Just a, a needed recoup. Uh, you know, sometimes it's not about you know your momentum. Sometimes it's just about thinking about you know what did you do right. And how can you replicate it again? What do you need to What do you need to play around? What do you need to watch out for? And uh, maybe perhaps a little bit of the mean buy from Michigan having you know three or four operators initially wasn't uh, didn't exactly help them. But you know OSU put in the work and made it. Busy. But uh, he got his own pick. Leaving Kame at one health. And yep. Round now looks pretty strong for Michigan. Having a sight control and they just gotta get the plant down now. Overshooting just a little bit there with the arrow, but uh looking to see if it's a re if it, you know it's it's definitely a practical rethink that could happen. They just have to wait out the wall. Sage still has her utility. Um they've played it out, they got the dart now in just a couple seconds. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see the uh, sage wall used to try to just wall it off and defuse the plant. We're gonna see here exactly that as Sean goes for the plant. Defuse. Going for the defuse. I don't know if they know that someone's on the right though. Really good to catch him before he gets in there. He managed He's to trying get him. to push him, but he doesn't get it. Honestly, if, if Sage had pushed into that spike, unfortunately none of his right clicks were able to connect there. And sometimes that's just the RNG of the situation. It could have gone one way, could have gone the other way, but it did uh, did not go in Michigan's favor, and OSU is able to get one more point here at the first round of the half. Uh, perhaps get a lead here, playing, looking for Spectres, and perhaps even a Guardian for some of those more longer range battles here uh, over on A-side. Yeah, and we're going to see two Sheriffs from Michigan. Other than that, three Classics. Not too much out of the ordinary. Still missing some util as we go into this round. Looks like Michigan's gonna send three towards mid here. Try to see if they can perhaps catch a push from mid. But OSU seems pretty anchored onto their defensive spots. Yep. Uh, I've gotta say, like, it's pretty safe for them to be able to to play back, play mid, because if they can get that Viper wall up on A. They, uh, they gives them the room to rotate in. They don't have to really commit to anything here. They just got to wait. They just got to play around a contact, make the attacking team do something, which is uh, increasingly difficult on this map, especially with, uh, with low util and not exactly the, uh, the gunpowder that you'd want against, uh, what they could probably anticipate to be a half buy, uh, seeing how the trend of this, uh, this set have gone so far. Here we see Michigan get out to the, the little corner of sight. Fizzy going for the plant as Ajma gets a kill on Kame. Fizzy getting sprayed through the smoke as OSU now walls off and goes for a defuse once again. Wow, catch up spin, good intel there. OSU sticking the defuse, Aruro drops as they try to peek out and perhaps stop them from making something happen. And Panic dropping them one by one. The defenders do a great job there taking the round and cleaning up all the leftovers. Um, Pretty solid. I gotta say, this Sage Wall has been really, really beneficial for them on retake. Uh, they haven't been, you know, popping it out right away, and they've instead been using it to secure plants against pistols, pretty assuredly. Uh, I don't know exactly if we'll we'll see the strategy continue to be used as they go into rifle rounds, where you can more easily spray and knock down the wall. But it's definitely worked for them so far to tie up the game back into a a seven-seven match here. 
Yeah, this round's gonna be very big. Uh, oh, is he still on their bonus? Have a rifle or two. They have two rifles. And it looks like Michigan's gonna start pushing it on to the A site here. Pushing through the microphone shortly. We're taking one shot right now. It's just trying to clear the angles, trying to get in. Uh, the defensive team is playing back. He, you know, they're, they're not giving anything up, but they're also not putting themselves at risk. They know that they don't really have to because they're forcing the attackers to put themselves in a situation where they're the ones who have to make the risk, so there's no need for them to do it. And instead of trying to, uh, to push in against all that Viper utility, it looks like they're just going to rethink and go over to B and perhaps try and look for, for making this rotation push possible. Looks like run. Fizzy's going to pop the killjoy ult here, make sure that no one's on B site as he goes to break the turret. Likely recognizing that he's probably left. Snowman. I think yeah. Alaruda saw the killjoy in Snowman as Jet yeah. skipped off the plant. Definitely at least would pick up a little bit. Alaruda, or Panic trying to, to get a little bit of that, um, that setup back up, trying to, you know, prevent them from getting the plant down, trying to put the mollies in the way. And the recognition to, you know, play around that, not make it a, not let it be a big threat, it's pretty big. Penguin's gonna peek out yellow right as he tries to pull out the alarm button, which is very unfortunate for him, he just didn't have his gun out. Um, they're gonna try and make something happen here, but the attacker's falling, first one to go is Penguin. It's over. Arrow. The fetish tried to push up more, but wow, the attacker's pretty much shutting down all of the push there. Yeah, they very much recognized that the plan, once again, was to wall off plant and defuse just like the first two runs, and they just sprayed through it, got a big Sova arrow behind them, and ultimately just shut down the retake attempt. For sure, for sure. And interestingly, despite that being the third round after two wins, OSU seems to be on a bit of a light buy here, a bit of a pistol round. I guess they bought a bit more than I originally saw. The circumstances so tough round for them on the get-go panic trying to push down tube here See if you can make something happen fizzy's trying at least just waiting it out thinking maybe something happens here sean's peeking in mid Ooh. getting boo a really good shot there for the first one just putting him making him weak gonna try and trade off of him spin actually getting a kill on panic instead sean's still alive but you know it's a it's a 4v4 retake situation right as then the defense a little bit as OSU stole all out towards A and mid, so I'm gonna Probably be delayed see a retake here. Flank, yeah, flank or mid. Yeah, I'm gonna see two going for the flank here. Comet and Villa both about to peek out. Aruro manages to dink Villa through the wall, but not quite enough. They know that these pushed off. Hard. Trying to get him with the shock darts. Uh, I mean, Aruro is trying to. Send out a Hail Mary right there at the end to catch the diffusers. Not able to get anything, and it's just now up to Ajuma to keep it from happening. The wall not it's protecting him anymore, doesn't get it. Ajuma's safe behind yellow. Kame wasn't able to cover him, unfortunately. He's got the rifle, he's just gonna look for the exit here, getting the headshot. And if he could save this here, it could be very big for uh, OSU, and unfortunately, it's just very so missing it. I gotta say, bring us to nine seven. team wipes, yeah. Very big for OSU, honestly. They lost the round, but they were on all pistol buys. So mm -hmm. that, that hurts Michigan's economy quite a bit. Now, they're still in a rifle buy here, but... If they if lose they, this round, yeah. they're put into a sticky situation where they can't just, you know, confidently save, have a rifle, you know, have buys, have have sort of the, uh, the availability to have that flexibility. Exactly. Hmm. All right. Let's see the attacking team trying to push up here, getting one trade off. Kame doing a really good job of pushing up. We could see, you know, OSU likes to play a little aggressive on the on the defensive side, and that first pick is going to really help them here. Unfortunately, though, they are losing one player in the process, so they're going to be spread out a little bit more as the attacking team can make a four-man rush. Penguin doing a good job catching one of them off guard, drops Kame, and now it's up to uh, back up to Big Daddy Anas to get the trade, which he does. Spin getting one, spin getting two, great spray control Good there. Transfer. It's all left down to Villa now. Back towards Snowman. And it'll be interesting to see if he can get 
Any good. Enemy Gets down. the pick onto Al Ruru. One tab. Very clean. As he's looking for someone in mid. Here's Spin in the main. Revealing area. Trying to scan out, trying to see if they're peeking anything, trying to see what angles they're already holding and or what angles they're sitting at. He knows Sage is going to be up there, gets the first tag. Looking up, but does not, is not prepared for Ajumo to be behind yellow and just swing him there. Which is very, very unfortunate for him, but allowing Michigan to take yet another round on their attack here. Three in a row for him. I think OSU's got to rethink what their, what their major plan is here for defense. As, as much as the retakes were working initially, uh, you know, Michigan has definitely uh, rethought it uh, on how to how to hold post plant. Yeah, very well played so far compared to the first few rounds of the half. And it's going to be interesting to see how OSU responds to this. They're back on that Sheriff by one Marshall from Villa. As Eddie pushes up. Gets the scene killed by Spin and Al Ruro, putting the defenders in a four man situation. Tough spot to be in as each team rotates away from each other. Mission should have a free B site here. Yeah, it's just, it's time and time again a difficult situation to be in. You know, if you're trying to push up, you've really got to make sure you get that pick, and if you don't get it, your defense is spread thin against the five-man push already. Not a great situation to be in, and now they've got to do a 4v5 retake against, you know, walls, util, plants, and a bunch of controller setups. So it's not exactly a position you want to be in. Now they do have Killjoy ult, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do pop it if the stove ult goes down from Michigan right after. Mm -hmm. Just to counter it. Very tough situation here. Killjoy is a difficult one to use on B because there's just so much room for both teams to uh, exactly. play either out of or into it. It's uh, not exactly the strongest thing. They might be just saving for another round because right now they're pretty assuredly set up as they, uh, they're they pushing in a little bit, trying to make the magic happen, trying to get the numbers. Panic looking over, sees Fizzy, not able to drop. Unfortunately, running low on ammo. Both team, both players here very low and Ajima and Alvaro able to finish them off and secure, uh, secure another point for the round. Making the scoreboard 11 7 right now. And you know, OSU's back on a full buy here. Hopefully, they can manage to get some footing here because if they lose this, it's not going to look so good the next round. They're low on eco right now, and with that loss money, it's going to be tough. Yeah, we're looking at a little bit of a, perhaps maybe a slower push here. They're playing a little more, or actually they're, they're pushing up pretty aggressively here in, in, uh, in B. They're just uh, spread out a little bit more, trying to see, you know, where they get picks, where, where they can make something happen. Viper procking the alt early on A as the, uh, as Jet and Killjoy push up on B. We haven't really seen any situations or circumstances where contact would be super obvious. They might run into the alarm bot here, but Jet going high, probably going to be able to avoid it. It goes off, and Killjoy has that recognition. As they pop the Killjoy ult, this is going to be really, really difficult position for, uh, for the attackers, or for the defenders to be in here. We might see, uh, you know, counter ults. A lot of teams have both their ults up right now. Defensive team only missing service here, so it could be... Could, could really, uh... This could be a really challenging round if we see a lot of the util come out exactly when they uh, when they need it to. All right, tough retake here. It's it's a five v four, but that viper's pit always a tough time. Mm -hmm. Aurora going back in to recharge it as the sage wall goes up as they try to defuse once more. Enemy remaining. Very clean retake so far. So we look for the after. Yep. They kill the whole team and manage to clear it out. Bring it to 11 8. Yeah, I think it was really big for them. They were able to get, what, like two or three alts out that round, um, which is going to be super useful for them as they still hold on to two alts uh, going into the uh, the next couple of rounds, being able to, to sort of prevent that Viper's Wall, which is a great post plant, as well as Sova, another really good uh, post plant. Um, not allowing those ults to really deter their strategy as they sort of just came on in a flash 
and made the retake really, really happen there. All right, and we're going to see Michigan here grouping up towards a four-man stack, trying to get some contact here. That Sova drone, not seeing anything yet, gets destroyed without seeing anyone. Yep, hasn't followed it too terribly. And uh, we're going to see Penguin's probably going to try and look and make something big happen here if he can push off of any one of his teammates. If they get that intel, if they get the info that he needs to uh, to make this blade storm super worth it, the defensive team is playing a little bit slower, a little bit more passive. They know the threat that this jet uh, poses to them right now, um, but they also recognize a lot of their team is uh, is concentrated in A, and this can be really good for us. Penguin doing a really good job shooting that dart that comes out, and uh, right now they're just stuck in a stuck in a standstill, not able to really do anything. And we're going to see the Silver Arrow go out as Michigan all push in. Penguin gets a pick with his knives. 30 seconds left. Gets healed. Fortunately, not able to convert off of it. Looking for more. Trying to play around. The wall is up. Trying to keep the retake from happening super quickly. They've still got all four of their uh, all four of their teammates. So it was looking to make something happen as we begin to see Killjoy swing out wide. The first one swinging in. Sage gets the wall up, so they, if they're able to take this wall down, breaking the nades, you know, being a huge threat to the post plant. Panic pushing up a little bit too far here. Finn getting him. He knows he's on the right. He's watching out. The defender's getting another one. Almost drops to spin there. Doesn't get the full kill. Probably anticipated getting the kill earlier than he did. And we're really get, able to get the kill, and Villa drops. Yet another one. Big, big round for OSU. Absolutely. Really putting Michigan on the back step here. I think Almost. there was just Sorry, there you so much noise going on right there at the end. They couldn't tell, you know, when exactly, whether there was a defuse or a stick or what was happening. And they were able to just hold it through against three defenders. And, you know, despite their players dying, got the defuse. And that's really, if that's your win condition that gets you the round, that's all you need. All right, and going into this round, it looks like we've got Michigan stacked in B main. Really favoring these execute style of pushes. All just going to one site. It looks like we got Fizzy watching the flank though. His turret might see Reyna in mid here. But the rest of his team is going to go out. Almost get the plant down. Wall goes up, but a killjoy Molly was popped. The and defensive soul. Off here. Ooh. Ajuma getting tagged a little bit. Going down. Sean getting a great shot on Penguin there. This could actually be really big. Taking away. One of their uh, one of their big killers here. He Looks like Spin's gonna res him. Uh, that's a very As big El risk. We really need that. Gets the kill on Sean, predicting that through the smoke. Looks like they might be trying to go for a rota here. Fizzy catching the Nas. Very solid work. Two and three more uh, defensive players dropping mid as the whole team could pretty easily uh, take a left. grasp here on A with just Villa a, the, being the only one defending it now. Getting one, sees the other one. Not sure if he's ready for Fizzy to be up here. Getting two, and now it's a 2v1 situation with Sova on the flank. Ozma's behind him. He, he does not. He gets that big. With full util, he's still got a drone and he's got arrow. Not tagging anybody though. Penguin point, is above him. Light. He's going to hear the drone go out, but he gets the tag. Now they both know where each other are. He could tap here. Then he's getting the fake, and he does not get it. Penguin able to freak out. Man, that is a scary situation. Almost getting that 1v4 retake. Match point. I mean, I cannot imagine the pressure he well felt in that moment. Well played by Villa. Yeah, absolutely. Right in his veins right there. Yep, yep. Wow. Sova home from the uh, home to the ice box. He can absolutely show it off a little bit there, but I mean that that would have been an absolutely crazy conversion to have occurred there. Uh, unfortunately for him, Penguin doing a really good job to just swing wide there, get that get that shot that he needed to to shut that down from happening, putting them onto a match point situation now. OSU really got to make something happen. This could be the end of game three. OSU on a tough buy here. Only have two rifles, three including the Guardian. As 
they begin to defend against this. Yeah, at this point, it's it's, it's not worth saving. Then you either go all in or, or you lose. You can't really save on a match point around here. Tagging Reyna as they go in. They might be able to make something off of this. Unfortunately, uh, for the attacking team, Reyna's too far away to get really convert a kill off of that intel. Jet sitting in the uh, sitting in the wall just a little bit, trying to build up the decay. Fizzy pushing on to B here, trying to see if there's anybody lurking. He might get caught by uh, oh. by the other Killjoy. Doesn't the distance between Fizzy and Panic right now. Oh, he's right above him. Neither of them know. Neither of them know. Oh, Fizzy this going be so behind him. He's all the way no around. Clue. Did neither of them know? Oh, this is gonna be this is gonna be so big for them if oh, he can get Fizzy all the way. Surely Wait. heard that. Yeah, he hears him drop. He gets the kill on him. He drops. Knows that Panic's there. Panic not able to convert the kill. Oh, dying to mid. Panic. Man, that is so unfortunate. To, oh man. That's gonna be rough, but that is that is really really good for Fizzy here, letting them giving them that opening for that plant, and spins in tube. I don't think that OSU knows he's there. Oh, this oh be no! So scary. This be so bad if they don't clear it. They're watching. I mean, they're anticipating it. Plus, they have that that alarm bot there. But if they if they, if they clear this, one drops, it's two drops. Finn swings out, looking to get the third one, and there it is. Getting a flawless final round. Game three going to Michigan, taking the set. Very, very, very well done from both teams there. And Michigan coming out on top. Um, very, very well played. Very close series there. Mm, Unfortunately, absolutely. knocking out OSU of the bracket. But it was very well played. Very fun to watch. Yep, Michigan getting another chance or uh, getting a chance now to uh, to show off their skills in the in the playoffs. As OSU has to say goodbye, but I mean, both both teams did did excellent each round up in the air. I mean, I was excited. I high octane energy the entire time. I could not imagine the uh, the pressure these players felt throughout the entire set and the ability to uh, still stay composed and uh, bring it home. It definitely, mad props to them. Yes, well played to both teams. Very enjoyable. For sure. For sure. Fucked. I think that's going to close out the stream here, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Or I guess the the VOD. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, I hope you guys are excited for the rest of the uh, the Rivalry Day match that, that continues to uh, to go on. And I hope you guys enjoy it. And thank you guys so much for, for tuning in. I've been Braskers, and this has been my, uh, my co-caster, Phasmite.
Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to our rivalry matches today between the Ohio State University and the University of Michigan. My name is Kay Bond. I'm the president of the Buckeye Gaming Collective, and I am filling in on the mic for Hearthstone. I know nothing, but that's why Crazy Cookie is here joining me from Ann Arbor. How are you doing? Doing good. I'm Crazy Cookie. I'm here. I'm ready to cast some Hearthstone. OSU versus UMish. Let's see some good games. Yeah, really looking forward to it. Uh, so far, you know, our matches have been all across the board. We saw, you know, University of Michigan took uh, StarCraft pretty convincingly. Ohio State took Rocket League right back. And then Valorant was actually very close earlier today. And now we're right back into things here with Hearthstone. So we'll see what ends up happening here. Looks like our players are going through the process. Uh, they did the ban game off stream. So this should be uh, just game one of the series right here. And again, you're going to have to explain things to me here, uh, Crazy Cookie, because I know nothing about what's going on. All right, so I unfortunately don't have the deck lists right now, but it looks like uh, Luke is, is playing uh, Hand Warlock, Handlock, Quest Handlock, which is against what seems to be Quest Demon Hunter. Interesting matchup. Usually usually you don't see Quest Demon Hunter, although uh, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that this will probably be the, uh, the Ilnioth variant of Quest Demon Hunter. So what the Quest Demon Hunter is going to be looking for here is at... Uh, they're going to be quickly drawing cards, and they're going to be looking for the uh, one-turn kill combo of Ilnia, which is um, a card that, uh, instead of lifesteal healing you, it damages the enemy hero instead. And uh, using that in combination with other cards will bring the opponent down from 30 to 0 very, very quickly. In one turn, in fact. Uh, well. Whereas this quest handlock is going to look to tempo, to out-tempo the demon hunter. Uh, and outvalue them before they can pull off that combo. So let's see if they can get it. All right. Well, you know, we'll have to see. But, you know, for, for those of us that aren't really as familiar with running at Hearthstone, the primary objective here, of course, is that character in the center of the board, right? And they've got a certain number of health, and you want to get that down to get your opponents down to zero while still having some of your own. Yes. You definitely uh, don't want to lose the game. <laughs> First one to zero loses the game. Um, this is not golf. Uh, that's <laughs> that's what, we, what we learned, basically. Lower score is worse, indeed. So, so again, Looks this like... is this is what we were talking about earlier. I was like, yeah, the extent of my knowledge is bigger number, better person. So, like, right. I mean, come on. Like, that's, that's a pretty good summary, right? The bigger the numbers, generally, you're going to be fine, right? Well, actually, in this matchup, we're gonna see uh, we're gonna see an interesting, maybe some interesting things will happen. Either Luke or uh, uh, Luke will out tempo Santa, or Santa will get the the one turn kill combo. And uh, it looks like Santa already pulled off the first line of the quest line for Demon Hunter, so things are looking pretty good for him so far. Um, although we already have the Null out on board uh, for Luke, which is uh, pretty good on uh, Quest Warlock. Like on turn three. So, so why is that null important? That null is important uh, because a five four on turn three is going to allow you to outvalue quite, quite a bit on the demon hunter matchup because he'll have to get it off the border, or he'll lose health very quickly, which is not a very good thing in Hearthstone. So yeah, like we were saying, you probably don't want to lose that. That you know sounds important. Yeah, yeah. Um. But all right, so what, what do we have here? Like, what are the kinds of things that we're looking for from the OSU side? Well, uh, we're going to... Uh, OSU is going to want to draw as many cards as possible right now because uh, the quest says that the more cards you draw in one turn, you want to draw, draw five cards in one turn, uh, three times in a row, I believe. It's five, three times in a row. And then it's going to reduce the cost of cards in your hand that you draw uh, by one every single time you complete the quest. And so, at the end of the game, you're going to be you're going to have very expensive cards. Which usually, the more expensive a card is, the more value it has in the game, mm -hmm. and the better it is. Uh, and you're so you're going to be able to drop all of these expensive cards down for very cheap costs, and that will end up winning you the game. Seems logical. Uh, you know, probably overall trying to make sure that you're. Spending less, but what is this like costing that you're talking about? Like, what? Do I, how how much economics do I have to know here? So, in Hearthstone, the 
everything in your hand has a certain cost associated with it, a certain mana cost. So right now, for example, Luke is at four mana crystals, and he has a couple of options here. So it looks like he's going for the raised dead option. That's a zero mana card that says deal three damage to your hero and return two friendly minions that died to your hand. And uh, he's going for the completing of his quest. And uh, so he has a couple of more options. My guess is that he's going to go for the backfire, which is three mana. And that will allow him to draw cards, which is good in this game because you're going to look for answers to respond to your opponent. That's a really important thing. Being able to respond to your opponent gives you a advantage because you're just responding to everything that they do and trying to outvalue them to win the game. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's the way it is in almost any game, right? Or, or any sport even, for that matter, right? You're, you, exactly. You, you, you want to make sure that you're trying to play not only to your own strengths, but also to your opponent's weaknesses. Um, and so, right. you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what else comes here. But, you know, uh, talk to me a little bit about what, why was that, like, self-destructive strategy? How good is this actually going to pan out? Because right now, I mean, it looked like they were actually doing pretty good for themselves and then kind of shot themselves in the foot. <laughs> like, what? Now, and now they're so, losing, I suppose, but obviously it's still pretty early. Technically. Technically, I guess they're losing because they have the lower health value. But so the idea with Warlock is uh, a lot of cards in the Warlock class allow you to self-destruct to do certain things for a lower cost than generally would be acceptable in Hearthstone. So for example, dealing three damage to your hero and drawing three cards for three mana is a really good idea because you're not going to die. You know your opponent's not going to be able to deal 19 damage to you next turn. And you're going to be able to draw three cards for that low cost that I was talking about. And, uh... You know, uh, and then being able to deal three damage to your hero and return minions to your hand that died is also an incredibly valuable thing to do because you're getting stuff back that you would love to play again. And uh, additionally, with this new expansion, or I guess I guess it's the last expansion now, uh, seeing as the new one comes out tomorrow, uh, the quest has been incredibly prevalent in the meta. Uh, the quest is deal damage to your hero to complete the quest and get an insane reward that says whenever you damage your own hero, that damage is instead dealt to the opponent. That means when you're out of cards and you take fatigue damage, that's dealt to the opponent. When you draw cards, for example, that card, that card backfire, draw three cards, deal three damage to your hero, that will damage the opponent instead if you complete the quest. And... Uh, you have your other cards like Flesh Giant, which start at 10 mana, but uh, they have the condition where they reduce the cost whenever your health on your hero changes. And uh, it's at 3 mana right now, so he just dropped an 8-8 for 3 mana. It looks like Luke is getting some insane value on turn 5, which is going to have to be dealt with. However, uh, the Santa has got his quest reward, and it looks like... Uh, his, the cards he's drawing are going to cost quite a lot less now. We'll see if he's able to get combo next turn. If he's not able to get combo next turn, things might not be looking so good for him. But as of right now, the matchup is looking in favor of OSU. Hey, I mean, I like to hear that, uh, of course. But, uh, you know, one of the things here that I'm kind of curious to hear more about. So it appears to be the observant uh, eye here. These mana crystals, right? It looks like we're just getting one for every turn. Is that pretty consistent? Like, these players aren't actively doing anything to increase the total amount of mana that they can use per turn, right? That's just kind of increasing as the game goes on? Yeah, that's something That's something kind of unique to Hearthstone, is that there's only really one or two classes that can, um, that can really accelerate the amount of mana crystals that they gain per turn. There are other ways of course, that each of these unique heroes can uh, can outvalue other heroes. Um, in, ter in, in the case of Warlock, for example, they're dealing damage to their hero to be able to put down insane creatures and do insane stuff. But the Druid class, which I'm sure you'll probably see one of, uh, if, if uh, Luke will give me the deck list in a second. <laughs> um, uh, the Druid class, there's a specific archetype that allows you to accelerate your mana crystals. For example, Overgrowth, four mana, gain two empty mana crystals. 
you can be on 10 mana crystals when your opponent is on 5, for example, which is incredibly powerful. Although, uh, that comes with its detriments. For example, 4 mana, gain 2 empty mana crystals, you're losing a turn to gain those 2 crystals. And then the opponent might be able to uh, pull out some aggression and deal damage to your hero. Um, so that's a, just a big part of Hearthstone, is being able to know what your opponent is going to do next turn, and seeing what you can play around that to figure out how yeah. to counter them and yeah. eventually kill your kill your opponent with the best possible value. Uh, it looks like OSU is going to clear the board there. What what was that? Um, like I guess I'm happy that the board was cleared because again I saw a lot of eights on the board being eight attack power and eight health. Uh, sitting there on the UM side, and then uh, the board just disappeared? How does that work? <laughs> so, this particular uh, matchup, the Demon Hunter... Now, I wish I had the deck list pulled up. I forget what card that was. I, but uh, the Demon Hunter played a card that was that a, did uh, two damage to all minions on the board uh, twice. And uh, that ended up clearing the Warlock's board because all of his minions were at less... Five min damage to all minions twice. Haha, -ha. thank you. Ah. <laughs> See, that's the benefits of having a spectator on the screen. There we go. Yeah. I mean, hey, that's uh, that's good stuff. That's why we're doing things the way that we're doing them. Um, but yeah, I mean, so all right. Looks like now a handful of more units are coming on for the University of Michigan and even more cards to the hand of the OSU side. And right now, very low mana cost on a lot of these cards. Do you expect a lot of them to get played here? So the Demon Hunter in this matchup is going to be looking for... It looks like he has the Ilnioth in hand, which is a good thing for him, this matchup. But he's going to be looking for uh, two car three cards in particular. Uh, his first win condition is Ilnioth, the card that does lifesteal, damages the enemy hero instead of healing you. His second card is going to be the Morag Artificer, which uh, spells do twice damage to minions, to all minions. And then he's going to be looking for his... Third card, the Lifesteal card that will deal damage to minions. And then that will deal an incredible amount of damage to the enemy hero, likely killing them in one turn if he plays it correctly. Right. Uh, now, unskilled players will sometimes play combo incorrectly and be very sad at the end of the match, but I'm sure <laughs> these two know what they're doing so very that's, well. So that, what you're saying is, is that if I tried pulling this off, that would be me, where I'd be very disappointed that i get mad. Like, why doesn't this work? This is just supposed to kill everything. It's happened to me before, many times. <laughs> and hey, that's why we're here, right? Uh, and that's why we've got players playing, and that's why we're here. Another board wipe. Another board wipe from the Demon Hunter, the Immolation Aura. Dealing massive damage to the board. Things are looking really good for OSU here. Alright, well, I uh, have to see what the response means... is. What does that mean? Yeah. So the Warlock, our goal here as UVM, the, the Warlock is going to want to run out of cards in his deck and then deal damage to the enemy hero once he completes his quest. To me, it looks very favorable for OSU. I think, I think Santa will have the combo next turn. I believe, I believe he will. Just looking at his hand. It is very likely. Yeah. And so Luke is definitely trying to think about what he can do to prevent the combo. Yes, as you can see, we're hovering over the cards. But but there's certainly not something where like yes. there's no way In fact, for, they do have combo. There's no way for them to be able to like take care of twenty three health on the Demon Slayer, right? Um they can't do that themselves there's no... here. U of M is not going to be able to do 23 damage in one turn with the quest hand lock matchup. Now, they in a couple of turns, they would be fatiguing their hero, which means they run out of cards in their deck. And then they would be taking damage every single turn, which is good for them once they complete their quest, because then that would be damaging the enemy hero. So, for example, you draw one card after, uh, af after your deck, you take one damage. The next card you draw will make you take two and then three, and so on, all the way up to infinite damage. And so they would 
complete quest and keep drawing cards until their deck is empty. Although, it looks to me like Santa has combo. Although, he is shuffling his hand into his deck and drawing, which is an interesting play. And maybe he's looking for the reduced cost on Ilmioth. And he does still get the Ilmioth, which is good for him. But maybe he's not going for combo quite this turn, because he knows that Luke cannot deal 23 damage to him in one turn. Which might be the play, because he might not be quite sure that he can get combo yet, and that looks indeed like what he is doing. Yeah. But he does for sure have the combo next turn. Alright, so at this point it's like, find a way to prevent it here, right? Um, yeah. And, and what, ways to prevent it? Are there any ways that the, uh, the U of N player here, Luke, can try to heal their own hero? Or like, how much damage do we expect that this thing's actually going to do? This thing will do 30 damage. It will it will get the one turn kill if he pulls it off correctly, if OSU pulls it, the combo off correctly. U of M's best bet here, you see the Battleground Battlemaster in their hand. That gives minions Wind Fury, so it would be able to give the 5-4 Wind Fury. That still only does 10 damage to the enemy hero, though, which is not enough to kill them. Right. So, so things are looking rather grim for us right now. So here's the other thing that that's kind of going on in my head. How do these other units play into things like that we're seeing in the center of the board? Because it looks like to me that even when that there are these units on top of the board, heroes can still attack other heroes, right? So like, how does that all work? Because that doesn't seem very logical to me. Demon Hunter is a class that has a hero power that gives your hero attack. When your hero has attack, you can attack things. But when your hero does not have attack, your hero cannot attack things. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's, is that that little, like, exclama exclamation indicator? The When your hero has attack, you'll see on the bottom left of the hero icon, you'll see a number. Gotcha. And it looks like he has combo. And... Oh... Uh, does he have combo? Did he misplay? Apparently so. He might have... OSU might have misplayed there. Instead of doing the combo on their own minions, they decided to uh, uh, damage the enemy minions instead. And the interesting thing about the... Uh, I'm blanking on the name of the card. That does damage to uh, adjacent minions and the... One damage to adjacent minions and the minion that it's hovering over. Yeah, try to find that real quick. Uh, ah, fell screen blast. Yes. Uh, the interesting thing about that card is you really need three minions um, to get the maximum value out of that card. And usually you'll end up doing it on your own minions as Demon Hunter. So things are looking much better for U of M now that... I'm not 100% sure that OSU fa failed the combo there, but they've put out their Ilnioth, and if Ilnioth dies, they are probably going to lose the game. Well... Yeah. Well, and it looks like they can see. That... So U of M takes this first game surprisingly here. All right. Wow. Uh, just goes to show that hey, anything could happen. Apparently, with the decks that we're playing with right now, um, I don't know. What... I... You were like the entire time. You're like, oh yeah, it looks good for Ohio State. Oh yeah, it looks good for Ohio State. And then boom, right at the end, one character dies and the hero. So that was a concession, though, correct? That wasn't like something that instantaneously happened. So the Ohio State players must have known. Yeah, so I think the, the Demon Hunter deck that they were playing is one of the hardest decks to play in Hearthstone. So yeah. the fact that they messed up is just... Or maybe they didn't mess up. I <laughs> I wasn't paying enough attention, you know? Everything happens uh, so fast. Uh, but like, surprisingly for a card does. game, it feels like it happens very fast. It's like, okay, wait a minute, give me a second. I still needed to process that. Like, what's going on here? Uh, that is something uh, unique to Hearthstone. Hearthstone is one of those card games that plays like a like a video game, and it plays incredibly fast a lot of the time. And so with OSU, the Demon Hunter matchup there, they were really looking for the one-turn kill combo, and they unfortunately did not kill Michigan in one turn, which is what they were looking for. And when you don't do that in a one-turn one kill combo deck... You know, things look rather grim yeah. after that one turn is over. It's like, it's really overpowered, so but it takes all this setup to get there, right? Um, and it, I guess if you miss that setup, like, hey, that's...
that's that. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think if there's like something else that I could try to compare it to. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what. It's like banking all your marbles on a Hail Mary. And like, hey, a lot of the times right. your quarterback is effective. And sometimes they're not as effective. Um, so, yeah. So, so do you expect here that we're going to see like a difference in uh, decks? Uh, talk me through how like a general Hearts of the Match kind of plays out here. Are they using every decks every game? Or like how does that kind of work? So in they're playing a game mode called Conquest. This is how collegiate uh, collegiate Hearthstone works, uh, and so they have four classes. Um, and at the beginning, they ban one, and so each it's a best of three match where they're looking or not sorry not best of three they're looking to get wins on all three heroes. So uh, Michigan won on their warlock, so they can no longer play warlock, and so now they're playing a hunter deck against what looks to be Pirate Warrior. And uh, if Michigan wins this deck, they will no longer be able to play Hunter. But OSU can still play that Demon Hunter deck that they were playing before. They're still welcome to play that deck. But it looks like they chose Warrior over that. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I'd feel super confident about it, you know, after, after last go around here. But, uh, of course, we'll have to see how things come into play. So d explain to me a little bit about the difference of these different, uh, you know, decks and classes. Like... Uh, what, you said Ohio State is playing a warrior deck. What does that kind of look like? What are they kind of looking for here? Okay. Yeah. The warrior deck, uh, this is, ever since the mini set release, the warrior deck has been extremely powerful. What you're looking for in the quest warrior is the quest says summon pirates. And at the end, you get a reward called the juggernaut that every single turn deals two damage twice to two random enemies. And you get a random pirate and you equip a random weapon, which is a lot of value at the beginning of your turn yeah. for free. And so uh, the Quest Warrior deck looks to finish that quest as quickly as possible, and uh, then looks to outvalue the opponent by um, whatever turn. You're hearing that word a lot from me right now, outvalue, because it's a huge thing in Hearthstone. Yeah. And what Yumish is trying to do with this Hunter deck is they're trying to kill the, them as quick as possible. They're playing a deck called Face Hunter. It's exactly what it sounds like. Hit face. Mm -hmm. And uh, bring the health down as quickly as possible. All right. So, and, it, I mean, if the University of Michigan squad here is looking to try to bring the health down as quick as possible, at what point is it, you know, how long is the Ohio State squad trying to outlast, right? Where, where do you think that the major devil damage levels are going to take it not like you know obviously there's the intricacies of oh well if they draw this card or that card you know obviously but generally speaking you know how many turns are we looking into this thing uh that's tough yeah. i think the quest warrior matchup here is uh favored particularly because of uh the pirates that you're going to be summoning uh if you keep those pirates on board there are other pirates that can buff up the pirates that you already have on board, and then you'll be able to hit the hunter face faster than the hunter will be able to hit the pirate or the warrior face. Sorry, um, and so the hunter is going to be looking to clear the minions on board, which is bad because then they can't hit face, mm -hmm. and so then the warrior is going to complete their quest and be able to uh, take out the hunter. So what hunter is looking for is they're going to be looking to keep their minions on board and clear the minions on the opposing side board, which is going to be extremely difficult. So it looks like he's going for the Divine Shield on the 3-1 taunt minion right there, and attack face, which means that the warrior will now have to attack into the taunt minion and not deal damage to it, and then maybe the hunter will be able to attack again next turn. All right, a lot of interplay here uh, overall with, I mean, you know, I, I, I okay, I, here's the next question for you. Given that, you know, you're a Hearthstone player, how much time do you spend, like, looking at decks, strategizing outside of the game about some of this stuff? And then how much time do you think that, like, the collegiate players are spending on this stuff as well? Oh, man. I spend... I was on, I was on the, uh, the JV team for uh, Hearthstone this semester. Okay. I, I generally spent... So once you get to know all of the cards in the game, you know sort of what they do and you can spend less time, but you definitely spend a lot of time strategizing synergies between different cards and what they do with each other and then figuring out how to build a deck around right. them. 
And and that's where a lot of the fun in the game happens, actually, is in building the decks rather than playing them. And uh, much like any other card game, right? Yeah, I think we. I think I can speak for all Hearthstone players when I spend when I say I spend a lot of time building all right. decks and playing them. <laughs> so, if you had to give a guess about how much time in game equates to the amount of time out of game that you're spending building decks. Oh, take a stab at out of game. I mean, we're still in game, but uh, I'll spend probably about equal amounts of time playing and equal amounts of time building, yeah. honestly, because you're obviously going to have your people that are sharing decks online and saying, hey, this is a really cool deck. And then you're like, oh, I want to try that deck. But you're also going to be like, oh, here's ways I can improve this deck or here's ways I can uh, counter other people's decks. Yeah. My favorite thing to do personally. Um, and then, uh, and then you, uh, play those decks and see how they work out and then revise and Glory. I'm here for the gold. repeat. Yeah. I don't know. It, it just looks like, it seems like a lot to me. Go ahead. What do you see? It looks like you, uh, you sometimes got to focus on yeah, the gameplay as well. For sure. Uh, it looks, it looks like U of M is, uh, doing quite yeah. well so far in this matchup, uh, because the, uh, Warrior doesn't really have a taunt minion that they can put up, and uh, they have eight health left. The Hunter's Hero Power is going to deal five damage next turn. And they also have a card in hand that deals three damage, which is eight. Which means they have lethal this next turn. And so, it looks like Yuven takes this next game again. Yeah, I was uh, I was about to say, you know, I was looking at that eight health marker, and I was like, oh, that does not yeah. feel so good. And you said that it might end here. We'll have to see if they can execute on this. Um, oh no! Don't 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 even do anything else. If you do anything else, Luke, I will lambast you on screen. <laughs> wow! All right, harsh words. Just hero power, quick shot, man. <laughs> Oh, goodness. I mean, he has the mana to do that, but why? <laughs> Trying to put style points on the board here or something? Like, what's... Oh, no! The hero power only does four damage. No, it's my bad! Luke is right. Okay. Oh, man. So, what, you thought it did five? I'm a bad... <laughs> yeah, I thought it did five. Turns out I'm the bad Hearthstone player here. Well, then where would the other three have come from? Um, the quick shot in hand. Two, two mana deal, three oh, okay. damage. So it looks like next turn they're going to be wanting to play the trampling rhino and get value off of that. Hmm. Is this the part where we're starting to Things see? are starting to look... Yeah. Yeah. This is the part where it's starting to look slightly more scary for University of Michigan if they can't kill him next turn. Uh, kill OSU next turn. But it looks like they probably can. Seven, six, seven, that's four damage, plus two is lethal. Okay. So it looks like Yuvan takes this next game. There is the crack in the armor, and, and there is the quick there. shot. So that will be that game. University of Michigan going up two games in this best of five. Got one more left to go. Uh, you know, what kinds of adaptations are there? Is it just a matter of trying to strike off the right decks and trying to attack the ones that you're looking for? Yeah, that's something unique about Conquest, is you're going to be looking at your opponent's decks. So you you actually know what your opponent is playing. You have deck lists. Yeah. And so you know what your opponent's playing. You ban one of their decks, the decks that, the deck that you think is going to give you the most trouble. And then the three matches, you're going to have to decide, hey, what deck am I going to play? And then you see what deck the opponent plays. And then the next game, you have to say, did they win or did they lose? Can they play that deck again? And if they're going to play that deck again, how am I going to counter that? And if they don't play that deck again, how am I going to counter that next deck? And it's sort of just a game of rock, paper, scissors almost, yeah. where you have to strategize around that and then uh, try to optimize the best strategy to win the game. And I have to say, very well played by uh, Uven that round. The quest, or sorry, not quest hunter, the uh, face hunter versus pirate warrior matchup is very, very hard. Uh, uh, it's very favored towards uh, the Quest Warrior, uh, and they just played, U of M just played incredibly well there, and probably also, I, I saw the Quest Warrior was not quite 
getting as lucky as they could get, which is lucky for us. But. <laughs> well, you know, uh, guess you'll have to take those. We'll be we'll moving on here. Yep. Uh, two more on the board. Looks like they actually swapped sides on our Observer client. So bear that in mind that now we're looking from the Ohio State perspective here uh, on the bottom of the screen. But uh, yeah, so uh, the other thing that I'm kind of curious to hear from you is in, in a more traditional match, when would these players be exchanging decks? Like, would you would you be like researching these players significantly ahead of time, or is it something where like it's kind of like day of the match or hour before the match where they're hopping into things? You submit your deck list generally about an hour before the match, and so you'll have all of these deck lists pulled up, and they all submit at the same time. So you submit four decks, your opponent submits four decks, you have no idea what those decks are, and then you just see what. You all gotcha. are playing, and then go from there. Ah, uh, looks like the warrior is drawing a bit better this time. <laughs> so, what are the kinds of just things that the warrior likes to look. see here? The warrior likes to see that harbor stamp that they just played generally in their first hand is a very good thing to see, and uh, they want to be playing pirates on their mana curve, which means they're going to be playing a two mana pirate on turn two, three mana pirate on turn three, or like just optimizing their mana usage and trying to finish their quest as fast as possible. Looks like uh, Michigan is playing uh, the Demon Hunter deck that OSU was playing the first game here. We'll see if they can pull off something. Uh, so, what does OSU do here? Well, I mean, you just said maybe the three uh, mana pirate there, or that captain, I would have to imagine, probably counts. Yeah, but I opted actually not to go with that this time around. Um, it's going to go for something else here and get a little bit of damage on the board. It seems like they decided to... Uh, so the Demon Hunter has a lot of spells in their deck, and it looks like OSU opted to go for the Disruption rather than the, uh, rather than the Progression and the Quest. And so what he's doing is he's disrupting the spells that this Demon Hunter will now be able to play this turn to complete their quest, which is a good thing for the Warrior, I think. I think they probably played that correctly. Still looks like the Demon Hunter finishes their first quest in the quest line. Gotcha. So, um, I, where, just so that I can visualize, is there anything where I can, like, try to see and track the progress of these quests? Or, like, you know, where where is that kind of coming in from? Is that just something that in the back of the, your head you have to kind of keep track of? No, Hearthstone has this feature where you can hover over the exclamation point in the quest and it will tell you where they are and uh, and what they'll get. Gotcha. And, uh, yeah. So, so our observer so over there taking care of us. <laughs> yes, as always. Very nice. It looks like the warrior is doing quite well here so far. He's going to be looking for a couple of plays next turn. Perhaps he'll play the South Sea Captain and the Fog Sail Freebooter to try and aggro the Demon Hunter. Because the Demon Hunter has a lot of spells in their hand, but they're not really having a board presence quite yet. Which has got to be tough, because it's going to be hard to clear the Warrior's board without really having a spell in hand that lets you do mm -hmm. that, or having a board yourself. Yeah. So, uh, I, the other thing here, just to make sure that I've got all my ducks in a row, I would just reiterate it for anyone else who might be joining us. The Demon Hunter here, is that more of a, it's more of a class thing overall, right? Where it's like, there's this really cool combo that you can pull off, but it has to play it a very specific way. Is there any differences between this deck and what we saw in Game 1 from Ohio State? I don't have the deck list, uh, so I, I think, don't know for sure, but I think it was just it's the a, same sort of thing. It was just said. Uh, not too terribly long ago. Yeah. Uh, ah, I see, I see. So maybe you can take a look at that, and I'll try to make heads or tails of what's going on here. Um, they're just kidding. I can't make heads or tails of it because everything disappears by the time that I can try to read it. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Things are looking quite good for Warrior, though. Let's see. A lot of zero mana cards here, it feels like, uh, or very low cost. So, you know, how beneficial is it to try to weight your mana cost so that you're really trying to play those high mana cards versus playing a bunch of low mana cards? 
I, I like. It depends on how much value you're going to get out of each of the cards. There's no really easy answer for that. Yeah. Because the more low mana cost cards you're playing, the less cards you're going to have in hand by the end, which Makes is sense. a bad thing because when you have zero cards in hand, you can't play. But the more high mana cost cards you have, the less you can play at an earlier turn, which is also detrimental sometimes. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. All right. Well. Looks like Yumesh is probably going to try and board clear here. They use one of their fell screen blasts. Hmm. Okay. And they're going to glide, finish the second part of their quest. And then pass the turn. We'll see what OSU does this turn. Their hand isn't looking too great to finish the quest right now, but they do have a couple of cards that will be able to complete the quest. Now what they decide to play is up to them. I don't think there's really a better play here no. than in terms of which one to play first. Looks like they just got the quest though, yeah? That was that bell noise that yep. I think was. So, able to find that and putting up a considerable amount of damage here uh, on the University of Michigan's hero here. That's Luke playing for them. But, uh, yeah, I mean, overall, uh, it felt like it was a pretty good turn if you were a Buckeye fan. Indeed it was. And uh, what U of M is going to be having, having to look for this turn is clearing the board because 10 damage is a lot of damage right now yeah. to the demon hunter and uh they aren't quite to the point where they can successfully pull off the one turn kill yet is what it's looking like i think they're gonna have to wait one or two more turns which could be detrimental looks like they play one of their more artificers and they i beam the big minion they're just looking to draw cards here complete quest Maybe get the quest reward out. Are they going to be able to draw the fifth card this turn? They either have the option of trading either one of those cards that they have in their hand. Trading is a new mechanic that's quite interesting that has... that, uh... came... it was sort of new to the game when this new set was released. It came from probably ideas in other card games, you know, cycling. In Magic, for example, where you where you kind of just put the card back into your deck and then draw a card, which is pretty good for Demon Hunter, especially for that quest. Uh, will allow you to draw a lot of cards uh, for one mana each time you draw a card uh, with cycling. Or sorry, uh, trade them. Wrong game. <laughs> Wrong game, but close enough, right? Close enough. Close enough. Same effect. Yeah. Things are looking slightly worse for OSU here. They're going to have to try and kill Michigan much faster than it looks like they are. And why is that? Like, is, is this combo finally starting to come online? It is it is almost coming online. They pulled off the quest reward, so the things they're going to draw are going to be incredibly cheap. And then they're, they're looking for the three cards that I mentioned earlier for those of you that uh, have just joined... Uh, they're looking for Ilnioth, which is the card that Lifesteal does damage to the enemy hero instead of your hero. Morag Artificer is that all minions take double damage from spells, and they're going to be looking for that Fell Screen Blast, which deals one damage to a minion and their neighbors, which um, you can spell damage to amp that up and deal a lot of damage to three minions on the board, which will end up killing the enemy hero because the lifesteal deals right. the damage to the enemy. So there was a large animation that just played on the board. I don't know what. Is the, the freight ships coming in? What's going on here? Yeah. Uh, the Juggernaut is on the board, and so the warrior has their quest. This is ultimately what they were looking for. This will be huge. If they can survive one more turn, that's huge. Uh... If Yumish can't pull off this combo, then it's looking quite good for OSU. Well, if it's... The combo's precisely 30 damage? The combo... 
can be anywhere between... I want to say 6 damage if you don't amp up the spell, and like 34. Okay. Let's see, 1, 2... Well, it's going to be like, wait I a minute, if math. it's exactly 30, they've got 29 and just got 2 armor, so... Yeah. I am pretty terrible with this Demon Hunter deck. Yeah, I, a quick disclaimer, I, uh... <laughs> Hey, you're better than I am. I don't know what's going on. Some... <laughs> like I said, I mean, hey, look, one of the teams is a higher health than the other one. I'd be like, do they even have a shot? I don't know. Doesn't look like it. Sometimes adding and multiplying numbers is hard. Yeah. I, I wouldn't know I'm a math major, so. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. <laughs> that, uh. That one's got to hurt. Clearing the board again here, or at least trying to. Uh, is the University of Michigan side. They're, they're going to go ahead and try to do that here as well. Now the Juggernaut's going to be the only thing on it, the board they have to contest with. Um, but we'll have to see here what ends up happening for the Ohio State side. Uh, is there anything that they're looking for? I mean, the, the, the hell no, there's getting pretty low here. Do you think it's going to happen this turn, next turn? Ohio State is looking for one card in particular, and that card was only recently released called Mr. Smite. <laughs> A 6-5 for 6 mana that gives all of your pirates charge, including himself. And so, charge allows you to attack the enemy hero instantly, which would kill him, would, would probably kill Luke. More likely than not, seeing as they have more than 4 damage on board. Yeah. So what Luke is looking for this turn is definitely the combo. Right. They can't pull off the combo this turn, they are in big trouble. But it doesn't... Because they've used most of their board clears already. And it doesn't look like they have it, right? Their Ilnioth is in hand. Is it in hand? I can't... Oh, okay. Yes. I just can't see it because I don't know what the card looks like. Lol. Yeah. Uh, their Ilnioth is in hand. They're going to be looking for the other two cards in the combo. And, you know, it's just a, it's just a really tough matchup sometimes you yeah. know sometimes you just don't draw the cards you need and it happens it's hearthstone mm -hmm. it's a card game you know it's like uno you can get lucky you can get unlucky would it be fair at the end of the day i feel like uno is much more based on luck than uh <laughs> than hearthstone. something tells me uh maybe maybe a little maybe bit a little. Maybe, I don't know. maybe a little bit there, there's a lot more complicated stuff that's happening here uh-oh Okay, okay. They have the Ilnioth. And they have the Morag Artificer. They have the Guild Trader on board. Let's see if they can... And they pulled off the combo. Oh! Oh! They did not pull off the combo! OSU is at one health! Oh my! That is... That is absolutely incredible! That is... That is a sight to be seen! Wow! Hey, I told you. Michigan. There was there was the armor there, right? The armor saved the day. The armor, <laughs> absolutely. Michigan barely missed lethal. That was that is a that almost never happens. Wow! Uh, one health off. One. Yeah. That was an incredibly close game. The closest game of Hearthstone I've probably seen in a long time, and that's saying a lot. I have watched a lot of Hearthstone. I can imagine. Uh, hey, that probably also shows the importance of trying to make sure that you've got the multiplications and the additions and all the math right, right? Uh, yeah, that's why they spent their entire turn doing that. That's why there's a math major that <laughs> plays Hearthstone. Um. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not the only one. I think... I'm not sure if Avi... Don't, don't speak up. I, I have no idea. I didn't say anything. <laughs> I don't know what they are. But... Oh, dear. All right. So going on to the third, fourth, match. fourth match, fourth, fourth match. one. Wow, we're screaming along here. Uh, Michigan is again playing their third deck. They can really only play Demon Hunter at this point. So what OSU is looking for is they're just looking to play the best matchups and the best matchups until they win all three uh, matches against Michigan, which you know is going to be hard because it's a reverse sweep, but it is a possibility. Definitely going to be difficult, but I feel like this is game four, and this is perhaps a new deck that we're seeing from Ohio State. This is, at least it's a new uh, character on the card. So what are, we, what are we looking at here? 
So Ohio State is actually playing the uh, the deck that Michigan played first game, the Hand Quest Warlock, um, where they're trying to draw as many cards as possible, get value out of the amount of cards in their hand, and deal damage to their hero, finish the quest, and deal damage to their own hero to eventually kill the enemy hero. And um, Or they also have the other win condition of the Battleground Battlemaster that they actually have in, in hand right now, which isn't a great first draw, but uh, that allows you to sometimes catch the opponent by surprise, you know, deal twice as much damage in one turn. So are there cards where it's a specific disadvantage to draw them early? Because, like, I assume you could just hold these cards in your hand for as long as you want, right? So, like, at least you know it's there? Yeah. So in uh, in Hearthstone, you're going to want to get the maximum value out of your mana crystals, like, you know, yeah. uh, uh, as you would want to in any, any, any card game. And so some cards that you would draw on your first turn aren't necessarily beneficial because, you know, you can't play them for four turns, so, like, you may as well just mulligan them and draw them later yeah. rather than draw them right off the bat because you need cards that you can play right off the bat. Or, you know, if you know what deck your opponent's playing, you're looking for a certain card that will counter a certain thing in that opponent's deck. Yeah. For example, the Coltnia fight that OSU has in hand right now will uh, make the opponent's spells cost one more, which disrupts the Demon Hunter's quest. Uh, of drawing cards because it's a very spell-based deck. And, um, you know, it's, it's just a lot of playing mind games with the opponent and also trying to bring their health down very quickly, you know? Mm -hmm. Or, like, bring their health down eventually, you know? First one is zero loses. Right. Um... Uh, oversimplification of Hearthstone. <laughs> hey, I mean, it's the objective of the game, right? Like, you gotta start somewhere. Uh, yep. first one is zero loses, but... I mean, I guess the other thing, too, is, you know, t to the point of, like, you know, trying to get these you know, cards in, trying to understand the concept of mana. I mean, it looked like, certainly within the first, you know, four cards there, that uh, Santa drew, there were extremely high, seven, six, uh, on the board. Last turn, uh, those green ones were eight and four. Why do some of these cards keep changing in mana costs? Like, what, what kind of is the interplay here? Because I've seen in a lot of cases, it looks like it's a positive thing, whether it's reducing the mana cost. But here for Santa, a couple of these cards have had increased mana costs. What's up with that? So, in uh, Hand Warlock, Quest Hand Warlock especially, uh, the two cards, Flesh Giant and Gold Giant, all each are, have bonuses off of things that you're already doing to try and complete your quest. So Flesh Giant changes cost. It costs one less every time your hero's health changes. So like if you gain health, lose health during your turns, the, the cost is reduced, which is big for an 8-8 minion. And the Gold Null is a 10 mana cost originally that costs one less for each card in your hand. And the maximum hand size is 10. Yeah. So the minimum cost of that's going to be is 1. And most of the time, you're going to be playing that card for one because you're going to be wanting to have a big, big hand, as, as, as the deck says, quest hand lock. Yeah. You know? There you go. Hey, makes sense. Um, and what I particularly like... Oh, sorry. No, I mean, I was going to make some kind of an unrelated joke. Like, yeah, you know, <laughs> you would assume with his hand holding out in front, like, you know, come on, give me the cards. <laughs> well, uh, yeah... <laughs> What I particularly like about this Warlock deck, though, is that uh, uh, the draws, you know, you don't have to draw the right cards right off the bat. You know, you're, you're going to keep drawing cards and uh, because your hero power allows you to draw cards in addition to other cards that you're having in your deck. And so uh, you're going to be drawing these cards and you're eventually just going to draw pretty consistently. You're going to be able to draw um, each card that you want every single game, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes you're going to get out aggroed, you know. But that's unlucky. Sometimes you're going to get outvalued, unlucky. But, you know, a lot of the time this deck does quite well. Yeah, for sure. It looks like U of M has already finished the quest on turn five. And so they're going to be now looking for combo now that they've finished the quest because all of their cards' costs are going to be reduced very heavily. So it is a ticking time bomb here. Uh, that Ohio mm -hmm. State has to try to find a way to work with 24 health. Uh, I mean, how close to the way do you think they are in order to trying to, you know, find the kill here? Hmm, I think I'd give the combo two or three turns, two if they're lucky. Yeah. 
uh, three, three if they're unlucky. The unfortunate part about this matchup for OSU is that Warlock, uh, I've been talking about how this deck gets value by damaging your own hero. Well, you know that armor you had last game on the Warrior? It ain't happening that here. didn't allow you to get the kill? That ain't happening here. So the if they pull off the combo, they're going to deal a lot of damage to a hero that potentially won't have a lot of health. And so OSU is going to definitely be looking on having as much health as they can here, trying to maybe get U of M to misplay, uh, you know, if, if it comes to that. I mean, it looks like uh, it is a bit of a mismatch up here, right? Because it looks like, you know, as I'm looking at the health number here, we've seen it go all the way from 24 to 30 and now back down to 24, I think all within the same turn. So it sounds like that there's a lot more flexibility in terms of trying to utilize your health as more of a resource uh, in mm -hmm. order to start playing a handful of other cards and in order to start getting a few things rolling for you um, and trying to play the long game here. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, when you're looking at, you know, a potential 30 damage combo, uh, that's not precisely, you know, the kind of matchup you're going to be looking at, but it's just the unfortunate way of the way the decks were drawn, yeah? Right, right. And uh, what, what the Warlock is going to be looking for here in terms of disrupting the uh, Demon Hunter combo in the next couple of turns is uh, the Battleground Battlemaster that I was talking about at the beginning of the game that gives adjacent minions Wind Fury. He has an 8-8 on board right now. And then his goal is going to be to drop that Goldshire Mill next turn for one mana. And then he's going to try to surprise the opponent by dealing twice as much damage in one turn. If he has both of those minions on board, you have 8 times 2 plus 5 times 2 damage, which is 26, if I'm not messing up my math. I think you can trust me on that one. <laughs> it's simple enough multiplication, hopefully. All right. Uh, just wanted to give you a brief update. It is 6 p.m., so we are going to be... Uh putting a little bit of a pause on our Overwatch match. We're going to finish out the rest of this Hearthstone one. We'll see if we're going to a Game 5 here or not, but do hope y'all are stick around for Overwatch here in just a little bit. We're making sure that that one is getting held for us so that we can catch the entirety of that one. Of course, that'll be coming up next, and we'll take a quick break in between. But just want to give you all a brief heads up there, uh, just to know where we are. You know, if you're just tuning in, welcome on by. Uh, we've got four more games left to play. This, this Hearthstone one will get us over the hump here. Uh, to see what's going on here. Massive damage coming out of the Ohio State squad right now, but, I mean, how close are we to getting this lethal combo? We're pretty close. I, I can't give it an exact number because they do not have Ilnioth in hand, but, you know, with how many cards they're drawing every single mm -hmm. turn, uh, it is very likely that they'll get Ilnioth either this turn or next turn. And it looks like they just drew their Morag Artificer, one of their, one of their win conditions. And then they're going to trade for another card, Tusk Piercer, which will allow them to draw another <laughs> another minion, you know? Like, that. It's, there's a pretty common theme in this game. Oh, goodness. Let's keep drawing. I'm additional. Let's keep picking them up. I'm additionally looking forward to this Overwatch game for sure. I'm a big Overwatch gamer these days. All right. There we go. So stay tuned. I'll be staying tuned. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the interesting thing here as well, uh, might as well, it's one of the things where like, you know, we've seen a lot of people on broadcast over the course of the day, obviously a lot of different players. I think by my count, over 90 students have been working on this event between the two different broadcasts, whether those be players, commentators, our broadcast staff, social media teams, whole nine yards, everything is student led uh, with 90 different students, which... It's pretty impressive in my book. Trying to coordinate 90 student schedules to make sure that an event can happen uh, sounds pretty insane, especially when it's like, I need this one person to come and do this. Right. Yeah, that's something incredible that I, I, I'm a, I really, really like about esports, at least at UMish, you know. There are so many people in the org, and just, you know, the amount of... The amount of, uh, you know, things that happen, right. you know, uh, the amount of uh, things that are going on is incredible. You know, you're just able to pull stuff off like this with so much organization. And I never really quite realized the amount of work that you had to put in before joining the org uh, uh, my freshman year last year. Yeah. And, uh, man, like, it's a really exciting thing, too, because, you know, you, you get to have fun playing games, but you also get to be incredibly competitive and that's something that i love for sure in uh in the uh, in the esports world and that competitive it nature like, uh, is exactly why we're doing this one perfect segue back here 
into the current match uh, where both these teams fighting tooth and nail. They sure would love to get the win over their opponents. Uh, I will say, historically, I believe Michigan is uh, 2-0 on rivalry day versus Ohio State. So, looking to try to secure that with a win here in this game. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see who pulls off the victory. It's looking pretty good for the Demon Hunter here as he's able to almost clear the board. Oh, okay. He clears the board. That's really good news for Michigan because now uh, they are not within lethal range as the Warlock has to put on minions on the board. There it is. That Ilgn Ilgnioth card. Looking for this one. Yes, here. you'll hear it. You'll hear that one a lot. It's a, it's a very important card in the deck. It's the only win condition. It's why Ohio State ended up conceding the first match. They got their Ilnioth killed on board after they didn't get lethal. And they were like, oh, we messed up. Oh, well, you know, those things happen in combo decks. Yeah. Particularly why I'm not too good at playing them, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, two of the hardest decks to play in Hearthstone. Garot Rogue and Ilnioth Demon Hunter. You know, each of them have their intricacies, and you just have to play them right or you're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely takes a lot of knowledge to pull this off, and that's, you know, a lot of that knowledge is precisely, you know, as we were talking about the larger picture of how this plays in everything. So one of the reasons why, like, you know, you see a lot of these players are special specializing in one of these games, right? It takes so much knowledge to know what's going on in Hearthstone. It takes a very similar amount of knowledge to Hold really on. know what's going on in League of Legends. Like that's it. All right. <laughs> Don't let me get sidetracked. You know, that's the way Caster's got to have an exciting moment really quick. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Then deals a nice solid 30 you have You get to have the exciting moment. Yeah, because that ah, was... Ah, yes. Yeah. Um, but all right, Michigan's going to go ahead and take that one. Uh, thoughts overall on that match real briefly here? Uh, well, you know, I think, I think both teams played relatively well. From what it looked like, Michigan just got slightly more, uh, slightly more, I don't want to say, you know, lucky, but that kind of, kind of, they drew the cards that they needed. And from what it looked like, OSU definitely, uh, you know, that battleground battle master in first hand, not great, you know. They weren't able to finish their pirate quest quick enough. Uh, uh, and, you know, just in general, uh, U of M played incredibly well. Yep. And both teams played well. And looks like U of M just took it. Yep. It's a card game after all. It is a card game. Hey, sometimes uh, it's just the luck of the draw. But that luck is going to put the University of Michigan Wolverines uh, now one game away from securing the day's victory. Of course, we're playing out all of the games regardless of what happens today, so make sure you're sticking around for the entire rest of the day. Coming up next, though, is Overwatch. We're going to take a real quick break and hopefully be into that as soon as we can. Don't go nowhere, folks. We'll be right back.
Good evening, and we're getting ready to get started with Overwatch here today. I am Fable Achilles, and I'm joined by my co-host today, Dash, from you, Mitch. How are you doing today? I'm all right. How are you? Oh, not too bad. Excited to see how this game goes today. Um, it is going to be, I believe, what is the score right now? Um, three to one, correct? I believe it is three to one now after that last Hearthstone match. Absolutely. So this is a very, very important, decisive match. That is going to basically decide how the rest of the series goes, if it's winnable for BGC or not. Correct. I think both teams have relatively strong Overwatch teams, so it should be a really good match to watch here. Absolutely, and I believe both teams were in the playoffs last semester and this semester, correct? I believe that is correct, yes. Awesome. Um, so where are we at currently in the meadow with Overwatch? Are you familiar? Um, I'm a little bit familiar. I'm more of a diamond player, so I'm not in the highest of ranks here. But uh, there is a decent amount of diversity in the balance of the game right now, but there's still some stronger heroes and some weaker heroes, especially tank lineups are pretty varying right now. But basically, it's a little bit map dependent. I gotcha. So what kind of comps can we expect to see out of uh, out of you, Mitch? Well, I think it depends on the map, but they play a decent amount of dive from what I've seen and uh, also a decent amount of rush down. Awesome. And from... From my memory, BGC, we tend to like the um, dive comps as well and front-to-back team comp fights. Um, I see a lot of that from them, uh, known for their legendary Reinhardt players. Uh, but it looks like we're going to be getting started here. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a Symmetra on either team or both teams on this point, just to teleport in faster. Absolutely. And you can see both teams opting for the Lucio as well. Yep, so it looks like we're probably going to see a uh, fast-paced rush kind of start, like you were saying, and it looks like a... I would almost argue a front-to-back team comp fight from Mitch, right? Yeah, and they do end up pulling out that Symmetra here. Looks like double shield, rush down. That is going to be a long, grindy team fight. Yes, I agree it will be. And the comps here are very different, so I think whoever wins the first fight is going to have a massive advantage for the rest of this point. Yep, and it looks... Okay. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, you're... Go ahead. Play by play. Okay. Parker stunned here, low, getting the mega health pack. Big fight breaking out on point now. Parker looking to go back in, waiting for his team to engage, getting healed by the BAP here. And here comes a Pharmacy in the sky. Pharah raining rockets onto point here. And Green is trying to deal with that Pharah. That's going to be a quite important matchup. And Andy Taco gets the first pick onto Parker. Yep, and that Green is a still... huge pick. That is going to yep. basically almost give up the point entirely in favor of you, Mitch. Yeah, it looks like Ohio State is wrapping around here, playing a little slow, waiting for their ball to get back, as Hammond does come back relatively quickly. Yeah, it tends to happen Green. when you can slingshot yourself across the map in about half a second. Yes, exactly. Green's already built up the high noon here. Maybe a quick cast of the ult. Let's see what happens here. Here's the ult onto the Echo. Guess the Echo gets to Mercy also. Big play from Green and Andy Taco here. And that Start entire push game. is now over. And it's going to be time to reset for... OSU try and regather, possibly looking like a roster swap up top. Um, kind of keeping the dive, but transitioning just a little bit into a little bit more damage. Yeah, they've got the Cassidy and the Widow now, so it looks like they're going to play for some picks here. And after that first fight, Michigan was already at 30% on the control point, which leaves OSU with maybe two more good fights here if they don't win one. Yep, and it looks they haven't even touched point just yet. Um, it's really going to come down to the ultimate usage of that Mercy ultimate and the um, McCree ultimate differences. Correct. And the Symmetra ult comes out here giving Michigan the advantage. They demek the Diva, although they did lose the Lucio. Nice pick from Performance. Performance gets another. Wither gets one back. Green down on point. It looks like OSU is going to take this fight here, but that Winston switch really helping out a lot. Absolutely. And it, and Overwatch is really just down to a game of rock, paper, scissors, right? Comp versus comp. Um, all comp or skill being equal, I mean just comes down to execution um, and it looks like she's yeah. gonna take the point for the first time this game yep Michigan has 79% here so they need to win one maybe two clean fights here and that round will go to Michigan but OSU is gonna look to hold this one off for sure yep and it looks like um, Mitch is gonna double down on the comp uh, and we'll see how they're able to take the point back yep primal rage coming from Parker trying to get the Sigma off the map and he does high noon was used from Grim did not get anyone and another kill with the primal here but Parker is taken down by the Cassidy I think With Michigan go ahead. sorry go ahead that entire team fight was just decided based on that um 
super early death of the Sigma. That basically made, broke the team fight entirely. Correct. The Sigma was doing very well so far, but without him, it's very hard for Machine to push in, especially with the Ryan being pressured so much by those dive heroes. Speaking of that, Wither low height, low HP already here. That Ryan shield just doesn't stand a chance. The sheer amount of damage coming out between McCree and the Tracer is just insane. Yeah, the Diva as well actually does a decent amount of shield damage. Wither stunned up here. Flippy gets a pick in the back. Flippy now going into the Anna. Nice clean kill there. Diva bomb comes out. Grab Chew. Both Tracers looking to get picks here. Wither pins the Diva. DMAC Michigan is capping the point. And it looks like they will leaving OSU at two thirds of the way done. Grab Chew with another pick. This fight could go either way, although it looks like Michigan has the advantage. Yep, and especially if you look at the uh, look at ultimate counts. You've got one up top for Mitch. Never mind, it's gone. And yep. that is probably going to be the game. Maybe, but both main tanks got a couple pick here. Grab Chew really keeping them in this. And the res comes through. And no, Ohio State might flip this one back. Andy Taco does get the flux for next fight. But Michigan will probably have a good fight, maybe a fight and a half here. So the next fight should determine this round. Yep, and if we look at our ultimate counters up there, uh, Mitch... Um, Michigan might be able to pull up one more, possibly two, before the uh, fight breaks out. And it looks like Ohio State's not going to have any ready. Possibly one from the Tracer, but it's not looking very likely right now. Yeah, that Flux is going to be really important when they use it here. And speaking of that, there comes the Flux on the Diva. And Lucio does pick off the Doomfist here. C2D2 with another kill. Andy Taco and Michigan looks to just clean up here. And that Killed is going three. to be a wipe. Hopefully yes, last just the Tracer three. alive. And the Mercy. Grab Chew gets yet another pick, but dies in the process, and it looks like first round will go to Michigan. Yep, and it looks... Oh, not oh. just yet. Last second touch. Another last second touch, two people on it. And that should be it for real this time. Yep, for real this time, we got baited a little bit. Yes, we did. Alrighty. So what did you see that round? I saw a, a two very, very, very similar compositions. Um, and it just came down to basically skill execution. Uh, I believe OSU, we kind of just got outplayed entirely. Um, the dive comp, it was dive versus dive, essentially. We started with the front to back, but the front to back really didn't fare well, as well as it should have against the uh, dive comp you Mitch started with. Yeah, you Mitch had that Rhine for a while, too, which was a little different from the Winston. Both of them were actually getting decent amount of picks here. The differences in tanks was pretty important, but I think also the difference in the Lucio play was huge. You didn't see many frags from Ohio State's Lucio, but you saw C two D two getting a couple of crucial kills there. Yep. And not a lot of map, not a lot of um, knockoffs of map. We had a good, uh, good win snolt to knock everybody off, but that was just about it. Yeah, I think these players are good enough to be aware not to get knocked off the map here. And it looks like OSU going for kind of a hybrid dive comp slash front to back comp, where you Mitch decided to go with the same comp. You know, if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? Yeah, exactly. That double shield worked for them pretty well on the first point. Both tanks playing pretty well, and Michigan looking to take control here. They do have the early damage lead here. Already having the shatter built up, but he gets punched in the face there. That the Ryan Shield's about to go down. And the OSU team has taken that fight from down under. The Ryan feeding, though. Grim gets him. All right, but OSU does take the point here. Yep. Uh, Mitch is going to take a second to go back and reset. Um, can't really do much when you're missing your healer and one of your tanks. And it looks like they're going to go right back for the re-engage right up the middle. Yeah, here comes Grim trying to build up that tire at 57. Grab Chew at 65. Both teams opting for the Junkrat. He is strong on this point. Lamp is used by OSU. Punch does not kill the Junkrat, and that Doom is now overextended. Taken out, and that fight is going to go to Michigan. But OSU does get around 35% here, which isn't too bad. Nope, definitely not as dominant as the first game, but it is a change of pace. Uh, Lucio's gonna try to make a quick escape. Looks like it's gonna work out. Um, if you're looking at our ultimates coming up, um, Michigan's got one, two, three on deck, one ready. Um, it's gonna be pretty much a full on team fight. This is probably gonna make or break the game right here. I would agree that each team has a decent amount of ultimate. Beat comes out here from Ohio State. Michigan's still holding onto theirs. Shatter comes through, does get the Junkrat, and he is finished off. It's one for one here. They trade Lucio for the Junkrat. A Lamp comes out for Ohio State, not going to have that resource. Meteor Strike down, doesn't get anyone. But the Symmetra's picked off, and that should be the fight, especially with that tire. Machine's tire coming through also, but it does not look like it'll get anybody. 
Yep, I think that and fight was lost the, as soon as the uh, as soon as Green went down. Um, you can't afford to lose when almost all of your damage is coming from Junkrat. You can't afford to lose a Junkrat that early in the fight to a Shatter. Agreed. And while he did get one with the tire, he took about the whole ten seconds, and his whole team was dead by the time he killed anybody there. And that's very unfortunate. You got to find those picks really early with that tire if you're going to make a difference with it. Yep, and now the Junkrat pressure from Ohio State really coming in. Combined with the lamp, those shields are going to die instantly. Diva going in, Ron going in, OSU going relatively aggressive here, trying to keep Michigan back. Cell teleport is destroyed. Matrix in that Ryan trying to keep him up, but we got someone on the flank there. Yeah, I didn't quite catch who that was coming around, but it looks like just going for a little pince. Um, it's kind of, we've kind of got a stalemate right here. Um, just trying to, Michigan's trying to break through the uh, choke point here, and they're kind of having some issues with it. But here come all the oh. ultimates. Yep, Shatter comes through, Bomb gets one. Both Lucios are down, the drunk ride is also down for Michigan again. And it looks like Ohio State will take this map. Michigan may have a last ditch touch, but I this one looks a little bit over. I think you're right. I think there will probably be a last ditch touch right here from the soldier, possibly. Never mind. No, he got body blocked and then tired, so. Wow. All right, yeah. That was a very, very different type of game than we just saw. Um, glad it's not going to be a total stomp out. Um, much more interesting that way, right? Yeah, I agree. I think we're going to be going into Garden here as the third map. You, Maybe we could see some Farah here. Yep. Do you expect to see a similar composition, or do you expect something totally different from you, Mitch? I think Michigan's going to switch it up on Garden. It's a lot harder to play double shield, and especially with the prevalence of Farah on that map. Mm -hmm. Probably see some more game come yeah. out, more McCree play, probably more Soldier 76, things like Lucio is going to be probably pretty good in that case. Definitely very possible. Oh, they're going to keep the Symmetra and the Cassidy here for Michigan and Symmetra Echo for Ohio State. Ooh. Although they do switch to the Tracer for Michigan. That's an interesting choice considering there are going to be, there's going to be somebody flying around the entire round. They do have the Cassidy to deal with that Echo. As you saw, he was already putting pressure on her, making her back up. Lucio speeding the team in, but the turrets are set up on point for OSU, which is, are going to be a real pain for Michigan here. They do take them out, but they just keep going back up. The Echo already down, but OSU is still contesting, going full in on it instead of backing off, waiting for their damage. Yeah, big pick from Flippy here. I mean, OSU has to go in here. They already have the Sim set up. They have to try to take this fight, and it seems to be working. Parker getting two. Flippy doing what he can, but the heal's too much, and Michigan's going to lose this fight. Ohio State will take it. Michigan's going to back off, take a reset, which is probably for the better. You don't want to feed into ultimates and then just walk into it. Reinhardt going in very questionable. Yes. Parker has been very aggressive, but maybe a little too aggressive there. I think he missed it's the wall. punished by Wither. Yeah, that's definitely very possible. That was a and very the... unfortunate death, and that looks like it might swing the objective the other way, just off of that one mistake. Yep, Michigan has a couple ults here, both teams using the Moira ult, but the grab is up for Ohio State, and Michigan lacking that Zarya is not going to have the same presence, and there is the grab. Ooh. They get a few, but don't kill anyone. Nice kill from Green. Grab two kills Flippy. Wither gets Parker, and it looks like Michigan will take the point back here. Lucio coming into touch. Nice two shots from What Green a back. shot. That's going to take an extra entire second or so to get reset now. they got to wait for the Lucio to respawn, and we're probably going to see a regroup. Uh, sticking with the same composition. And Yeah. Why not? Both, yeah, why not? Both teams do have beat here. Diva Bomb for Michigan and Shatter for Ohio State. The, both rides are either half shatter or are coming up on it, so the shatters of this fight could be crucial. And Wither picks one with a fire strike again, but shatter coming through from Ohio State. Green somehow kept alive there. Great support. Andy Taco gets one. Oh, Symmetra wall committed by OSU, but maybe it was slightly too late there. I'm not exactly sure I feel about keeping the Cinder on deck after you lost the entire site priority. I, I feel like Cinder's a lot stronger when you have to walk into her. Um, but walking in and trying to set up your turrets probably isn't the most optimal thing you could be doing. Yeah, I think they kept her up for the wall. They thought maybe they could win the fight with a Symmetra ultimate. But, they seem but to I wouldn't be surprised if we see a switch. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. She does do a decent amount of shield damage when she gets charged up. I'd like but to see something it's like a hard to do that. Here. With how grouped up Mitch is right now and how tiny the site is, I think it'd make a lot of sense to switch some AoE damage. Yeah, something like a Junkrat or a Pharah and a Mercy could really work out because Ohio State really needs to change something up with the last fight. Michigan gets a couple here. Still sitting on high noon, although all their other ultimates are very low charge. 
Ohio State will have the grab, shatter, and coalescence next fight. So this game is far from over. Absolutely, and it look, like you said, there's going to be a lot of ultimates, and it's uh, it's going to come down to this. The critical Moira ult is down for Michigan right now. Um, he need, he really needs to try to build that up before the next fight. That's going to be that and the shatter missing from Wither, where Parker has his shatter. Yep, Iron gets nothing here. Oh, well, is he trying to push in? But one off the map there from C two D two. Cream shooting into the enemy's grove. I don't know oh, if you saw that, but that was huge right there. Uh, McCree stun grenade came out just in time to cancel the Reinhardt Shatter, which would have found several members of Michigan. Yeah, that's a large play right there. Green gets the Rhin 1 HP. Parker is taking down Flippy, trying to carry this fight, kills three. Teleporter taken down. Grabtru does get Flippy with the turret, so that's a big pick in case they can recontest, but it looks like map one will go towards Michigan. And I think you are going to be right. And that is yep. game one in favor of Yimich. Correct. So who do you think really stood out on that map? One person on each team. That entire McCree play coming in from Yimich, I think, made that entire difference to that game right there. Canceling that shatter that would have hit four people, which more likely than not would entirely flip the site. Um, Parker trying his best, but unfortunately... Uh, if you get your shatter gets canceled, you're almost worthless at that point. The shield being entirely deteriorated. He just got melted, unfortunately. Yeah, I agree. I saw a good and bad play from Parker. He was very aggressive. And when it worked out, he was getting multiple picks at a time. But when it didn't work out, he was losing his life first in the fight, giving Michigan the point here. And I don't know if it was really worth it. Yep, and I, I, I really do appreciate the um, aggressive play style. And I think that's something they're, uh, they're really known for. But I think the... Uh, Ryan play might have been a little over aggressive rushing right into the site and I think that was the beginning at the end of that game um, that must have been a mistake um, probably meant to stop at the rock but kept going and sadly probably threw the game away from that unfortunately yeah but that was just map one that's one of the shorter maps we'll see what happens here on the next one and I believe you said Ohio State likes the dive I think some of that aggressive Winston play style is going into Parker's Ryan play style here mm -hmm. but they are two different heroes so they're a lot different well, when you have to play so many, it tends to blend together sometimes. It's like, oh, oops, wrong, uh, wrong, wrong hero, wrong champion. You know, it happens. Everybody does it, you know. Yeah, exactly. All right, and we are going to be transitioning to game two in Hollywood, which is, I would argue, pretty good for some dive comps. So I think we're going to see some fun stuff going on. Yeah, especially on second point there with all the high ground and the elevators. Dive is very oppressive. First point, you can see some double shield, some dive. Maybe a mix, same on third, but second point, you kind of have to control that high ground if you want to have a chance, and the mobility of dive is pretty important for that. Yep, and uh, no champions being hovered just yet, um, but it looks like uh, OSU will be on the defense first, and Michigan will be starting on offense. It does look like that, and Michigan is going to keep that Lucio Moira attack, but put Flippy on the Hanzo. Everything else does stay the same. And for OSU, it looks like a double sniper with the double shield and the map and a brig. I'm assuming to stop the tracer that they thought Michigan would have. But if they notice there is no tracer, the brig might get swapped out. Well, it looks like we were entirely wrong. Uh, we will not be seeing any dive to start the game. We'll be seeing some front-to-back shield uh, sniping going on, long-range combat. Yeah, I think the dive maybe will come in on second. Double shield is still playable. But we'll see if Michigan can even get, to, or if Ohio State can even get to second point. We'll see what happens there. Yep. And it's really going to come down to the um, the shield usage from Echo and Parker. Yeah, it will. Uh, all right, here we go. Flippy already hitting a couple body shots there. 17% to the dragon early. Sonar comes out. That shield's not letting Flippy do much. Good tank play from Ohio State. They're trying to push in with that Arisa Sigma. It's a little bit hard to take space against a Reinhardt, but if you can get in, it's pretty oppressive. Performance looking to get a pick. Cannot get one there. Missed a shot on Sigma. Moira Orb comes through. Mafia here also. Mafia taking, they're taking the high ground here. OSU does a good job taking the high ground. Cassidy Flash did stun them a little bit. Here's the Sigma 8. And the Shatter already coming through from Wither, killing three. And that looks like that fight is over. Yep, that is a total reset. What a shatter from Wither. I mean, Shield came down for just a second. He saw his opportunity and took it. And getting some free ch uh, ult charge right there off somebody walking through the door. Performance getting picked off by Flippy, unfortunately. Um, Reinhardt's going to yeah. get some free charge while everybody's walking up. 
Yep, and Ohio State switching to the Cassidy here instead of the Widowmaker. Trying to maybe stun Wither, punish his aggression a little bit. Because the Reinhardt in that small room like that will do too much damage if you don't have your own. And Flippy, another pick onto Echo. Flippy really popping off here. Yep, and it's uh, another another death for the tanks. Um, oh, she's probably going to have to back off here and reset until their primary tank comes back. Or they can just keep pushing. Um, I don't think that's a wise yep. decision, but... Maybe not. Maybe they're just farming for ults here because they do have the Flux now and they have the Rally. I assume next fight they'll Rally in, get really tanky. Maybe also use the Bat Matrix and Ohio State could definitely take that fight here. Absolutely. Um, it's really it's going to come down to ultimate usage like most games do. Yep. Oh, and the Bat Matrix and the Rally come out. And they absolutely delete Ryan. Ohio State, really fast cleanup there. They took about two minutes off the clock. Which but is that's not, not the worst. The yeah, I don't think either teams can really complain about two minute hold there. It's right in the middle of the four minute start time. Yep. And now there's a little battle for the high ground here. And it looks like the point's gonna flip, so it means we're gonna be in motion here in just a second. Yep, one for one trade here. The Cassidy picks off Lucio, but then gets killed by Flippy. And Michigan does take the high ground here, so it's going to be a little bit hard for Ohio State to keep pushing that cart without dying to that pressure from the Hanzo and the Cassidy. Yep. Well, you have a Cassidy ult and you have the Flux coming up and a combo right there. They're forced off the high ground immediately by the um, by the yes. dragon. Yeah, that zoning dragon was pretty big. Wither getting taken low. Oh, and with the Moira dead, the rest of the team is probably soon to fall. Lucio heals. The beat does come through, saves the Ryan for a little bit. C2D2 does get a pick. High noon from the back does pick one. Performance gets another nice play here. Trying to chase the Lucio, get that exit frag here. And will he do it? Yes, he will. And that is almost and certainly OSU gonna be up. a checkpoint here for, for OSU. We're very, very close to it. Um, they're gonna have to wait for Lucio to yeah. push back up as well as the Cassie to come back from spawn. Um, not a lot of ultimates left on the side of you, Mitch. Got a um, dragon on deck, but that's about it. Doing a little dance in Correct. the corner. What a yeah, a little bit of BM here. But Michigan looks like they are going to try to touch, get another fight, but they don't see performance to Flash Fan. But he is traded out. Uh, performance. And this could actually give an advantage to Michigan here with the response. Perform performance always put on a performance. What a showman he is. Yes, he is. I agree. Living up to his name there. Flux comes through from Ohio State. This fight is not over. And Mafia with two with the same Storm Arrow. Pretty big pick. Green trying to bring it back for Michigan. Gets a bat low, but is stunned up by the Brig. And Ohio State absolutely rules the second point here. Four minutes to get to the last checkpoint. That is a lot of time to play with. And that's going to be very, very difficult for Michigan to come back from. However, it looks like they're going to have some ultimates ready. Um, for, probably not soon enough. Um, Dragon ready on the side of OSU as well as a rally. Very close behind, not too far from a high noon as well. Yeah, the only di real, real difference in ultimates right now is the rally versus that coalescence. Whichever support can get more value. Speaking of that, Coalescence comes out. Green picked Performance. Performance did pick Flippy. Each team loses one DPS. Dragon eaten by Andy Taco, then kills the Echo. Big play for Michigan, especially with old value. And they're pushing back Ohio State. But Ohio State does spawn right here, so they're not going to lose too much time. And as I say that, they pick two. Michigan has to back off with no main tank and no Lucio for speed here. Yep, that's all you can really do in that situation. I think that Rally coming in is such a clutch clutch ultimate to have around i mean especially with the sheer amount of burst damage Mich uh, michigan has right now yeah i agree that rally used to be even stronger actually before they had to nerf it but it's still a very strong ultimate wither gets two of the charge the bomb takes out the map matrix but two picks coming back osu's dps really stepping it up on this map here yep can't can't ask for much better we're actually going to get a good series and that's what you like to see you don't like to see a one side blow out um we're gonna see the junk rat coming out from uh, Michigan right now, which is probably yeah. a good thing to help pop some shields. Yeah, Flippy is out on the junk crowd. The question is, can he even do anything in time before OSU caps? Because OSU is pretty much there. Michigan does have to touch. They will have the beat coming up in a second as long as the Lucio doesn't die, but he's taken out right there by the back. And that's probably going to be the point, unless Michigan has a mirror play come through. Just staggers coming through now. Andy Taco taken down, and that's a pretty decent time bank there for OSU. Wow, what a round. Yeah, I agree. I think OSU's DPS really stepped it up from the first point, or from the first map, sorry, to Hollywood. And then 
I want to see what happens on the defense. Maybe it's just an attacker map. Who knows? It's possible. Um, oh, I think OSU finally got in their comfort zone and found something that worked, and they stuck with it. Um, they didn't have a lot of champion change that entire time, where we saw a lot cycle through uh, the Michigan side. Yeah, and when that happens, that really reduces the amount of ultimates you get from Michigan. You keep changing characters. You do lose that precious ultimate charge and wait while it may give you some slight value in terms of what character is better versus another. If you don't have those ultimates up, it's going to be hard to win team fights versus a team that does. Yep, and I always you had the uh, ultimate advantage almost that entire last game. I mean, there wasn't a lot of times where I could say Michigan had more ultimates ready to go. Yeah, I think just maybe on the first point for a little bit, but that was about it. OSU, good job cycling them there for sure. OSU going to keep a similar comp here. They really like that brig, getting a lot of value to the rallies, and Michigan does not want to resort to that just yet. It looks like we're going to see essentially a mirror here, um, close, very close to it. Um, we will see who's going to make better use of that ultimate first. Um, I think it's really going to come down to Wither and the Shatters again as well as um, Green's ability to get some big high noons in the background. Yeah, I agree. The tank play is going to be super, super crucial here, especially since they are not running mirror tank comps. If they can get the value out of that diva to help get Wither in and get Wither swinging, it will go towards Michigan. If that shield pressure from Ohio State is too much, Michigan may not even cap the first point here. Yep, and a lot of great shots coming out here, here from Performance. Yeah, Performance gets two, Parker gets another one. Performance with one more just to cap it off. And Ohio State, a really clean first fight. Performance going crazy. What a shutout. Yeah, and if you look at the difference in the McCree old charge here, 77 to 24, Performance up 50%. And yeah, that's going to prompt the McCree switch onto the Junkrat for Dream this time. And you hate to see the ultimate charge get wasted. That went from, I mean, not that 40% is a lot, but that's almost halfway, and then you go to nothing. I don't know if that's what's yeah. end up being worth it. Um, I think it. Oh, I was about to say I think it will, but performance picks him off again. But Flippy getting two here. Hanzo going nuts. Wither trying to take space, but it's just so hard. Oh, Bat Lamp comes out to claim that area if Ohio State peaks if they're dead. Flippy with another two. Wither trying to push in. Flippy with another one. Oh, they don't let him get the six K. Andy Taco finishes off the last guy, but Michigan is going to cap here with a little more time than Ohio State did. Yep, I think you're right. I think this is going to be a very, I think this is a very attacker-sided objective here. Um, no, no changes out in the side of Ohio State. Um, we're going to see the Ash come out from uh, Michigan with one ultimate on deck, which I bet we're going to see him use the dragon to clear out the high ground again, just like we saw last round. But there's yeah. no more ultimates up inside of Ohio State. Yeah, so Ohio State's going to have four ultimates coming up here, and all of them will do a lot of damage. Performance looking to hide in that corner again. He's been catching Michigan off in those corners. When they don't check him, he just gets to flash fan and the free kill. Performance going for the Ash gets him one, but the Lucio saves him. Green picks him off. Performance, as you said, is always putting on a show. And down goes the Reinhardt. That is a huge loss for that fight going on up top, not having your Reinhardt with you. Just causes an entire wash in the side of Michigan. Yeah, a nice Arisa Bull to take him off there. Sigma does finish him off. And that bat lamp was also pretty important. Andy Tacos are really really the only one they have who can hard pressure the high ground without being punished that easily. But if that diva can't get the value it needs to, it's going to be a hard second point to take. The only real way you can take the high ground, aside from getting the diva up there, is to have the dragon on the deck. But it looks like we're going to see yep. a lot of ultimates getting burned here. Yeah, a massive shatter coming through from Wither again. The thing with not having your own Reinhardt is a lot harder to block shatters with Arisa or Sigma. So if Wither does get the shatters when the other team lines up for him, that fight will just be over as we saw here. Yep, that was a bit of a roll right there. Um, that that was a huge shatter out of Wither once again. Yeah, most of these team fights are getting ended quickly, which is good for the attacker side. If you're defense, you want to burn as much time as possible, so you want these longer team fights where you keep trading people, especially now since Ohio State will have the spawn advantage and he trade of players here will be very beneficial. And performance going to be really through. kill on Cream and Mafia going to pick up Flippy. Um, that's going to be huge. Yep, and there's the picks for Ohio State. Yet again, another super fast fight, allowing Michigan to reset very quickly. It looks like it's going to so be a nice reset. they won't lose too quick. much time. Yep, they won't lose too much time, which is 
pretty important, especially because Ohio State did cap with over two minutes. So Michigan really needs to make it up quickly. Yep, it looks like we're, if it continues to this pace, we're likely going to have overtime here on this second map. Yeah, I would surmise that we do that. I think it will go into the overtime, and probably both teams will get to at least four points here. And we'll see who can stop the payload the next time around. Oh, that was huge. But as I say that, yeah, performance picks off Kareem, and a lot of the damage, plus the Bob, are not going to be in play for this fight. You can't afford to lose. That you can't afford to lose your Ash while having Bob up. That was a critical mistake. No, but Flippy does get performance. Mafia trading back on C2D2. And Michigan only has the Bob up. It's the only ultimate they have, so not having that right now is going to be killer. And they are going to lose that fight. Ohio State taking another one. Yep, and there's a couple up on the side of Ohio State. Um, we're getting really close on time here. Um, I think Michigan's probably going to get two or three really good pushes in, maybe a fourth very quick rush push. But as it stands, this is looking really good in the favor of Ohio State right now. Yeah, that Lucio is going to give Michigan a chance to get more fights than usual because of his speed boost there. Michigan looking to go to the right side, probably take the high ground. Flippy checking the flank just in case performance has been hiding out a lot. Flippy is on the tracer now, going to look to get in the back, maybe get a pick on the BAP, or just pressure down the Sarissa. The Sarissa is pretty much by herself, getting taken low. Lamp is forced to be used here by the BAP. Flippy does destroy it. The Performance and Sigma each get a pick here, and Ohio State is up two people again. However, that was a huge loss putting out the uh, Immortality field as early as they had to to save the Orissa. They couldn't afford to lose their tank that early in the fight. Yeah, and if Michigan had gotten a pick or two there and not died, that fight would have been swayed drastically, especially not having the Immortality. But it looks like this is going to come down to our last fight. Um, performance looking for the high ground, maybe get a pick with this ultimate, which this is going to be huge if he finds it right here on the side. Um, doesn't look like he's going to. Flippy kind of snuffed them out a little bit, but... Yeah, Performance has to retreat to that health back there, which will lose valuable time. But Rally did come out from OSU, and two or three of them still have that Rally armor. We're just going to keep them extra tanky. Flippy takes out Supercharger. Bomb coming through. Performance in the black back. The Hydrant's blocked. One for one, but no main tank for OSU, which is going to be crucial. But no support for Michigan, which is probably even worse. The only healing they have now is the payload which will not be very much. I tend to forget the payload heals you from being around it. That is a fun fact. Um, it looks like that is going to be the game. There's going to be a, one last little push, uh, last second touch kind of thing going on, but normally these tend not to work out for the team. Yep, flash fan there from performance. Bab going to pick one off. That and Another dragon kill coming through from Mafia. And OSU will probably take this map just to trace your stalling here. Taken down, and yeah. That looks like it's going to be one-to-one -one now. Yep. What a very, very different game, too. Um, what a transition. And I wish he was able to find some momentum and keep it going the entire time. Uh, that first point didn't stand much of a chance for either team. But uh looks like she was able, able to hold the ground there and uh, burn a lot of time finding those picks with uh, from performance. Yeah, performance and Mafia there, actually. Yeah. I mean, very well. Well, we didn't talk about Mafia much during the match, but his Hanzo damage was really felt there by Michigan, especially with the Reinhardt shield. Yep, and it, uh, you know the unspoken hero, but performance, uh, being able to find those picks was huge, as well as the Hanzo making those big plays. Um, those old, We didn't get to see a lot of McCree ultimates come out, or I'm, my apologies. Um, what's his name now? Um, Grim? That's right. That's or right. Flippy. Flippy, my apologies. Um, but we'll we'll be seeing what's coming out with the uh, with game three. Um, I think it's gonna be... yes. Good. It is a best of three. Correct, correct. Right. So we're gonna go to game three here. Um, what map are we going to? I don't think the map has been decided oh, just thought, yet. I thought I heard that in the background. My apologies. Um, oh, no problem. So who do you think was the outstanding players for both teams last round? Well, I mean, you gotta say performance there for OSU, uh, and I think. For Michigan, it was probably Wither. He he did his best, especially on the defense with the big shatters and stuff. But once Wither got shut down, I don't know if anyone on Michigan really had an outstanding performance. I think he was just a little – Ohio State just played a little bit better. Like you said, it really did come down to those shatters. Um, Wither was able to find some here and there, but unfortunately a lot of them were getting blocked by the Orissa shields and the uh, Sigma shields. Um, that really made – like you said, made 
made or break every single fight. Um, he had a huge shatter on the defense to start the round, and it was looking really bad, but you know, they were able to turn around and snowball it. But I think the constant switching from Michigan was really not the best thing you could be doing. Like you said, um, it really came down to the ultimates, and switching your champion every couple seconds is resetting all of your ultimate progress, and you can't really have that in a game based around ultimates. Yeah, I feel like... Already, yeah, we and to round three on Route 66 with OSU starting on attack. What kind of all right? This should be an interesting coming out. Um, I would guess double shield again. It's pretty popular on that map. Maybe just maybe we'll see dive. I think Michigan may try to change something up after that last map when Hollywood not going so well. Route 66 is a very different map from Hollywood though, so we'll see what happens and who's more prepared here. Who knows? Maybe we'll see a throwback. Um. Bastion comp sitting up top. I would love to see that. Not going to happen, but what a throwback. No. I would like to see it. We got the classic Arisa Hog here for Ohio State. Ooh. Looking to get that pull into the hook here I over the double field. I think Roadhog is a great fit for Parker considering his very aggressive playstyle we've been seeing this entire series. Yeah, and there's no Anna on Michigan's side to antinate him or sleep him, so he can pretty much go with free reign only worrying about Green's Flash and maybe the Sigma Rock. And we also see the Zen for, I believe, the first time for Ohio oh, State. Oh, I thought we were going to get to see the Bastion. Mafia was giving us a bit of a tease. Yeah, I think just doing that for the fans here, but it's going to be double sniper again for Ohio State. Along with the Zen and the BAP, there's going to be a lot of range damage here. All right, and the fight's starting here. Michigan set up on gas station. And Ohio State just pushing the cart for now, trying to take a little bit of space. Michigan spamming shields, both teams spamming the choke. Green trying to watch out for any flank, and I think they do spot out the Widow. Hog going to go on the side. Discord on to the Orisa, which is going to make Wither die quickly. It is now on the Sigma, and a nice shot from Performance yet again, killing Green. But the hook comes through also, and it looks like OSU will take this fight. Yep, that was a huge hook coming from Parker, as well as some great Zenyatta orbs. Um, the combo of... Roadhog and Zenyatta is actually really scary. You get hooked in, then dis, uh, Discord Warp, you're not going to survive that, likely. Yeah, you're probably not saving, getting saved, especially with the lack of a D.Va on Michigan's team to Matrix any of that damage. I'm Flippy sorry. does kill Parker, though. Michigan can re-engage, potentially. The shields try to stop that Widow from performance here. Yep, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see Michigan sticking to the same champ sticking to the same heroes and champions, rather than switching around. Um, you can't afford to keep burning your ultimate cooldowns like that. Green yep. finding Echo huge kill performance there. Correct. Echo was almost taken out earlier in that fight, but saved by the lamp and brought up to full. But Michigan does get two picks here. Brian killing Mafia. Green with the stun. The fan of the hammer gets to Roadhog low. Green does it the high noon. Bat Matrix also comes out with the pull. Oh, with the hook. And he saved somehow. Nope. Dies to the right click from Parker. But Michigan will still take the fight. Man, Green, I thought he was in the clear. I thought he was getting away from that, but what a hook from Parker. Yeah, and I thought Green was going to make it out after he got hooked and didn't die too, but the follow-up was there. I wasn't exactly sure what killed him, to be totally honest. I thought he was out in the immortality field, but I guess it went down as soon as he got hit. Yeah, I guess so. Performance with the infrared here. Going around the side, and gets a shot, gets the Arisa low, goes for the grapple shot, does not hit it. It's the body shot on the Gream with the Discord. Gream is going to get taken out again by performance. The difference in range between Widow and Cassidy is really proven detrimental here for Michigan. Yep, and we're going to see a switch come from you, Mitch. We're going to see the uh, Hanzo be put away, and we're going to see the Tracer come out. Not to live too long, but it did come out. It did come out. Brian does get one. Michigan trying to equalize, but he is taken out. And with the lack of that main support, that fight should be all but over. C2D2 performance and hiding picking somewhere. this team apart. Yeah, performance having a field day. Not the best first map. The hit scan on the second and third map here. He's been doing very, very well. Yep, and he's going to try and find some early picks here on the supports. That'd be... Wow. Wow, you called that one. Well, that is a very unfortunate to see. Um, they're going to have to wait for C2 to respawn before they can really even contest. I mean, you can kind of contest just having Baptiste, but not having your Zenyatta ultimate is going to be huge. Yeah, and Infrared also up again for Performance, doing a lot of damage to get that up quickly. Performance looking to pick that Sigma if he peeks, but Sigma is a little wise, not peeking without the shield. And Michigan does wait off the Widow Ultimate. 
Yep, that's probably for the better. You don't want to know. You know, you can't get a flank or get a uh, pick like from Flippy if they know exactly where you're at the entire time. Yeah, and Parker does kill the BAP here. Michigan, no shield. And Parker, another one. What a hook coming out from Parker. Yeah, he's been a little bit dominant here too. Michigan really needs to find a way to check him. Maybe they'll swap to the Anna, but it's not as common with the double shield as the BAP is here. No, I don't think they'll switch just yet. They've got two ultimates that are just about to come up, and they're really going to want to use those before they go down. Whether they're going to pick up Echo here, that's a very good very good kill to get. Yeah, Michigan and will have the main tank now. Parker. Well, Hog going to do a lot of damage, but Arissa is tanky, still dies to it. Amp Matrix coming out from Pion, but it might just be too late as Mafia picks two. Parker looking to get another kill. Michigan invests the Flux here, and the Dragon. Green does get a kill, but it's not just not enough. Wow, that was uh, that was kind of crazy. And yeah, Parker having a really picks. good map. Agreed, doing very well so far. Interesting to see what Michigan will try to do to deal with Parker here. I'm not exactly sure what they can do. I'd like to see a switch come out, um, considering Flippy doesn't have an ultimate up. I'd like to see a Junkrat or something come out to try and deal with these, deal with the Arista shields and possibly pick up the Zenyatta. Yeah, maybe something like that. Or maybe their own sniper, if Flippy can play the Widow just to contest performance, give him a little bit of a challenge. But Brian does kill Parker, finally. Parker getting very greedy, as per usual. Yeah, I mean, he was popping off. I think it was a bit of a heat check there. Yeah, there's but he does get punished. no reason he should have been that far pushed up without the team. I like what he was going for, but I don't think that's the right thing to do in this situation. It didn't really hurt them too yeah. terribly much. The team was going to regroup anyways, but fun to see nevertheless. Yeah, we're putting on a show on the last map. That's what it's all about. Pole coming from Wither, but is absolutely deleted. It goes from 450 to 0 in a second. That damage Flippy trying to get some insane. more picks here. Yep. Gream, a nice little headshot onto the Zen, and that's going to slow down OSU. Although they do have the sights up, and just as I say that, performance picks Gream. Flippy put, trying to put in some damage. Mafia picks C2D2. And these snipers on OSU are going crazy, and they're not checked very much. Well, as you say that, Flippy finds performance. Uh, performance a little out of position, yep. but that's happens sometimes. Happens the best of us. Yeah, a little bit of a caster's curse there. But that matrix does come through for OSU. Going to do a lot of damage. That Arista kept up again by the immortality from Orangutan. Pretty much saving it just for that Arista. It's like maybe the third or fourth time already this map. And the, the use of the Discord Orb is wonderful on both teams. Um, and it looks like we're going to have not a lot of ultimates left for this last fight. It's going to really come down to how C2 is going to use his uh, uh, Transcendence. Yep, Flippy did get a kill. It was killed by Mafia, but Mafia gets traded by C2D2. Discord on that Arista is going to make her die relatively quickly once that shield goes down. Pull onto the Zen comes up. They do have that trans ready. Both sides actually do have that trans ready for the next fight. C2 trying to sneak, get some feet shot underneath the uh, payload. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for him. I would have, that would have been great to see, but. Yeah, another pick did come through from performance on to Green, but Green is back already. Big fight going on in the high ground next to the mega health pack here. Bomb comes out, not find anyone, probably just to remac here. Ohio State Widow on the flank again. We'll see what happens. Tracer looking to deal with that Widow, and they do. Performance Green finding a big probably. kill on the support of Mitch, but unfortunately getting traded right back. Yep, and that defense matrix I was talking about earlier against the Roadhog saves the Zen, and C2D2 uses Trance. Whole Hog also coming out from Parker. I wouldn't be surprised if Parker does swap to maybe the Sigma here after this fight if Ohio State doesn't take it. Because he is now getting checked performance, doesn't want to play Widow into the Tracer anymore. All right, so it's going to look like, like one last regroup here from OSU before that last push. Um, not a lot of ultimates, which is a really scary place to be when you see almost all the ultimates on the side of you, Mitch, getting ready to come up. Yeah, somewhat. I mean, I think they will have maybe Diva Bomb and Pulse Bomb, and they already do have the Matrix. Gream hiding in the back, looking to get a little bit of a pick here onto the support. Does not see them, only sees the regular team. He has been spotted out. Is here. Yep, but gets the Hanzo pretty low. Kills the Supercharger, but it's just too late as Ohio State kills three. Flippy does kill the BAP, so maybe if they get a recontest, the Ohio State will not have the BAP and Michigan will have a chance. Green gets low, but somehow escapes. Diva doesn't find him. Good movement. 
but Grim is probably out here, and he that's the point. And what a map. What a first half of the map. Agreed. It went all the way to overtime, which is always what you like to see here. Yep. And we saw a very, very heavy pick base comp coming out from Ohio State with the Roadhog. Um, I'd like to see him stick with it. Um, being able to pick off the ADCs and the supports uh, is incredible. Is huge. It make or breaks every single team fight finding those hooks from Parker. Yeah, Parker really had a big impact there. And on the third point, as you can see, he got checked a little bit along with performance. And it took Ohio State a lot longer to cap there. They did manage to do it in overtime. But Michigan held them off for a while. The question is what we will see from Michigan on the attack here to try to deal with it. And it looks like they're going to keep that Tracer and the Hanzo along with Wither going back to their own. And it looks like we're seeing a very, very different comp coming out of Ohio State for their defense here. Um, keep it some familiar faces here but we're seeing the ash come out for the first time i think on the side of ohio state and we're going to see the echo come out from mafia yes and echo not the character but the person yes. playing arisa oh, is stuck in that's, uh, arisa jail again i didn't even think about that oh geez character names yeah echo making it a little bit confusing for us but that's okay well to but, be very yeah. specific echo the arisa or echo mafia echo yes and Ohio State has the Mercy here for the damage boost, probably going to be applied to the Echo or the Ash, both good targets to really do a lot of damage early to Michigan. Or even Bob. Um, I believe you can him. damage boost the Bob and heal him, so I mean... You can. That's going to be a fun combo to see. Um, Flippy's going to look for some early picks. If he can find, find enough early picks, that could be the entire first point. Yeah, big sonar coming from Flippy. It's to see exactly how Ohio State is set up, but can't seem to put in the necessary damage although he is destroying that shield ursipul is eaten there by andy taco you'll see a lot because that pole can be devastating flippy hits the headshot onto the or echo the orissa and this is a lot of trading of damage here but everything's getting healed and as i say that performance one taps green here with the headshot and that starts the fight but michigan is not backing out here yet flippy trying to look for that pick on the echo doing a lot of damage 60 70 to grab already Wither up top, and he's about to have Shatter. He does drop down, though. Old team's coming up on Old Nano on to Wither. This fight's not done, especially with that nade. What a fire strike. Shatter comes through. They're going to kill a couple more, and Michigan somehow down two people with Nano and Shatter turns this fight around. Yep. Uh, to be fair, I mean, that was... Oh, OSU was still down a person as well. Parker was almost out of his mech that entire second half of that fight. Um, really didn't help. He was trying hard to get back in the mech, but unfortunately he wasn't able to. Yeah, that was definitely crucial. Parker had just died earlier, might have honestly been better. Oh, and there he is trying to go die so he can get back to his neck and back to his team. But Michigan seems to be content with just pushing the point for now, even though they are up person. Wither taking some poke damage from the Echo almost has that copy up. Yep, uh, we're going to see what happens out of that. Uh, we have another switch from Parker coming in to the Sigma. Yep. Performance does headshot Grim yet again, but Grim will be back quickly here. Switching to the Widow though. Oh. Diva Bomb over the top kills the Ash and the Mercy. That's really large. What Mortality a Diva taken bomb. down. Yep, Echo Copy is going to be committed to this, but I would argue it's a little late. Maybe not. Supercharger comes out too, but Wither kills Orangutan, and this fight is all but over. The Aris is low, probably will get finished off here now. Supercharger taken down, Arissa down, Wither having a really good attack here. Yep, and that's going to be a wipe and a reset for the Ohio State defense. Yep, and the Ash may be being a little too greedy here. If Wither can somehow jump over there, and he does with the charge, trying to take them out. Wither going to hold this door, maybe shatter anyone who tries to come through. Very So Michigan can secure this checkpoint. Yes, I agree. But it is almost time to see Bob for the first time. Will Bob come out? He will, but Bob does not even touch the payload. Performance trying to get out, get that mega health pack, but Flippy is there, and without the damage of performance, that recontest is just going to be too hard. Yep, and that was a huge, huge, huge sound barrier coming in from C2. That basically entirely wiped the entire Ohio State defense single handed. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it made it pretty hard to kill anyone on Michigan here. Flippy does get performance after he gets a pick here, and Michigan has f over four minutes here. Time bank can be. Very crucial here with how long they'll have in the next round, assuming Michigan does cap here. 
Well, either way, we're either going to have a very short time here together, or we're going to have a very long four-minute grueling crawl, crawl fest for this last eight. Yeah, both sides will get a turn no matter what, because this is a payload map, map even though or, or I'm sorry, Ohio State finished with no time. They will still get at least a minute added to their clock here. Yep. And, and fire strike coming through. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, absolutely. Uh, OSU taking the high ground. Um, not quite working for them just yet. They're trying, but they're not being able to find any control. And that's a huge ult coming from Flippy. And that is all but a wipe. Yeah, that dragon coming through from Flippy on low, low targets. Good for me. Nano also being invested. I don't know if that one was needed. Dana is taken down. Wither's still swinging here, but Wither's getting taken pretty low, and with no Anna, it's going to be hard. Oh, but the Shatter, and that is just enough for Machine to cap with 437 compared to the one minute of OSU. Whew, that is, I do not like those odds. But, to be totally fair, um, OSU really steamrolled that first attack uh, until they got to the very end, and they finally caught on to the Roadhog shenanigans. Um, I don't think it'll work twice. Um, it, it could, who knows, but as soon as yeah. uh, Image figured that out, it kind of shut down the entire Ohio State offense. Yeah, we'll see what happens here. I hope to see a Bastion, as you were saying earlier, maybe a Bastion on the attack for Ohio State, catch Michigan off guard. If they don't have that Diva ready, it's going to be very hard to deal with it. And as you see that Diva play from Andy Taco, those matrixes on a lot of things, it's very important there for Michigan to steamroll. I think that I think the entire um, state of the game changed after that initial diva bomb coming in after the first checkpoint. Really, um, caught off two people off guard, and that kind of put OSU on the back foot for the rest of the game. Agreed, it was pretty crucial. We're gonna see pretty much the same stuff: orangutan on the brig and Eski on the map, doing a little switcheroo from the earlier maps. Mm -hmm. And Parker is back on the hog, like you predicted. Yep, I was I wasn't anticipating him getting. Well, I guess we're going to see it again. Here we go. Um, basically a run back from Ohio State. Same composition we saw the first time, minus the Widowmaker. Um, and that's all right. And we're going to see a very generic comp coming out from you, Mitch, as well. Yeah, performance on the Cassidy here. Already 10% to the old Mafia also there. Looking to build up those ultimates quickly, as they do only have 45 seconds left here until overtime is triggered and they cannot leave the cart. But Wither with a pick on a Parker is going to be crucial, leaving with OSU with probably one more. But as I say that, Wither taken down by Mafia, maybe the aggression was too much here. And OSU might just roll this checkpoint all the way to the first one. OSU getting out of that relatively unpunished. I mean, Parker and Performance are way up on their own looking for a pick. Um, they did find one, but almost cost them both their lives in the process. However, it still worked out for them. Yeah, Parker did get picked, but Wither also died. And... Losing the main tank there is too crucial. Performance to flash the kill onto the Lucio. A nice shot there onto Flippy. Dream does take out the immortality. Nano used onto Wither. Michigan trying to win another fight with Nano. Well, it was working. It probably isn't going to work here when your Anna's taken out like that. Oh, as I say that, Michigan kills three, but it might not be enough. It's going to be close. It looks like I think you, Mitch, are going to make it back just in time to stop the payload. Um, but now they're yes, kind of scrambling. Flippy. But they do have the man advantage. Andy Taco does touch. Flippy is going to stay in the high ground there, not touch. Trying to get that Hanzo, but that passive healing coming from Brig is a little bit too much there. Yep, and this is, uh, you can't ask for better field position right now if you're Ohio State right now. You have two ultimates up, a third getting ready to be, and the whole hog on deck. Um, Michigan's pretty far from any of their ultimates, but they're going to try their best to stall until they get them. Yep, Parker looking for a cheeky little flank yet again. Performance also going under the building, looking to flank, especially with that high noon. And keep in mind now, Ohio State cannot have everyone lead the cart, otherwise the round will end as it is in overtime indefinitely. Andy Taco does pick off Performance, who is trying to be too greedy, and that could be big. Tracer going in the back line, along with Flippy, Michigan DPS flanking. Rally not enough to save SD, and, and Ohio State leaves the point. That is a C9 if I've ever seen one. Everybody off the point in OT. Yes, a little bit of a C9 there for sure. But with only one minute on the time bank, that was not bad by Ohio State. No, that was, that was about as good as you could really ask for for a minute. I mean, they were, I think, about one team fight away from making it to that second checkpoint. But the greed of performance, unfortunately, ended up being the downfall of that round. 
Yeah, I agree there. I think performance, he's been very feast or famine this entire match, for sure. Yep, and I mean, that's that's not the worst trait you could possibly have. High highs, low lows. Um, consistency wouldn't be terrible in this matchup, but Flippy and Green playing very consistently where Parker being coin flip every round. Yeah, and I think on how I say, you do see consistency from Echo and from the supports, but the other three have been very radical in good and bad ways. While in Michigan, you just see more consistency throughout the board. Yep, and you it, it reflects in the score, right? I mean, and whenever, whenever all of them show up to play at the same time, it goes great. When it doesn't, well, eh, not so great. Exactly, but that's also why we're in the third map here. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. And this 4 minutes 37 is just going to be what decides it here. Yep, performance on the Soldier 76 to start this round. Um, I don't think he's played that too terribly much yet this, this series. Yeah, I think we saw it a little bit from Michigan, but not too much. Not the most common pick. I don't think he actually played it. I think he just grabbed it for the, the dash for a touch earlier, but I could be wrong. I, I don't know. I, I believe we did see Flippy on the Soldier for a little bit. Either way, Michigan trying to move this card along, but this high ground is very dominant. A little shot coming against performance low, but not enough. And OSU already doing a decent amount of damage here, but no one's getting picked just yet. Orangutan taking low, but healed right back up. You know, performance is trying to build in a little bit too. He's playing more with the team rather than being off on his own looking for picks. Um, they've got to play safe. One wrong team fight, and the game's over. Essentially, uh, Michigan's probably got to win two fights with the Hanzo picks with the other Hanzo. But the DMAC coming through from Andy Tonko, but Mafia another pick, and this fight is probably over. But Michigan, look how far they did move the card. So if they do win a fight here, it's probably over. Yep, there's no way to know, but we've got about three minutes and 30 seconds left in the timer here for uh, for you, Mitch. Got a couple, a lot of ultimates up for Ohio State, none up for Michigan. Two up for Michigan, but they'll all be up in time for the fight, likely. Um, Diva on matching timers. So yeah. that'll be... Oh, yep. Diva is on matching timers. So it's... Ooh, it's going to be close. It will be close, but both Divas will be here for the fight. Ooh, Visor and Ant Matrix coming through and absolutely deletes Flippy. Andy Taco trying to just shut it down, but is also taken out here. And a big ultimate combination there from OSU. He's going to get Michigan under the three-minute mark, and no fight win yet. Well, performance finally getting back in his groove again. Um, yep, that's good for Michigan to take a, go back and take a reset. Um, that's probably for the better. However, there are five ultimates about to be six on the side of you, Mitch, and I see two on the side of Ohio State, two about to be ready. I do not like those odds, but we will see how they play with them. Yeah, but if Michigan does use a lot of ultimates in this fight and does not win, it's going to be looking very, very bad here. They're unless the final fight, they can get those ultimates back up again. Yep, and I agree. Uh, here come the first couple coming out. Dragon and Nano are used. Flippy with a nice headshot. Wither looking forward. Big shatter onto the Arisa. They get the pick. Parker trying his best to equalize, but it's probably not going to be enough. And the rally was invested from OSU, but they still are sitting on the tank. Boots. Yep, that was a very close fight. Um... It looks like you got two ultimates still on the side of, uh, never mind, I said one on the side of Mitch, and you got two on the side of Ohio State, about to be three here with the Hanzo here in just about a second. Yeah, both Hanzos have just been killing each other. Performance finding this a huge game. pick on Wither. Yeah, his shield just got obliterated, and Michigan didn't have enough people to keep that fight going. Kareem does take out Supercharger, getting it. Uh, the Orisa low, but not low enough, backing out, going for a quick reset, only a minute 30 left. Ohio State looking to pull off the practically impossible. They had three and a half minutes left, less, but they can still win this here. Green was being very greedy there. If he would have died, that would probably have been the game over right there. Um, can't afford to lose your AD in the last push of the game. Possibly second to last push. Yeah, I'd assume there'd be one more push after this if Michigan does lose, but it might have to be a scrappy one. And the Diva gets low. Green taken out again by performance. Another big pick there. But Michigan looks like they're still going to fight this. Trying to build up that nano if they can nano Wither, as we've seen. Even down people, they still win those fights. Wither, Fire Strike, they're trying to get to Shatter as well. They do almost have the nano, and Flippy has the Pulse Bomb used. It's not getting it. Oh, but does kill the break. Shatter comes through also. Performance looking advisor from that high ground. Here it comes. And D.Va shuts down most of it. Performance cannot find anything. 
Wither kills Mafia, Flippy gets performance, and Michigan looks like they will take the first point here. Yep, they're gonna they're gonna flip the point. Uh, it looks like there is gonna be one last fight that's gonna determine this game here in the next couple seconds. Oh, she's gonna take a quick reset. Two ultimates up on the side of Yumich, about to be five. Um, unfortunately, I don't think there will be a nano boost left. Um, OSU down a lot of ultimates here. They're going to need to stall until they at least get something to match. Well, they're coming up on four, actually, so they should be there relatively quickly. And if Mafia does a decent amount of damage, they'll have a fifth ultimate as well. All right, here we but are in overtime. They don't have much time. Yep, here we are. And as you can see, that yellow box is where Michigan has to get to because that is where Ohio State had to get to. That Diva Bomb doesn't actually kill anyone, unlike last time. Diva has to contest the card here for OSU, but it might not be enough. Weather's sitting on that shatter, waiting for the uh, supports and the other squishies to drop here. Nobody's no one died dying. Yet. Oh, big shatter comes through, but the Diva Bomb also beat comes through. So many ultimates right now at the same time. Hard to entirely even tell what's going on. No one, finally, the first both teams trade main tanks. So it's an even trade here. Still, we don't know what's going to happen. Performance gets one, but Andy talk one, Green get one, Dragon comes through. This is a super scrappy fight. Flip kills the Immortality again. Performance looking to carry this fight, but taken out by Flippy. Parker does get green. Now it's just the BAP that has to get taken out, pretty much. And Michigan looks like they will win this, and they do. Oh, what a close series at the very end. What a nail-biter of a final team fight. Yeah, you couldn't have asked for much better there. Yep, and OSU putting up a huge fight despite having only a minute to push and stalling until the very end where Michigan had, what, four and a half minutes, I believe? Yeah, I do believe so. Got to give props to OSU there. Great game played. Michigan barely coming through on top. Fighting till the very end. Both teams had so many mem team members alive till that very last second. Um, big Ryan Shatter. Both Diva Bombs totally whiffed and did nothing. And I don't think either of the... Um, uh, a lot of ultimates just whiffed, unfortunately. Nobody died anything big. Yeah. It was just really scrappy, like you said. Yeah, but those are kind of the best fights. Each team losing members, three on three, just feels the best when you win those, and it's kind of hurt for Ohio State. But they should know they did play a pretty good game. Yes, it was a very good series, especially considering the start of that first game. Um, what a great way to wrap up our Overwatch segment. I believe next we're going to a best of one CSGO match, correct? I do believe CSGO is next, yes. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in for the Overwatch. We'll be switching over to CSGO here very shortly. Um, as always, I am Fable Achilles, and thank you for joining me, Dash. Yep, thank you for having me here.
Hello everyone, my name is Jeremy or Germs PC, and today I am joined by Caden and we have for ourselves the CSGO match for this rivalry weekend. How are you doing today, Caden? I am doing fantastic. It's a great day here in Michigan. How are things going in Ohio? Oh, uh, I mean, after that overtime on Overwatch, uh, not so hot as, uh, you know, these next matches unfortunately don't really matter. But I'd still love to see some Counter-Strike take down Michigan and uh, maybe take them down a few pegs after beating us in football and now beating us currently in the series at 4-1. Yeah, we'll see how that one goes. <laughs> I would not press your luck, though. Our varsity team has got some firepower. Absolutely. And, yeah, you know, you're just telling me about how uh, you guys reached the finals for challengers and just did the finals for that. And it looks like we're going to be going right into the match now on none other than Mirage. What, what do you think about that? I'm interested to see how uh, both these teams perform on Mirage. Not a map that Michigan usually goes to. Uh, their two first picks are Ancient and Vertigo, so uh, not usually seeing some sand maps here. Starting out with Macro taking some aggro on ramp, Iwige already down mid, pushing into connector, taking contact, no kills though. Yeah, I mean, we see a pretty default setup coming out of Ohio State, you know, not a lot of uh, irregulars, but a lot of mid presence to going taken right now by Michigan. Yeah, Weege pushing up into jungle right now. Spots one in Cubby, not able to get the kill. Shaft, on the other hand, gets Macro Pulse. Early 4v5 advantage now. Toby takes out McMeniscus, making that 5v3 for Ohio State. They clear out mid. Toby getting Geo as well. Arcranic, two kills and connector on Shaft and Claymore. Bilzy takes out Weege through the smoke. It's just Arcranic here. He gets his third on Bilzy in jungle. Spots the two on a site. Tucked, they know where he is. <laughs> oh, lands a sick flick onto Toby, but not able to complete the ace. Ginger Tastic shutting that one down. A real close pistol round that goes the way of Ohio State University. Thinking about almost an ace, we see almost a team ace coming out from the side of Ohio State. Some great team play, and uh, overall there was a bit of an overextension on the mid, I think, as Ohio State was trying to close in on the uh, attackers. But overall, it was just uh, a great hold on the A bomb site, and it looks like we're not going to see much of an investment from uh, Umich. Yeah, absolutely. Just going for full glocks here. Bilzy throwing oh. that uh, smoke from spawn. Claymore going out with that MP9, trying to take some contact here in top mid. Not going to get anything so far. Yeah, but I mean, look at all this mid control that they have. They split the map directly in half. They know they don't have to worry about mid as Clay just keeps pushing up right here. And, you know, we see both T's now split. There's kind of a 2-3 split. And the majority of them are actually over here on A, but they don't even have the bomb. And Clay might even be able to catch this. Oh, no. Oh, he hears this, 100%. He has, he has ear drums. Oh, meniscus. <laughs> Caught out by Claymore here on the rotate back to site. Oh, I mean, he knows he has bomb, but uh, he has no idea where the rest of them are, given that they can't be mid. So I think he just has to be worried about if they're going to be coming in front of him or behind him. So I think he's got to be careful, but it looks like Ohio State's going to be able to hold this pretty easily. Shaft there taking out Macropulse, the only guy coming from B. The rest of the team here coming back into Z spawn from A. Claymore and Shaft are cleaning up with these MP9s. Easy kills for Ohio State. Ecofrags, and talk about Ecofrags. The economics on Ohio State is looking fantastic. We see five grand on the side of Clay and Shaft. They may decide to uh, just upgrade their weapons as we see all AKs coming out on the side of Umish. And uh, it looks like they're actually just going to keep this as one of their free rounds, and hopefully they don't get punished for that with their uh, basically all four SMGs besides Ginger with FAMAS. So. I wouldn't be too surprised uh, if they get something off this bonus round, but it is just a bonus round. Arcranic going for this uh, early mid aggression. Flash out, Molly into top con. Oh, wait, that's a lot of mid presence, though. Look how far up. Uh, who is that? Clay right now? He's currently evading the. He's already at top mid. Arcranic has no idea. Claymore peeking out. Oh, but Arcranic spots and gets the headshot, shuts that one down real quick. 5v4 advantage now for Michigan. Spamming the smoke is Arcranic as his teammates come from under to peek out. Just jumping around, trying to see anything. Shaft here. Spots one player there uh, at bottom mid. Ducks back. Trying not to overextend. Ginger Tastic, though, pushing into Khan. Takes out McMeniscus. That's the under player. Uh, another, though. Oh, Ginger Tastic, a great conversion onto Arcranic. 3v4 now. Michigan down by one. Oh, but they were able Geo to walk Weezer, up. Though, pushing oh, no. Up onto a site. They have a free bomb site here. Macro hitting Ginger Tastic. 
Bomb goes down. Oh, but Toby <laughs> hiding in secret is able to take down the bomb planter. Geo trades that out, but still no bomb plant. A chef comes through con. Spots one. Not able to get any damage. Iwij hits that. 2v1 now. Bilzy left in con. Bomb goes down. This will be a difficult retake. Yeah, I mean, oh, Bilzy with a quick headshot, though. They're forgetting the Bilzy factor. This man has put on some incredible numbers, and that nade's going to do dividends. And, uh, I mean, this is not over yet for the side of Ohio State. He has a kit. And uh, as he's clearing some angles here, this is definitely looking like a possible round to get. And oh no, he was looking the wrong way! Oh. Billsy! I say it time and time again. The man just is on another level on CS right now. And that's a third that Ohio State shouldn't have been winning. Yeah, a little bit of luck there onto Geo looking the wrong way. But other than that, just some fantastic accuracy by Billsy in that 1v2. Great retake by him. Yeah, I mean, we're going to see the bolt buy again. I mean, they got the bomb plant. They're at max loss at this point. And that was the free round from Ohio State. So all that, you know, those SMGs being gone are basically nothing. And we see Clay with the big green. And, you know, this is going to be a tough round for them to win with no op presence on mid. And Clay's going to get that early, uh, you know, kind of top mid peak. And let's see what they can do with it. Oh, but. Yeah, going for it. Spots nothing. Geo, on the other hand, hitting Ginger Tastic. Good opening for them. Yeah, fantastic opening for them, and uh, I think they're just going to slow down, maybe take a little bit more map presence, a little more mid control, and I mean, with this 4v5 now, the defense is going to be a little spread out, and it's going to be harder for them to maybe keep this A-bomb site. Yeah, we see our Kranich and Macro pushing up Khan, resmoking window there as Geo and Awee still hang around in Ramp and Palace. Ooh, Macro not winning that duel onto, uh, onto short, but our Kranich is able to trade it out. 4v3 now as he boosts up, trying to spot into window or Khan. Sees nothing. Toby still on site, holding for any ramp push. Trying to watch Cat at the same time. He's not going to see anything yet. Oh, spots one going out onto Tetris. Oh, not able to control the spray. Meniscus is able to take out Toby. Arcranic takes out Claymorn as well. Michigan have a free A site. Just Billsy left here in market, trying to get into the rotate. Arcranic picks up the AWP, takes that out. That is Michigan on their first round, shutting down the full buy from Ohio State. Yeah, and I mean, they have some money on Ohio State. I, I expect them, you know, Billsy to just maybe drop a few deagles out, and uh, for them to take this as kind of a, a deco round, and that's, I think, exactly what we're going to see. They should be able to buy into this uh, in the next round, um, as long as they keep their economy going. And I mean, just a full buy, all the youths, so all the goodies on the side of Umish, and I expect, obviously, Umish to take this round. Yeah, Billsy here, the only player with head armor going into this round, Shaft with Kevlar, nobody else has any kind of protection. Billsy looking to go maybe for this uh, early cat peak with Shaft. Meniscus able to hit Claymore through the smoke here in mid. Doesn't know about the other two players on cat. Yeah, I mean, there's three mid players right now. It looks like they really want to take this mid control, but uh, Umish is playing this very well and is just regrouping on this A-bomb site, and they're going to have all the uh, mollies to try to take Toby out, and Ginger's going to get some, you know, uh, chip damage right now, and Bills is going to get taken out by Meniscus, and that's going to be uh, probably the end of the round for Ohio State. Yeah, just three players left. Ginger still trying to duel this player in Palace to no success. Toby chilling in under. Sees one player go out. Oh, gets him through the flashbang. Macro is down. Burned out onto scaffolding. Geo's able to trade that, thankfully. 2v4 now. Both players on Ohio State damaged. Should not be much contest here left. Ginger still on stairs. Making it expensive. Util not to say the least. Yeah, Util comes raining in. Ginger with a very powerful position. Shaft's able to rotate in as well. Looking to go back over towards CT. Geo takes out Ginger, the jig is up, it's just Shaft now coming into CT and being loud about it. Yeah, but they have no idea he's here, and oh, he had a chance, but... Ho -ho. Uh, there was a world, there was a world. Yeah, but this, <laughs> says, nuh -uh, not happening, shuts down that deco round. Yeah, and uh, Clay is actually still a little poor right now, I I don't know if they're going to decide, I think they're going to decide to force into this, they got to, you know... Uh, try to get some rounds given... Oh, no, actually, we might just be seeing a deep... Oh, no, all right, a little bit of indecisiveness. I I don't know, you know, it looked like Shafe wasn't sure if they wanted to go for the buy or not, but we're going to see a full buy come out from Ohio State. Yeah, definitely a risky economic position. You can see Claymore there on that scout. Nobody could buy off in this round on the side of Ohio State. Arcranic gets tagged, though, by that scout, coming out into top mid, looking for the trade. Smoke covers his right side, can't see anything. Meniscus, on the other hand, hits Claymore. Another early 5v4 advantage. Macro able to extend that advantage onto Shaft. 
Toby taking out a Weege in a ramp. Geo trades that one out. Lots of trades coming around all across the map as our Krannet gets nothing in mid so far. Ginger here on stairs looking to pop that palace player. Sees but is not able to take contact. Cannot turn around in time to hit McMiscus. Trades that one out. Just Bilzy here trying to save in market in the 1v4 situation. Macro and our Krannet are both low. So if the Michigan goes for the hunt here, could be some repercussions. But at the end of the day, this should be Michigan's third round. Sure. And I mean, we're going to see a uh, tied game coming in here now. It was a strong first part of this map for Ohio State, but Umich is clearly showing they have some uh, cards in the game. And uh, with four players alive, the economy builds and builds for Umich. And at Ohio State, there's not a lot of uh, money to be had. So I think a lot more needs to be done for mid control, given just how you know Toby and Ginger relied on mid to be able to uh, keep A alive. And I, I think, you know, with those early mid picks, it's very hard for the p players on A to really hold the bomb site. Yeah, absolutely. That mid aggression there, uh, it's been countered a couple times. Uh, they didn't fight for it at all there uh, on the round that Arcranic had the AWP pushing up. Uh, definitely becoming a little bit of an issue there for Ohio State. Yeah, and I don't think we're going to see a full buy here from Ohio State. Yeah, it looks like just pistols, uh, some upgraded head armor. Uh, P250 is actually very interesting. I, I'm surprised they didn't go for the Deagle. Clay is going for nothing. I think he wants the op to be able to try to uh, deal with uh, our Kranich on the other side. But um, just a lot of A control happening right now. But Oh, look at this death ball mid. Actually, I didn't notice this, but they're all pushing mid right now. Yeah, they haven't spotted a thing. They know that there's no mid control. Claymore pushing up into C-spawn. In the meantime, Iwij goes out and takes a double onto A site. Arcranic takes out Claymore and wrapping around from T-Spawn. Michigan have total control of the A bomb site. It's just a matter of taking out these two remaining pistols as they get the bomb down. Awige, the only player that's been tagged down. Macro hits the headshot through the smoke on Ginger. It's just Shaft now on Cat. Spots one in window, not able to do a whole lot of damage. Awige is low though, there is a chance. Uh... <laughs> Spots a player jumping out of Khan and gets naded down. Who? Not a great situation to be in. Our Krennic finishes Chef with the Tech Krennic at 10 kills right now, leading everyone. I mean, double anything that's currently on the side of OSU. And I mean, it's clearly showing because uh, I think that he's one of the, the main mid players. He plays mid with the op. And uh, I mean, it's been doing a lot of damage. So uh, going to be interesting. Uh, oh, he has a good spawn for this too. He could very easily take a pick and uh, disrupt the, the defense even even faster now. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see what he can get done with this one. Arcranic, as I've said before in previous streams, he's your simple, he's your Nico. He's going to be your top fragger. He can be your entry. He can be your up. He does it all, and he's always the guy that you're going to look for to find impact when Michigan are up or down in a series. Yeah. Not going to spot anything this time, though. Bilzy looking into apps, trying to find uh, any sign of B aggression. Not going to see anything, though. Claymore spots one in mid, not able to hit that flick. Awege taking out Ginger Tastic on the A bomb site and pushing out. Oh, a Weege hits Claymore as well. Not able to hit that op shot. A site blasted wide open. A Weege here trying to clear CT. Ooh, gets hit by Toby. Smoke goes up, though, as the bomb is coming into A site. It should be a good plant. I say that, though. Bilzy in jungle is able to hit Macro Pulse. Spots another. Bilzy's ahead of this. Arcranic here. Yeah, coming into Khan. Bilzy with another. Krennic able to trade out Bilzy finally, but it's still a 1v2. Little late on that shutdown. Just our Krennic. Toby is low. No bomb control either. Yeah, no bomb control, I think, is the big thing here. He's posted off. He's perched up, but he falls back thinking better of it. And with 37 seconds left, he's uh, running out of time and HP to really do anything with this. Uh, I think he's going to have to get a kill pretty quickly here. But Shafe, with that off angle, able to take the kill. And uh, that's finally a response from the Buckeyes. Yeah, great play there by Bilzy from Jungle. He's the entire reason that that a bomb site went from lost to found. Shuts down the bomb transfer and is able to uh, make sure that uh, Ohio get their fourth round and retie this back yeah. up. Yeah, and I mean, we're going to see, obviously, the full buy coming out of Umich. They have plenty of money. They should even be able to buy next round if they lose this one. And Ohio State, I mean, this is make or break on their economy. They need this round in order to uh, keep their economy going. And if they don't, I mean, it's going to be pennies for them if they lose. Yeah, Claymore with the op here. Considers the peak onto stairs. Thinks better of it. Arcranic watching Top Con for that push from Claymore. Doesn't look like he's going to get anything off of it, but still stays posted just in case. 
Meanwhile, Geo and Awiege staying posted in Palace and A-Ramp separately. Awiege does spot one back in default. Not able to do too much damage, falls back off. Geo, on the other hand, is able to hit Claymorn, who was moving over to jungle. That's the AWP taken out of the round. Ginger trades one back onto Macro, who's coming up from Khan. Geo taking out Toby. 4v3 now for Michigan as they run onto the A-bomb site. Yeah, I mean, they have yet to really even touch B here. I mean, Shave's going to take a lot of damage from Luigi, but overall, it's now down to that 2v2, and I make that a 1v4 now. And as much as Bilzy is a great player, I mean, he's going to have to come up huge in order to get it, and Geo's going to take him out. Yeah, not able to finish off that clutch. Was definitely a tough ask, that 1v4, even though some players on the Michigan side were damaged. That meniscus 2k in connector is really what shut that entire round down. Takes Michigan back into the lead. Yeah, and I think we're just going to see a deco here uh, from the side of the Buckeyes. I feel like it's kind of, they they lose the round, they go into this deco, they lose that round, and then they win the next one. And uh, I mean, that's just kind of how the CS economy is right now. And they haven't been able to really do much here. But let me just say, Elysian and Geo have just been disrupting this A defense so much. Um, you know, it's either Awiz is walking out and just getting a kill. Kranich with the boost, able to take down Clay. He's wide swinging on that. But, I mean, even on these regular rounds, it seems they're they're pretty consistent. And ooh. Ginger, though, takes out that AWP. Geo and Awiz are able to trade out. Might be the only consolation prize Ohio State get here on this pistol round. It was still a good find. Probably not going to amount to much else. Macro here in mid, trying to spot out the remaining two players. Geo and Awiz hesitant on this A push. Awiz going back now. Ooh. Geo sticking around in Palace and gets punished for it. Shafe with a nice Deagle headshot onto Geo as the rest of Michigan goes towards the B-bombs. Yeah, I mean, uh, McMeniscus has the flank here, and he's going to take down Shafe. He doesn't know where uh, Bilzy is, but it doesn't really matter because at this point they know they have the guns. Ooh, Bilzy's actually he has got himself a prize. He's got a nice AK that he gets to sit up here in Palace. Uh, you know, he gets to uh, you know do what James does best, which is save. Uh, and, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's a six. Definitely, uh, definitely more than... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Ohio State may have thought that they were going to get two kills and an AK. I think you'd take that any day. Sure. I mean, Akranic has plenty of money to rebuy. And, I mean, Geo as well with the eight grand. Oh, my. They they are just swimming in cash right now on the side of Umish. And uh, Clay actually is down to 1,900. I don't know if they're going to be able to get the op. Uh, you might have to have uh, Ginger or something drop it for him. But I actually don't know if they're going to have enough money for, um, you know, something to try to counter Akranic because... Our Krennic has just been uber consistent with getting those picks with the op. Yeah, absolutely. Ohio State probably just going for the no head armor M4A1S buy. Now this new uh, meta change M4A1S has a consistent four shot body shot and it is cheaper than the M4A4. It has definitely changed the dynamic of the CT economy a little bit. Offers a lot more full buys on the CT side. You can see that's exactly what they go for. Bills you with that saved AK shape on the AUG. Everybody else just with the M4A1S. Yeah, and I mean, uh, we see a lot of A presence coming out from the side of Umish. I'm wondering if they want to try to go fast A here, or at least try to take some presence, because, uh, you know, they've been doing a lot of just walking out of A, but we haven't actually seen really an A take happen yet. So uh, three members poised right now for smoke, so we is just holding this smoke, making sure Ohio State doesn't do anything sneaky and try to get any presence. But, uh, I mean, with so many Umish players positioned right here, it looks like they're going to try to line up some smokes and uh, get this ball rolling on A. Yeah, just playing very passive, trying to find any openings they can get, not trying to push their luck. You can see Claymorn is on, is either in scaffolding or under, trying to catch a Palace player off guard. Sadly, nobody on the Michigan side is playing Palace. Not going to get anything there. Moving back down into under to Nade, a ramp. Ooh. Ooh, Nade short of the mark there. No damage on the side of Michigan. Awiz and Arkranic, though, still trying to look for this opening pick. Yeah, and I mean, with 53 seconds left, it looks like Awiz might try to just walk out of here with the ops, see if he can get anything. Uh, Mick Meniscus might be trying to uh, maybe sell a fake or at least walk out here to see if he can get anything. They're going to hear him. Clay's going to actually take down Awiz. Arkranic able to trade, but uh, they're walking into the same bomb site right now. <laughs> yeah, Arkranic and Geo, uh, the entire Michigan team going out onto the A bomb site. Bomb has been planted now. 3v3 post plant. 
Toby here in CT. Ginger Tastic, though, able to take out Macro. Arcranic hits Shafe, gets the double onto Toby. It's just Ginger now here on stairs trying to find anything. Arcranic with the sick triple onto Ginger. Make that a quad kill in the round, actually. Once again, powering Michigan to their seventh. This guy has some insane impact. Yeah, I mean, it's basically just uh, our Krennic right there, and they really needed him. I thought for sure they were going to be able to trade that out. Toby looked like he was poised to trade out uh, Schaefer, but unfortunately it was not, and that's really what decided the round there and kept it in a uh, you know 2v1, an unfavorable position for the Buckeyes. And Speaking of the Buckeyes, this uh, half is slowly slipping away from them, a 7-4 to scoreline. It was a 3-0, but... Uh, they've just been losing round after round now and have not been able to gain any footing after that. Ooh. Yeah, we typically think of Mirage as being a pretty balanced map, so seeing Michigan here 7 4 is not bode well for Ohio State. Our Kranich here has already crept out through the smoke, posting up in close corner of A ramp. Isn't able to spot anyone. Geo, though, has been able to clear scaffolding. Molly's under. Claymore and pushed out. Our Kranich's able to trade, though. Shave coming up from behind to take out Macro, and Ginger Tastic hits Geo as well. Arcranic alone on this A bomb site hits Ginger Tastic on the rotate. Toby's able to trade. It's just Meniscus now coming back from the B bomb site. Thankfully, the bomb is dropped in T spawn. He has control of it in this 1v3. Picks up the bomb. Let's see where he can go with it. Yeah, 50 seconds left. I mean, they haven't even touched the B bomb site. I, I think they're mostly an A center team right there. They like to really walk out of that. A main and see what they can get with some of their star players and I think there is some great team play going on on that A bomb site. We saw a Toby and Shafe, uh Toby and Ginger I think that was actually with a great crossfire able to take out Arcanic. Arcanic he can't look both ways as great as he's been doing plays so I think that was really uh, one of the things that separated it. It was able to just completely isolate Arcanic and take him out and I think the rest of the team kind of just crumbled uh, without their star player. Ooh. Well, uh, 7 to 5 scoreline, and uh, yeah, looks like we're going to see probably a full buy coming out from Umesh. Um,. Yeah. Uh, overall, we're going to see the op for our Kranich, and it's it's going to be interesting. Uh, we're going to hope that he tries to get any kind of intel. I mean, that he can. He's taking a lot of mid control, but no one is there to greet them. They see no ops on the side of the Buckeyes, given their economy. Uh, we've been pretty unable to see that big green come out. Clay has had it a few times, but it's been swiped away by the man in question right here on the screen. So... With this mid control, I, I think that really sets them up for success. They really like to uh, take this mid control. Whenever they do and it's successful, oh, McMeniscus with a great shot into Ginger trying to take any kind of mid control. I think it works well for them as, as they just walk out A. It's usually Geo and Uij, um, or the, Uij, sorry, are the two that are walking out on A. And the rest of them are kind of poised on mid, and it makes uh, the A defense really squirm. And it makes it difficult for them to really do anything. Let's see, it looks like, yeah, Clay is sitting in Firebox, kind of an unlikely place to sit, but uh, at least it's protecting him from mid, and uh, mid control they take, um, uh, Geo and them are, are currently walking up mid, they're going to see jungle completely clear, Clay is actually going to burn out Geo, uh, but Geo taking him out through the wall, uh, that's uh, definitely in favor of Umish, and now they've cut this map completely in half, and they had no idea Mick Meniscus able to take him out. Toby, they know that he's a, uh, a player here, but that spam's going to do nothing for him, and he's going to get dinked down. Mick Meniscus with another kill, and Shafe now left in a 1v4 scenario to try to keep his team in this. I mean, I wouldn't blame him for, for saving this AK, and I think he's going to do just that. Yeah, this Michigan T side still proving to be as potent as Ooh. ever. Oh, <laughs> not even able to save there as our Kranich on the AWP takes him out. 8-5 to five now for Michigan. Yeah, I mean, we see 19 kills in the first half for our Kranich, and the, map is, the round isn't even over, I should say. So um, definitely one of the star players currently coming out. And, I mean, I think you just save for last right now from the side of the Buckeyes, given how low some of these players are. I think we're finally going to see an AWP come out for Clay next round, but... Uh, this is looking like a pretty free round, given no uh, upsets from Umesh. 
Yeah, Ohio State have had a terrible experience here on the Eco game, always being forced back onto these pistols. Arcranic testing his luck here with the op and top mid. Ginger Tastic spots one in a ramp with the Deagle, not able to get anything off of it. Tucks back into stairs, trying to play it safe. Ohio State with three players here on this A bomb site. Geo and Awish with their tra traditional ramp uh, and palace setup, just looking for any openers as the rest of the team takes control on the rest of the map. Yeah, I mean, Iwish has been very consistent on taking this kind of control, and uh, it's worked very well for them. Uh, I mean, we haven't seen much right now on the side of Umish, but, I mean, they've already walked up on the Tetris. They have a lot of control. Shafe is taking a very unlikely duel. He's going to get dinked down with the Tech-9. Toby actually able to get a kill on Geo, and this is actually turning to be costly for the Michigan. Yeah, Geo not able to spot out the guy on under... Awish here getting spammed from under and spots the guy on stairs, decides to duck back as the bomb actually gets planted on the B <laughs> bomb site. I didn't even see that. That was, uh, yeah, I mean, they just knew they probably stacked the site and uh, <laughs> McMissick's getting taken down a little bit with his own molly, but uh, I don't think we're going to see many more kills come out as the B bomb site is very hard to retake and Ginger's now left in a 1v4. Yeah, macro easy cleanup from mid. Awish jumps around the corner, knife out, try, probably trying to go for that knife kill, but not able to get anything. Picks up the AK though, Ginger onto Macro Pulse now. 1v2 situation, ooh, our Kranich with a no scope shuts that one down. That is a ninth round for Michigan as we go into the last round of the first. Honestly, a lot of guns being taken out. I mean, obviously they have a lot of money to buy, but uh, you know, that is something that we got to talk about for a second is confidence. And I, I think they they gave, you know, a bit of confidence for Ohio State. I think Ohio State uh, could potentially take this round. And if they do, uh, we could be seeing, you know, if they, if they win the pistol, then, you know, Umish is going to be on CT side. And the CT economy is a fickle one indeed. So uh, it's going to be interesting with this last round of the half. Yeah, absolutely. Three players here now positioned over towards the A bomb site. Ginger Tastic missing the nade onto ramp. In the meantime, Claymorn wins the duel onto Meniscus and Shafe. Hits our Kranich. This double off setup on the side of Ohio State is working wonders right now. Early 5v3 advantage. Just, just scopes from the side of Umish. They actually don't have any guns really to do any kind of assault. It's going to be very hard to take a site with just a scout and an op. And I actually didn't realize how dire Geo's position was. He only has a scout right now. That's insane. And we he's left on an op. So it's a very clunky weapon to try to take any kind of position with. And... I, I'm actually liking this change, but oh, nice shot on Toby from Elyse, and they're going to know that Bomb's probably not far behind, but this Palace Lurk uh, from, I believe that's Ginger, is, is probably going to seal this round off. Oh no! Oh, never mind, Elyse able to flick headshot onto that. Shafe still offs him out of the round, it's just you on the Scout CZ at Tetris. Spots, but misses the shot. Oh. All of Ohio State surrounding him. Geo does get one with the CZ. Shafe shuts that one down, 9-6. That, uh, that double up setup on Ohio State on that last round was the, really the deciding factor as to how they were able to make this 9-6 and not 10-5. Sure. I mean, we see our Kranik at 10, 20 kills. Uh, he's going to have to keep bringing this heat, obviously, to be able to keep his team into this. And at a 9-6 half, uh, if I was BGC, I'd say basically uh, figure out what bomb site our Kranik likes to play and don't go anywhere near that site because... Our Kranich has just got um, his number out for this team, and I don't want to be anywhere near him when he does. Yeah, I entirely agree. It's a great strategy. Treating him almost like a simple or a Zaiwu. He's on a tear, and he's only going to keep going. Yeah, I agree. Ginger Tastic, though, running through apps right now. It's only Claymore and over on A-Ramp. The rest of the team going for this quick B aggression. Ginger Tastic jumping out onto site. The rest of the team following suit, clearing out bench. Meniscus does hit Claymore. Toby taking out a Weege. Rest of the CTs now on Michigan rotating over as they hear that bomb plant. Bilzy hits macro. Toby picking up that USP, sitting in market, waiting for the rotate. Spots one, not able to get the one tap. Who? Still pushing oh, this yeah. uh, this market entrance. Geo able to hit one, and Meniscus from behind takes out Toby. Three v two now for uh, for Michigan. Our Kranich from Apps hits Shave. It's just Bilzy in this 1v2 now. He's able to take out Geo in market. Sitting at bench, gets dinked down through the wall. Oh. 
Oh, Meniscus trying to go for the defuse, doesn't realize that Bilzy's still there. Out of ammo, though, going oh, for the yeah. knife fight. <laughs> and Bilzy wins it out. Bilzy, Bill, my man Bilzy. This man, I don't even know what to say about him anymore. When he hits shots like that, when he's just clutching rounds like that, he is able to isolate the player on site. Our credit could do nothing to help him. He's trying to spam, but that um, bench is just absolutely a shield for uh, any kind of bullet spam. And uh, Billsy just playing it like a pro, and I think we're going to see the full save coming out from Michigan. Yeah, absolutely fantastic play by him. 4K with the knife, even though he goes down to the bomb. Tons of money there. Could have gone for the second round off if he really wanted, but Claymore already out on Pramp. Meniscus not expecting it. Eco frag. Claymore pushing up onto stairs, who spots our Kranich, but is able to get the one deke. Looks like we have a DC on the side of Ohio State looking for a tech pause after this round. Our Kranich pushing up onto stairs. Spots nobody. The Ohio State attack is tucked into stairs. Shafe taking out Macro on the mid push. Bilzy takes out Ouija as well. 2v3 now in favor of Ohio State. Shafe trying to spot into window. Doesn't see anybody. Meanwhile, Toby getting that bomb down with Bilzy on the A bomb site. Shafe takes out Arcranic. It's just Geo on this P250 in CZ. Or in CT, my apologies. <laughs> 1v3. Trying to jump over the smoke. See what he can find. Ooh. Spots one in con. Gets a nice one tap. Bilzy, though, rushes out and trades. Lots of eco damage there on the side of Michigan, but not a round win. Yeah, I mean, we see seven grand right now from Bilzy, and obviously we have a timeout right now with that DC. We'll get a little information on what's going on, and hopefully it gets uh, started soon. But there was there was a time where Arkranic, you know, he, he was looking dangerous as he took that first kill on Clay. I definitely was a little worried from the side of Ohio State if they were going to keep going with it and with the DC as well. It really just gave um, the impression that there was some, some you know, kind of hiccups. Yeah, absolutely. Michigan has repeatedly told themselves that they're an eco team. <laughs> they play better on pistols than they do on rifles. We saw that potent eco power last night. Michigan winning all sorts of upgraded pistol rounds and SMG rounds versus their opponents CSM Silver and Mizzo Club in the lower brackets of the Challengers stage for NACE Star League. As you can see, they're demonstrating that upgraded pistol potential, getting three kills on the eco no round win, though. Sure. I mean, that's still going to be expensive. He was actually able to get the Galil, the only assault rifle, I believe. So that makes it definitely one of the more expensive buys. And they're going to have to go back into this. I mean, obviously, uh, Billzy had, I believe it was about seven grand in the bank. So enough to buy at least another player, an AK or an op, if they want to give it to Clay. But uh, still, it's a, a great anti-eco, and we're probably going to see the full buy coming out of Umish after this. Yeah, hopefully this will be the first buy round for both sides here. Full buy, gun round. Uh, looking to see what Michigan can actually do on these rifles on the CT side as we've just seen uh, upgraded pistols uh, early into the second half. This will really determine uh, the direction that things go for the rest of the game. Sure. I mean, I believe it's uh, a very close match. I, I love to see it. I, I would love to see all 15 or sorry, 30 rounds of uh, CSGO. I mean, I've got nowhere else to be tonight, but watch uh, just this fantastic rivalry. And obviously, as I said before, uh, unfortunately, uh, Umish has already uh, taken the series at 4-1 uh, with that loss from our uh, Overwatch team. And it uh, looks like we might be getting back into the action here, but I'm just here for CSGO, and CSGO is, is definitely turning out to be a very close and interesting game. Yeah, absolutely. 9-8 scoreline here in the favor of Michigan. A deceivingly close scoreline as uh, some of these rounds have gone very, very decisively in either way. Still a lot left uh, of Mirage to go as we see the entire T side rushing towards B. MAC-10 on Bilzy leading the charge. Going to smoke off that molly. Go straight through. Awij sitting here on Van. Gets two. Gets the third. All four. Oh, not able to close it out with the USP. Shafe takes that one down, but Macro's able to trade it out. What a cleanup from the side of Michigan and Iwi. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that all came down to is uh, nobody on site was really flashed. You know, they were able to just have full vision. And I, I mean, that bench position is just absolutely a great way to reinforce uh, the truck player. The truck player didn't even get mollied. He was able to just sit there and uh, no one was really able to clear him. So... Uh, I mean, that's a cleanup, and with the economy growing now for Umish, it's putting into question exactly what uh, Ohio State needs to do to win this round.
Yeah, absolutely. Geo now on the off, something that we haven't seen so far this game, spotting towards top mid. Not going to see anything, though, as Claymore and Ginger taking a little bit of A aggression. That's where the bomb seems to be leaning as well. Ooh, what a nice shot from Claymore. Ginger, though. <laughs> yeah, spotting out onto Ram. It's Ginger, though, who gets the opener onto Meniscus. Our Kranich now spotting into Palace, throws the nade, does not realize that Claymore has already pushed up so close. Spots him, gets the kill, and the guy in ramp on Toby, and the Palace player. Our Kranich with a 3k, shutting down this entire A offense, and getting the bomb at the same time. Yeah, I mean, that was just unfortunate. They lined up for our Kranich, and our Kranich uh, able to capitalize, as we've seen. And, uh, you know, maybe just a few guns to take him out, but overall, I don't expect much from Shafe, unfortunately, here. Ooh, he's clearing him. Yep, Shafe taking out Macro there in Khan. Gets the M4A1S, but is spotted by Ouija. Closes that one out. No save there on the side of Ohio State. Great round by Michigan. Yep, I mean, 3,300 right now for Clay. Uh, I think we're going to see the buy, though. We got to, you know, you can't let it go to 12 8. That's a four round deficit at that point. And I mean, it's just giving Umish. I'm sorry, is that three ops on the side of Umish? The triple op setup for the Michigan CT defense. Our Kranich, Macro, and Geo. Interesting to not see it on a Weege, who typically picks up that secondary oh, no. off, but Geo actually hits the top mid player Claymore instantly. Yeah, this isn't looking too good. Uh, ops are definitely going to be very good against these AKs, and unless they go B, actually B here might be the best way to do it because uh, if they're able to smoke them off and try to get something out of this it, it could actually be pretty dangerous for the umish side but uh, these ops are, are definitely a formidable um problem and oh he's gonna walk right into this cross here if i could see that better yeah shafe here trying to take out this van player geo though spots one of the under players of bilzy does not realize there's another his life still very much in danger. Trying to peek back into it and spots the head of Ginger while jumping. Lucky to get away with his life. Oh, miss a nade. That nade going short of the mark. Molly flushes out window. He doesn't already know that Geo has backed off, playing a more passive angle. Shafe now joining Ginger and going out bottom mid. Toby running around, ditching his spot over on A. Geo hits Ginger, still live here in this window. He has all three so far. Looking to peek back out. Oh, ho, not able to get the no scope onto Shafe. Shafe hits Arcranic as well. Quick conversion into a 3v2 now. Yeah, I wouldn't throw this round away. This round was basically their entire economy. If they lose this round, actually, yeah, uh, their economy is going to be in shambles. So I, I definitely wouldn't be throwing away too many players uh, because you do not have all the money of the world. And honestly, this, uh, you know. Uh, scoreline isn't something that I would start just bringing the mil million ops out and Shave's gonna just try to go for this plant. Actually, he's gonna be protected by his teammate, but unfortunately Toby unable to get the kill and uh, this is a round on the side of Umish. Ooh, dies after time as well. That's a shame. Only gonna have $100 going into this next round. Doesn't look like any of his teammates can buy him either. Anything more than a pistol, at least. He gets a decoy grenade. I mean, you could do something with that. Uh, that's about it. Hey, there we that's go. That's really the only thing you could buy with uh, $50. Maybe a, a Big Mac or something like that if there's a McDonald's around. But, uh, yeah, there's not, not too much he can do um, besides just tell his team uh, good luck, have fun. Uh, most unfortunate. Yeah. Going for the Glock only. We have Tech 9, Double Deeks, and a P250. Only one player. That's Ginger Tastic buying Kevlar. Heavy underpresence. Arcranic, though, takes out Bilzy and Shafe. Ginger is able to trade it out with the P250 headshot, though. Yeah, it gets taken down pretty low, though. Geo able to take down Clay as well, turning it into a 2v4. I mean, not too, too much more they can do here. And yeah, there's another hit there. Yeah, just Toby left on this Deagle. No armor. Does have the bomb, though. Four players left on this Michigan defense. Meniscus playing around a ramp, making sure that nobody can come out. Toby does spot the top mid player. And Gio Gonzo not able to land that one shot as Awish comes up with the op. Nice angle on the right eye peak. Awish takes out Toby. That's that eco round shutdown. Michigan now on 13. If they're able to win this buy round, that might be the game. Yeah, 27 kills from our Kranich. Uh, just absolutely shining above the rest of them. We see Shafe with 19 on the side of OSU. And uh, he's actually the next frag up. But uh, some more of the OSU players really need to step up because uh, Umish is just running away with this right now. Yeah, we're seeing Toby 9 and 17, Claymore 7 and 20. 
Those players really need to step up. Claymore in there missing the op shot on the crossing player. Yeah, you really got to hit that. And uh, that would have definitely brought um, at least a little bit of life potentially back into this as Shafe, their top frag, gets taken down. And, uh, you know, not a lot of uh, map control right now from the side of Ohio State. Yeah, Macro now peeking into apps, able to call it clear, not knowing that Bilzy is still sitting back there. Bilzy now moving back over to T-Spawn, ditching that apps position. We see Toby still in Palace. Ginger Tastic moving over towards uh, a ramp with his teammates. Looks like this is going to be an A hit. Yeah, an A hit. They have uh, three smokes at least, so they can try to smoke off the big ones like CT and Jungle. Uh, maybe, you know, mid site or something like that. And looks like the smokes are going to start flying. And uh, they got to start moving. 53 seconds. They got to get this ball rolling. Ooh. Yep, Claymore entering with the AWP out. Hits a nice shot onto the boosted meniscus. Spots the AWP, not able to take him out. Arcranic with a smoke through the wall shot onto Toby. Iwij there with an AWP through the wall as well onto Claymore. Ginger Tastic, two through the smoke. Nice lineup for him. Bilzy looking to get this bomb down. 2v4 turn 2v2 now on the A-bomb site in this post plan. Yeah, two flashes for each of them. Bilzy's got to try to get out of here. That is a very rough spot to be in. I mean, they can just spam this. And uh, our Kranich now with the op, he's, and a smoke, actually. He's going to be very formidable. And there we go with the peak. And there, <laughs> another shot. Oh, gets both. Even though our Kranich was only on 12 HP, he picks up that op and gets a clean double. Not exactly what I was expecting, but a double on the op to put him up to 30 kills now, 30 and 11. We're seeing a monstrous performance out of our Kranich, above and beyond even what he normally puts up. Yeah, 30 kills. I mean, that's most unfortunate. They got a bomb down, and I think they're going to drop the big green over to, to Clay or something like that. But, I mean, this is just looking a little dire right now for OSU. They, they won the first two rounds after the CT half, and... Uh, I uh, haven't been able to do anything since, and it looks like actually Ginger wants to try to take this up, uh, maybe take a little bit of mid control, but uh, Weege is here to stop him. Yeah, we'll see if Ginger's able to counter the triple op setup coming back out for the University of Michigan. Only one non scoped rifle in the M4A1S on Geo. Oof. Macro pushing up into apps, gets the opener onto Shafe. Claymore able to trade one back on Meniscus. Macro jumping, spots one back in apps, throws the molly to deny that territory and forces Bilzy back. Arcranic there peeking out at bottom stairs, takes out Claymore, calls a ramp clear. Doesn't know that Ginger Tastic with the off is still sitting in Palace. Ooh. Peeks into him, Ginger Tastic with a great headshot onto Arcranic and converts onto Uwij as well. Uh, they needed that and they were kind of waning away from this A-bomb site. So uh, they're able to, oh wow, a dig from Bilzy. What a shot and oh, they're gonna be able to call exactly where he is. and. I can't believe this, but they got the round. Not only that, but look at the money on the side of Umish. There are two players that currently can't afford uh, guns. Those expensive ops uh, kind of hurting them. Yeah, Michigan definitely getting hard punished by that triple op setup. It worked once, not going to oh, work the no. second time around. Oh, our Kranik has brought out the auto, ladies and gentlemen. 31 kills on this guy. Let's see what he can do with an auto. Hopefully, it's not something too scary. Yeah, I mean, the only way you can cancel an auto is an op. So, uh, the op is currently in the correct position of Ginger. I don't think he wants to peek this. I I worry. As soon as they hear... I mean, it's so... You know what an, uh, an auto sounds like. Oh, actually! <laughs> Claymore actually takes the auto out of play. No idea, though, that Meniscus has already called Palace clear. And Weege picks up that auto and trades onto Claymore. A little bit of revenge for his fallen comrade. Ginger now back on the AWP, looking to do another sniper trade. Meniscus on the other side of the map, taking out Toby. Oh, no. Oh. Meniscus still sitting here in T-spawn. In interested in taking this Ginger AWP out of play. Iwij with the auto no-scope onto Bilzy, macro onto Shape. It's just this Ginger AWP, and they know exactly where he is. Know where he is, but... Nice shot onto Iwij. He's opping quite well right now. Only two bullets left. Meniscus not baiting out the shot hard enough. Ginger takes him out. 1v2 now. This is looking promising, but Ginger has to reload. Only one shot left. Well, you got that reload. And uh, not a lot of util to try to retake this uh, 
Ooh, this is going to be quite hard for him. He, as soon as he gets hurt, yeah, they're going to hear that he's taking the bomb over to A, and he's got to be now worried about exactly how far up they're they're currently sitting. Oh, oh. this is trading that op for an this AK. This is going to be rough. Better this is unfortunate. Shots, but macro. Whoa, what is going on? Not able to land the first couple shots. Still closing out onto Jinder Chastic. That auto got traded around to a lot of different hands there. Uh, ended up having actually a pretty sizable impact on the round. Now Michigan on match point up 15 to 9. Yeah, match point. Um, not a lot of money actually from Michigan. They're, they've got some wacky weapons. It's a bit of a hodgepodge of guns. Um, Negev, Scout, M4, AK, and Auto. Talk about a combination. Yeah, OSU still uh, playing with uh, all rifles, so... I think it's mostly a game of uh, trying to avoid this auto, given that they don't have the op to counter it this time, um, and and really just seeing what, what kind of positions they can take, because Arkranic with this auto... Oh, through the smoke. Come on, Arkranic. Yeah, nice shot onto Toby there. Brought down to 16 early, not even knowing it, though. Ginger here pushed up on under. Could catch Uwij on that Negev, but gets mollied off instead. Macro opening up onto Bilzy with that M4, the only really traditional weapon that uh, CTs have here in this round. <sighs> yeah, Toby down low. McCran able to get one more, and now Shave down 46 HP left in this clutch. But uh, oh, meniscus. Macro, Meniscus, and Geo all combine. 16-9 in the favor of Michigan. Things were looking really promising there in the first half of the map. But after those first two rounds of, Mira of the second half of Mirage, Michigan just swept Ohio State in a dominant performance. Sure. I mean, it was definitely unfortunate. Uh, we saw a little bit of fight back. I mean, with that 9-6 half, it was 9-8. And I, I think if, you know, they had won that uh, 18th round, it would have definitely been a different story. But... Uh, you know, obviously we saw what happened and uh, the auto obviously coming in clutch for uh, Ohio State. So uh, thank you so much for being here today and uh, being my co-caster. It was great, uh, regardless of what happened with the win. Yeah, absolutely. It was a fantastic match. Just love to watch some great Counter-Strike on Mirage tonight. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much for everyone sticking around. We have one more in this rivalry weekend. We get to see some League of Legends after this break.
Hello, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. If you're just joining us, welcome to the final match of the University of Michigan versus the Ohio State University rivalry match series. My name's Santa, and joining me is my wonderful co-caster, Moo Cub. How are you doing today? Absolutely amazing. Uh, ignoring the scores of all the previous matches. Yeah, it is quite difficult to get over that. I am very excited about how this series has been going. I'm slightly upset that we did lose one match, but, you know, we do have to give you a little bit of something. You know, there's a saying in esports. The only two that matter are Rocket League and League of Legends, uh, pending this game. <laughs> and sometimes Overwatch. I, I like to add Overwatch in there. I've been seeing that in chat quite a bit of those three games. But this is definitely the most important game, according to me. I'm not biased at all. Um, and that's why we've saved the best game for last, for sure. Uh, sadly, due to time constraints, we had to skip uh, showing the pro ban on the Twitch stream. But we will be showing some picks and be able to have a little bit of time to talk with each other here as they've picked their choices. And we have this three minutes to set up. Yeah, so... We had Lucian, Victor, and Xin Zhao bans for Ohio State, uh, Echo, Master Yi, and Yone for UM. Uh, not entirely sure on the draft order. I believe Hecarim was first picked, uh, and R Riven was the final pick, but everything in the middle I'm not as sure on. Yeah, so some really interesting things here. We found a, we saw a Braun pick out of University of Michigan, which coming from uh, seeing what my University of Michigan players play, Braun is a very underplayed champ on their team, so we'll see how they're able to work that into their composition. It definitely pairs well with the Jinx in bot lane. Yeah. But we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. We do also have a Thresh pick out of the Ohio State University. And that is definitely a huge character for Fluoxetine to play. He is very comfortable in that character. He has a 60% win percentage on out of 336 games of last season. Now we are playing on the preseason patch, but it, his skills will definitely transfer over. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think OSU has got a lot of comfort with the Athelios, with the Fresh, with the Hecarim. Those are all some of the most played champions for those three. Uh, OSU Cyborg is a jack of all trades. He can play anything, so really not surprised to see a kale out of him. Uh, I'm not as familiar with OSU Inferno's Cassiopeia, but I'm sure he'll be very good with it. Yeah, for sure. And those mid players are usually very good at playing whatever character needs to be played to finish off that composition. Seeing the Riven is not a huge surprise out of out of our top player at Humish. Um, seeing the Kindred, very common. And this Rise should be quite potent. Uh, having these new magic items coming out with the preseason patch can be huge for these mages and characters like Rise and Braum to be able to work well with. Um, Cassiopeia, same thing. She should be able to use some of the new items, such as the crown, to be able to be able to survive some of the early burst that you can see from Riven. Yeah, I would expect both mid laners to have a pretty similar build, uh, starting off with a tier and going into a crown, and then turning that into a Seraph's Embrace. Uh, Cassiopeia and Rise both do benefit from the ability haste that's been changed from the ability power. Uh, although it's a bit sad for Rise as he's lost the interaction where you would have your passive turn the AP into mana, mana turn the AP into more mana, etc. Building him a ton of AP, but both are still happy with the new Seraphs. For sure. Now I think definitely the place to be watching today is going to be this bot lane with the Braum and Thresh combo, as well as Jinx versus Aphelios. These players are very closely matched, and it's going to be very tight gameplay down there. As well, watching this top lane, Riven and Kale both have to be quite up close to p push their waves, respectively, and so we're definitely going to see some scrapping there as that goes down. 
Yeah, picking Kale, you always have to be so careful in the early game, and Riven can definitely punish mistakes that OSU Cyborg makes. Uh, it's very difficult to get away from all of Riven's dashes as Kale, so it's going to be interesting to see how he's able to deal with that early pressure. For sure. And I think this Riven is definitely going to be trying to get that early pick to help push that momentum as much as possible. Absolutely. Uh, I expect both junglers to be pathing towards that top lane. I feel that early on it's important to cover for the Kale and make sure that she's not getting dove, while Kindred might be looking to invade or fight with the Hecarim early. But I would expect them to be going towards the top lane as it's more volatile. Aphelios and Fresh and Jinx and Braum are both fine sitting back and scaling more, although OSU Blue and Phloxetine both really like their level 1 fights. Very much so. We'll also have to see how the dragons play out, because some of these newer dragons can be very potent for these characters, for these champions. Uh oh yeah. And seeing how they are able to combine that and deciding when they fight for a dragon can be very huge for these team compositions. Absolutely. We are about to get underway here. As this loads up, this is an exciting match for sure. Yeah, so we lethal tempo for forward. the Kale, Conquer for Cassiopeia and Hecarim, lethal tempo for Aphelios, Glacial Augment Fresh. Uh, he's going to be much less tanky without Aftershock, but a lot more CC potential with the Glacial. Yeah, and that is definitely what I've been seeing Fluoxetine play as of recently in the preseason. He hasn't done anything in this vein before, but I definitely think he can do it with all of his experience on Thresh. Having the Braum with the same thing definitely also kind of reduces the tankiness, but they expected that out of the Thresh, and so I think they're just trying to match as best they can. And keeping up this damage and CC is huge for this bot lane. Yeah, one thing to note in the mid lane, Cassiopeia is starting with a tier and two potions, while Ryze is starting with Corrupting Pot. That most likely means that Ryze is going to try to fight early and use his sustain advantage. Uh, having Corrupting Pot gives you more effective HP than just the two health potions. So expect a lot of early trading to be coming in from Ryze to try to poke out Inferno and make it hard for him to farm. Of course. And all the rest of these champions with their item builds and wards or uh, scanners, sweepers, definitely very common for all of this setup. And quite to be expected. Ooh. We see an early invade coming in here from University of Michigan. Stun onto Phloxetine and dropped, uh. giving first blood to this Kindred who is going to then take this red buff. Yeah, so with Braum, you have so much power with the passive level 1. Uh, UM decided that they could just walk in as free and fight for the red, knowing that in a level 1 fight, Braum is just too useful. So really unfortunate start for OSU's bot lane. Uh, Fresh is going to be behind on levels for a while, and also we're probably going to have vertical jungling here, where Kindred's going to finish off the Raptors and turn back to... Ooh. Ooh, we have this early fight out of Cyborg. Cyborg able to take the Riven down very quickly. Wow, so with Kale... We have quite a bit of scrap right at the start. Yeah, with Kale, you have a very weak early stage, but especially with Lethal Tempo, you have a lot of base HP, and your passive from your E gives you a lot of damage on the autos. And it looks like... Or Aces just was not ready for the amount of damage that Kale can put out. Now we see Omni has pushed up this wave all the way onto Cassiopeia's tower, which is quite common from this rise right at the start. We have a gank coming in Ooh. from OSU, being able to take out the Jinx. Soma just trying to get a kill as he sees his teleport coming in. Soma taken down. Omni now 
trying to just avoid the fight as much as possible and being able to be cleaned up by Miller. Okay. And that is a nice two kills for the jungler for OSU. So that's a really huge play for OSU. They're able to take advantage of Hecarim's pathing. Uh, I don't think that U of M was ready for him to be there. He'd only done his topside camps, and since his red buff and raptors were taken, he had nothing else to do but go for the gank in the bot lane, and it turned out very favorably for OSU. Oh, for sure. And especially because the one worry about having this early gank is that you aren't able to get the scuttle but they were able to trade scuttles and so they're on quite an even footing and now Hecarim is just way ahead. Yeah, so although Cyborg got the early solo kill, both of them not having flash and now that Riven has more of the levels in her belt, lane is still pretty rough for him. Uh, it's not until level 6 where he's going to actually get his ranged form where he can start trying to abuse Riven more. For sure. And we can see some of the summoner spells used on both sides here. Definitely worrying about the ignite and the flash used out of fluoxetine. And the exhaust used out of OSU blue as they are basically down to just the flash for OSU blue. Now that's really important because the Aphelios doesn't really have a great way to get out of any fight other than Fluoxetine's Lantern, which is very important, which is why you'll often see Fluoxetine here hanging back and letting just OSU Blue push forward so that if he gets into a scrap or if anything comes out, he can throw that Lantern and pull the Aphelios out of danger. Now we've got a fight coming in onto the Riven. This... Oh. Ooh. Okay. We've got fights on both sides of the map. Cyborg trying to get out now. Ooh, and Riven goes down. We see a trade of top laners, and now the junglers are fighting. Only coming in to back up his teammate, and just not able to finish the kill. So we see the top lane getting another point ahead with an extra kill. Yeah, so really big fight again for OSU. Uh, they're able to get the two for one, losing only Kale for Riven and Kindred. Plus, Rise roamed all the way up from mid and flashed over the wall to try to finish off Hecarim, but wasn't able to. So Rise lost flash, Kindred lost flash, they lost more kills, and OSU Inferno was able to punish in the mid lane by crashing a big wave that although Riven was able to pick most of it up, it's a lot of experience in CS that Rise lost for coming up and essentially getting nothing for his flash. And we might have a fight for the crap here. And we do. Joseph jumping in to start that engage, and Soma trying to back him up. Both go down. DG Master and o and Timeless now coming in. The top lane bringing down some extra damage. Only now pushing on to Inferno, trying to get this final clean up. Ooh. And as he chases him down, Timeless is coming in here to come up and back him up. And that is three kills for University of Michigan. Okay, so the start of that fight looked really good for OSU, but once they got into the real fight after some of the carries had died, Riven was level 6 there, while Aphelios, Hecarim, and Fresh all didn't have access to their ults. So Riven was able to come in, get a huge triple, and because he was pretty low on mana, they were able to run down Inferno after, and it looks like now Cyborg we do see will be Brom down here, and but... Kindred coming in to take top, and Fluoxetine taking out the Jinx, which is huge. Are they able to take out Cyborg? They just need one more ability, and Cyborg's able to get away. Oh, that wow. is huge for the top lane. So really well played from Cyborg there to get away. Uh, looks like he was able to get rid of a lot of the damage that Kindred had using his ult. And Miller68 looking for a cleanup kill here onto Kindred, and that should be a one shot. And he takes him down. Now we do see this Riven, Timeless, coming in to help this rise in the mid lane, looking for a pick at all. I don't know if the Cassiopeia sees them or not. They don't. And Riven comes in, only Riven, Riven fighting for that and able to take that Cassiopeia without any trouble. 
Now they know this Hecarim is up in the top lane, so they're looking at taking this upper objective, but they're very scared of this Hecarim coming back to contest that. So I think they're both going back to lane. And now we're down in the bot lane, looking at oh, Timeless and Cyborg getting into another scuffle. Yeah. Timeless deciding that this is not the fight he wants to take, or is it? Miller coming in to help back up Cyborg. Pushing him under tower. He's taking a tower shot. That is huge. Ooh. And the extra damage comes out from the Hecarim to shut down Riven. Kindred now there just trying to keep the lane pushed to see if he can get that Hecarim. And Hecarim decides that that is not the fight he wants to take and backs off. Yeah, a little bit of miscoordination there between uh, Riven and Kindred. Riven could have been able to live if Kindred ulted to save her from the turret shot. But the ult came down just a little bit too late to save Timeless there. Uh, looking for another play on Inferno, but I'm pretty sure... Ooh, what a nice sidestep from Omli. A great route into Inferno, and Inferno's down. Cyborg's coming to try and back him up, but he really has nothing that he can do and no time to do it. Yeah, so... Rom is now walking back down towards bot lane just to help push Jinx. I think that Inferno saw Yosef show on the wave there, but a really nice sidestep of the Cassio ult by Omli there. Let's him pick up the kill. A uh, few things to note from this early game. Hecarim's picked up a pretty sizable advantage over Kindred, despite having that early invade go down, and is up about a level and a half, I would say. Up 15 CS with a full Sunderer before 10 minutes. He's looking really strong. Uh, Aphelios also really far ahead of Jinx. Jinx has gotten a lot of assists, while Aphelios has been able to finish off more kills. He's got his uh, shield bow already completed, and he also has the call to keep working on getting an even bigger lead from just farming. Now we see Ohio State is taking their first dragon, and there is no contest out of University of Michigan as Kindred had just backed. Yeah. Seeing that there was so many players stacked up there. With Kindred not on the map, not having ult, and with how much stronger... OSU's bot lane is right now, not really a position to contest for UM, and it looks like we have a dive here coming in onto their bot lane. They've warded it out, and I don't think they're going to be able to continue going for it, but this should be first turret falling. UM will look to trade this with a Rift Herald potentially, uh, although it looks like Kindred's going to pick up a Mark first. Now Rise is heading to meet Kindred for this Rift Herald. Yeah, so since OSU expended more of their resources in the bot lane, Hecarim has to back off. They're not going to be able to contest at this Herald. And also, Riven's able to crash a big wave and deny all of it from Kale. Without knowing where Rise is, it's really hard to walk up. Now that Hecarim is close by, he can walk up, pick up the farm, and try to defend this dive. But since the turret is already down to only two plates remaining, UM can just drop Herald, take the full turret if they choose. It's a really rough position for Cyborg if they go for a dive here. He would have to back off. We do see a fight coming out here. As Joseph and Soma jump over the wall, Hecarim just able to push them off and give them enough of a reason not to go in on Cyborg. Ooh. And the rest of Ohio State is coming in. Soma stuck. Joseph down on low health. Being able to be saved by the kill. Timeless, exhausted, and just trying to get out. Now they're going in to try and retake. We see deaths out of both teams. DG Master taking some turret, as well as Timeless. Trying to find a good point. Ooh, dropping Inferno. the Rift Herald to try and push this tower. Inferno coming in from the back. Timeless going after Joseph. Low here. Ooh, but Miller won't be able, able to get in range before he's taken down. And now Inferno does not have any tower to back him up either. Yeah, so, so that is an easy cleanup for the universe again. Really nice fight from UM. Uh, teleport came in from Omli, and Kindred Ult just bought so much time. They were able to get Braum out, although Riven will fall here. They were able to get Braum out of the ult and pick him off, but with the Kindred Ult, they're able to buy enough time and win the sustained fight. Uh, Inferno coming in really late at the end. 
and a little bit of extracurriculars at the end here. Now we do see these teams trading back and forth quite a bit. So very high kill game. And they are both very aggressive. I think that's part of being against your grudge match competitor. You miss trying to finish off a good sweep of the series. And Ohio State trying to get that second one on the board. Yeah, it's like they say, uh, the only matches that matter are the ones you win and the ones you lose. Well, let's just ignore them. <laughs> so, from this early game, Kindred and Rise are the main benefiters for UM. Uh, Riven is also pretty decently fed, but Kindred has gotten a lot of kills, has finished off the Kraken Slayer, has a zeal now, working towards a zeal item, uh, Ryze has finished his Everfrost and is going towards a Cosmic Drive. And we might have a fight on the top lane here. Inferno having nowhere to run. And Timeless just able to take that kill. Yeah, so... Pretty much the person who's been most put behind from the early game has been Inferno. A lot of ganks towards him as... Oh! That Hecarim ult coming in to save OSU Blue. They're pushing straight under tower. They do not care. Taking a couple tower shots, they are able to take out OSU Blue. And that Ophelios is down, which really hurts this mid lane right now. Only looking for that kill, but Kale able to use her ult to sa survive it. And only does have to push off. Phloxetine getting pushed off here as University of Michigan takes this first tower in mid lane. Yeah, so really close fight in the bot lane. Uh, Kale ult able to keep Cyborg alive, but he does have to back off the turret as too many people from Yumish on the map and with flash rise could just one shot him under turret and get out. Fluxteen just doing some cleaning up here, trying to get more of their vision on the board as University of Michigan has been holding this bottom jungle hostage for quite some time now. They seem to be stacking up in a team fight. Looks to be brewing. Yeah, so s second drag is up. It's an ocean. Uh, should just be Umish's here. I don't think that OSU is in a position to contest. Cassiopeia does have TP, but it looks like she wants to just be pushing up to farm that top wave. Not enough vision set up and two powerful members of UM right now to contest. For sure. Cassiopeia right now a little behind, as well as the Jinx on University of Michigan side. They are my biggest worry for trying to get this team comp fully built, as Jinx hasn't been able to confirm a kill yet, although she does have 9 assists trying to keep her in the game. Yeah, so as I mentioned, the main beneficiaries of the early game for Yumish are Kindred and Rise, but Jinx has not been able to clean up any of the kills. She's stuck with nine assists. Aphelios is more fed. The only problem for OSU is with how fed the Kindred and Rise are, it's hard for Aphelios, who doesn't have that long of a range, to be able to deal with them, especially when they have Kindred ult, and he's going to be stuck fighting without it. For sure. We do see Timeless pushing this wave right back towards the Cassiopeia. Interesting to see if anything will come of it there. Although it looks like Timeless is just interested in getting back to his team now. They do look to be setting up for a team fight in the top jungle here. Looking to dive onto that Cassiopeia maybe. Or just pick up some extra jungle camps. Yeah, so we do have the Hex Heck Dragon map, so you could see Kindred and Braum using the portals there to get into the OSU jungle. They're going to take the second Rift Herald. Again, it's not really something that OSU is in a position to contest, and with turret plates gone, the second Rift isn't as important of an objective. However, if they get a strong fight, clean up some kills, they can use it to push for extra turrets, and it's always a guaranteed large chunk of turret HP. 
and Ryzolt in here for UM. Looking to at least take this tower and then push towards a team fight. Ooh. Inferno and Miller coming in, just trying to stop them from taking this tower, use it for a bit of help to be able to take down this team. And they aren't able to do it, the tower gets taken. Now Miller being saved by the Kale ult, going in. Soma being able to be saved. Soma down. This Thresh ult trying to stop the Riven. The Riven is able to push right through it. OSU blue, this Aphelios not having any way to get out now, just trying to dodge some abilities. Timeless coming in, looking for that final kill, and they are able to pick it up as they push towards this tower and this inhibitor. Yeah, really big fight for Yumish there. Uh, although they were able to get a one shot off onto Kindred, just the superior range, uh, they were able to almost one shot Hecarim before he even went in, making the follow up fight really easy for Yumish. Definitely. Neat. And now that they've taken this top inhibitor, the biggest thing is going to be how they use it. Because if they don't use this top inhibitor to push, they basically get no value out of it and just give Ohio State more money. That's a huge deal where we're going to have to focus. And it seems like Yumish knows this as well as they're staying more focused on these top jungles, looking for any vision that they can hold and any extra knowledge that they can gain using these Hectech portals to gang up on this Cassiopeia, and coming in for another e easy 4v1. Yeah, a lot of... Now Fluoxetine, throwing a hook just to try and scare them. He knows he can't take a fight and backs off. Yeah, I would think that Yumish is going to turn towards Baron here and start it up. With Kindred, Rise, and Jinx, you have a ton of DPS, and... Looks like OSU is going to try to contest, but it's going to be a really tough angle here. Yeah. Well, the biggest thing they have is... Well, it's really just cleaned up. Baron is cleaned up, and it is too late for OSU to even get in and fight. Phloxetine trying to guide some of the Umish members off of the Kale, not able to do it successfully, and both members go down on OSU. Uh, not entirely sure what the flash there was for from Kindred, but with the Baron buff, Yumish is going to try to siege more of the inner turrets for OSU, maybe even take the Nexus turrets here if they find the angle as an engage comes in for Miller, but Kindred ult just negates it. Big Cassiopeia ult, but Braum blocking the Cassioes. Yumish just pushing a little bit, losing some members, coming back in now that they have their fourth member. They've just lost Joseph, only just trying to get some space so that they can back out. And they are going to run away with their tail between their legs, just trying to fight another day here. As they've pushed quite a bit of the wave up towards those inner turrets, and now are just going to regroup. Yeah. They want to save that Baron buff as much as possible to be able to use it again. So a little bit of greed there from Yumish. Uh, they won a fight at Baron, and then they sort of just kept pushing for more, even though there was a hex hex drake up, as Cyborg should just die here in the 1v1, but needed to back off a little bit. Uh, OSU is now on two drags to Yumish's one. If OSU is able to stall out the game, they have the Kale who's scaling and picking up levels. They have Ophelios, they have Cassio. They have the late game threats to hang in there with Yumish if they can just stabilize from their current position. Yeah, the big goal for Yumish right now is to finish this game early. They are ahead, they are losing their gap, and so they really need to just push for kills, push for any damage that they can get to put pressure on OSU and hope that they mess up. Ooh, The big grab coming in from Fluoxetine onto Omli under this tower, he's not going to be able to get out in any way as the rest of University of Michigan back off slightly. Looking to take this tower still though, they really are pushing down towards bot. And we're going to see a four versus four here as Ophelios tries to get back in time. They are able to take it, although Joseph goes down. Yumish now looking to just clear this wave and back up. 
Yeah, so a lot of just overstaying from you, Mish, here. Uh, only getting a little bit too aggressive with the Rizal, and then not respecting the fresh hook, getting hooked under turret. OSU is picking up some gold. Uh, the inner turret is a big loss, but with objective bounty picked up on the dragon, with some of these shutdowns going over, they've managed to close the gold gap to only 6,000. And it is just getting smaller. The biggest issue right now with Yumish is confidence, as you said. And they are getting too confident where they're taking fights where they shouldn't be instead of just pushing objectives or using the Baron buff that they had a little bit left of. They really just went all in on trying to get that turret and trying to get a couple picks and not respecting the extra damage that Cyborg and Blue do now compared to when they last fought them. Yeah, you can afford to be this aggressive when you are as ahead as UM is, though. Uh, they're still sitting comfortably in the driver's seat. They picked up a Baron. They're up 6,000 gold. Uh, big level leads for uh, Riven now, who's three levels up on Cyborg. Uh, Jinx is a little bit ahead of Blue, and Omli is staying even with Inferno in experience. Now we do have some extra wards coming out from Ohio State as Timeless just backs off. Yeah, so able to reclaim some of this jungle now. Uh, they're going to try to fight for the red buff, it looks like. But I'm not sure this is an angle that OSU wants to fight to lose the game over. They're just going to back off and let Yumish take it. Yumish now pushed all the way to the inhibitor turrets on every lane really trying to push this advantage as much as they can. Yeah, so one thing to note, although they took an inhib early on, they weren't able to push with it to end the game, so that was a lot of extra gold that OSU was able to pick up from that top lane, and their inhibitors back up now, defending their base once more. Looks like Kindred is getting spotted out in jungle. They know he's there, and so they might be looking to take a pick here as Kindred backs off from this fight, not interested. Yeah, so the next main objective that these teams are going to be fighting for is Baron, coming up in about 30 seconds. You can see Yumish is already getting set up for it. A lot of wards in the OSU jungle. You can see one in the bush there. Uh, another control ward added. Lots of bushes, or sorry, wards for the corridors into Baron for OSU. It's going to be really hard walking through all of that vision to try to get into Baron to fight it. Yeah, University of Michigan will definitely know they are coming, although they do have the Hecarim with the ult that can come in at a last minute and just try to clean up the Baron if possible. Being able to go in on that Hecarim just checking to see if Humish is starting to attack. They haven't. And now a little scuffle as they stage for a team fight over this Baron. I'm not sure how Ohio State is feeling. They might just go in for enough damage to try and push them off this Baron. Although it looks like they are going in. Soma getting grabbed, pulled back, down. We have Timeless coming in from the back line, being able to clean up some. Only doing extra damage onto and Inferno. Kale using the ult to go in. On two, not being able to work. OSU Inferno being able to trade at least to get out of that. And an ace out of University of Michigan here. Yeah, so one big thing, with Kindred dead, Yumich decides that they're not able to push for the end. Uh, it would have been 15 seconds on Hecarim, would have been 20 seconds on Aphelios. With Kindred, maybe you're willing to try it, but without they're going to settle for just taking the Baron, and then Rise R and Riven will most likely turn their eyes towards the Hexec Drake. They're going to get both of the buffs here, uh, but a really big kill from Inferno to keep the game going. Most definitely, and getting that Baron buff is huge now that they're pushed up to these inhibitor turrets. It looks like Ohio State 
is not as interested in pushing the Hextech Drake until they've pushed that mid lane out a bit. But they really need to be focused on it as University of Michigan is already poisoned to take the Drake. Yeah. And they are in the works of taking the Drake and OSU just deciding that that is not worth the fight backing off slightly. Yeah, so the advantage you get from having those two early drakes for OSU is the luxury of not having to fight for this one. Uh, it's not Hexex Soul, and we're far enough away from it that absolutely no need to go for a fight here on unfavorable terrain. Instead, they are looking to defend the base, uh, picking up an objective bounty and a turret for Kale, giving some much needed gold as opposed to trying to go for a fight and potentially losing the game there. Right now, the name of the game is Objectives, as both teams are pushing just to try and save their own base, or topple it over. It looks like Umish is interested in trying to finish the game right here, right now. And they are rotating down to the bot lane to try and push for this last inhibitor tower, as Riven goes towards the top to clean up that inhibitor again, and open up both lanes above. And... University of Michigan down here, poising for this last turret and Ooh. trying to get all three lanes open. A hook coming out from Fluoxetine. Soma getting grabbed. Soma's low on health, able to get out as Joseph goes in just to try and push them off. So Riven also here in the back line, adding extra pressure. So one big advantage that OSU has here is that they're right next to their own fountain. They're able to reset and refuel on the health. Well, they might not have time to fill up fully. A big fight coming out here as the Hecarim goes down. OSU Inferno taken down. Fluoxetine able to be bursted down. OSU Blue getting saved by the Kale Old Cyborg trying to get out of there using a shield. A resurrection onto OSU Blue, but it will not be enough as University of Michigan aces Ohio State University and is able to claim this first map. Yeah, well, everyone loves a good comeback story, so looking forward to seeing it from OSU as I'm sure they'll be able to take the next few games in the series. For sure. Now that was a very close game at the start as OSU added quite a lot of pressure. But seeing University of Michigan come back, be able to at least add enough pressure or extra from taking that top lane so many times, pushing that kill basically behind, making sure that they had enough pressure to be able to hold objectives and be able to push with their jungler and their mid. Basically, bot lane wasn't much of a factor until very late in the game which was very difficult. Now we're going to go on a short break until we set up for the next map. We'll see you then.
Welcome back, everyone. Yumish was able to complete their complete their first map with a win as we move into the second map of the League of Legends University of Michigan versus Ohio State rivalry match series. Mukab, how do you feel about that first match, and what do you think these teams are looking to do for the second match? So, there were a lot of good things in the early game for OSU. Uh, obviously, the Riven solo kill by Kale at level 1, there was a lot of good skirmishing, but the game started slipping away from them. If they can find a way to put all of the pieces together and just close out with a strong early game, I think OSU can take the second match. On the flip side, Yumish is looking to do pretty much the exact same thing that they did before. Their comp is pretty different, uh, more diving from the Yone, from the Hecarim, where before they were letting OSU dive into them, but Yumish trying to have just the same clean kind of game, fix some of those early game mistakes, OSU looking to run away with the early game even more. For sure, and one of the things that I think is most interesting about these picks for this second game is that Yumish has taken the Thresh away from Fluoxetine. He was seen as a very good player for OSU, being able to land quite a few very important hooks to push off University of Michigan. He has now been forced to switch to the Blitzcrank, which he is very good at as well, but it's definitely no Thresh. Yeah, so with the Blitzcrank, uh, it's very favorable into Fresh. You're able to pull the range champion in close to you, and especially if Fresh is taking Glacial Augment in this game, which he's not going for the Aftershock. Once you pull Fresh, he is very squishy, and although Fresh can Lantern in ADC, you can't Lantern yourself. For sure, and it is very important as we see Ohio State immediately looking to try and find a pick in jungle unable to find one as they have kind of poised for a separate push you Ohio State basically backing up and resetting yeah so some early vision gone there for OSU uh typical with a blitzcrank especially with Draven by very strong level ones they want to look in for a fight Yumish knows they want to do it, dropped a ward, uh, dropped one in the lane as well as at the entrance to the jungle. They were expecting it pretty much. And you can see OSU's a little cautious to walk in here. Uh, it is very expensive on the mana for Blitzcrank to throw out a hook like that, but you know, hopefully he just needs to land one in lane, and that's all Draven and Blitzcrank need to get a kill. Now we do see the lethal tempo on Ash versus a Halo of Blade on Draven. Very common rune picks for both of these champions. An Aftershock on Thresh, definitely going for more tanky build compared to Fluoxetine's build on Thresh, which shows kind of a slightly different mantra between these two support players. Yeah, so very early Flash Force out by Fluoxetine. Uh, big hook onto Ash. Didn't want to risk uh, having the Ignite drop, having them try to kill her. Just decided to save the HP, flash now, but something that OSU can look to punish. On the flip side, Joseph is here. Uh, he's doing kind of an unusual clear and is looking for an early gank here. With Syndra roaming down to punish as well, OSU's got to be careful here. So they do back no, off accordingly, do. and it's a pretty big loss for Hecarim in this case. Uh, he started on his red buff, cleared his raptors, and went to Krugs, and now, ooh, coming in for a gank. Looks like he's going to be able they to catch up to OSU Blue and knock him back, and that will be a kill on the Draven. Blitzcrank will follow shortly after. And Vi was poisoning for a gank here in the mid lane. Now seeing the Hecarim in bot is going to try and invade this top jungle, take this camp that Hecarim left on the table for these kills. Yeah, so there is a cost that you have to pay going for that gank. Uh, it's really nice that it works out, but Mil er, Miller68, able to track him, knows that his topside camps will still be up, takes the blue buff, should be able to get the Gromp and get out. 
Now we do see Omni coming in to try and stop him from getting over this wall. He is able to jump over the wall, only sending out an attack, not able to hit him, and everyone just backs off. Yeah, so Flash Force out there from Miller68. Uh, good recognition by Yumish that he's going to want to punish with the counter invade. And important to Flash the Syndra stun, not allow Yone and Hecarim to get in for some follow up. Uh, Yosef is going to help push in the wave here, help Timeless get off a nice reset. Yumish able to take this top scuttle and bottom scuttle still looking for a taking. We'll see if Fi is able to get down there in time, or if the bot lane will push up it and take it for OSU to try and keep this even and vision. Ooh, Flash Miller Shane 68 here. coming in here on only, and able to take him down and burn him. Joseph coming in here, trying to clean up. Inferno able to jump away using that Flash. Miller just trying to keep enough fight here. And we see quite a fight coming out of here taking on the Thresh and Soma. Miller trying to get out and not able to make it out. TP coming in we have from a Cyborg coming and from, in here from Yon. But not going to be able to find anything here, and the early skirmishing going in the favor of Yumish. Uh, and Cyborg is going to fall here as well. Disaster in the early game for OSU and a 2,000 gold lead at 5 minutes for University of Michigan. Uh, the, no. Sorry, the one the problem with rotating up. Ooh, Yosef not able to finish off the kill onto uh, Miller six onto Inferno. Miller sixty eight able to come in and clean up, and with the Predator, Loxetine and Blue should be able to just run down the Ash here and cash in for Draven. Big shutdowns given over to OSU. Just as I was praising Yumish's early game, they sh again showed their tendency to overstay and overforce, trying to be greedy. And that 2,000 gold lead has just completely evaporated down to only 400. Blitzcrank now, pushing up towards mid, just to try and push off only, who is low on mana, able to just back up, and Blitz will go back to base. Yeah, so one thing you can see with the Ash versus the Draven and the Blitzcrank, Draven and Blitz are very strong, but if they start losing, there's really no way for them to get out. And Ash is really good at chasing you down with the slows, with the lethal tempo, in an extended fight. So you've got to be careful. If you stay for too long, the Ash can punish you. Now Jax has gone back. We do see Blitzcrank just making sure that there are no extra wards as they prepare an idea of just clearing out this bottom lower jungle. Thresh and Syndra looking to make sure they don't try and take this dragon. And we see everyone just trying to play it safe, get a good spot, a dive in from Inferno, and just immediately back realizing that there are way too many players here in the mid lane to be able to take only out. Yeah, that's the safety that LeBlanc provides. You can jump in with the distortion and you always have a way out. Uh, the biggest beneficiaries of the early game for both teams are the jungle or and the ADC. Uh, free kills for each of those positions for UM and some big shutdowns for the Vi and the Draven. Now Vi getting spotted out here in this lower jungle, but there's not much that they can do about it as their wave is getting pushed right to their tower and DG Master and Soma just have to stay there and try and stop this wave from taking as many plates as possible. Vi coming in here. Yeah, just an absolute one shot using the Vi ult and some good turret. Ooh, the Ignite able to finish off the kill. In the top lane, OSU Cyborg winning the 3v1, killing Joseph, and big play for OSU getting the 2 for 2 in the bot lane, as well as a free kill in top in a very disadvantaged situation for Cyborg. 
OSU Blue now just pushing this wave as much as possible, needing the Vi to come back so they can start taking this dragon. Hecarim and Thresh both running for this dragon to make sure that they haven't started it. They did put a command ward just to make sure that they always know. Yeah, so while there was only one extra kill in that play for OSU, being able to only invest three people in the bot play and not having to send anyone else to help Cyborg in the top play meant that OSU Inferno was able to push her mid plates and Cyborg stayed alive to defend, although we have an engage here for UM going on to OSU Blue. A really nice hook from Phloxetine, and he might be able to sacrifice his life for Blue here. A beautiful cleanse, and OSU looking to turn here. Inferno coming in, looking to finish off Joseph, and the kill will go over to Vi, and both sides will walk away here. Now the Syndra is just being able to push a little bit forward. She's tentative, staying under, staying towards the tower, but always having an escape from the LeBlanc, who was down in bot lane. Now Yone here, looking Ooh, to... What a hug! Ooh. Unfortunately not able to force Ash to take turret aggro, doesn't have the ignite, and Phloxetine has to be a little bit careful here. Now it looked like that Thresh ultimate was used slightly poorly out of Soma. It might do with the fact of his inexperience on Thresh as much as Fluoxetine's. Although he is quite well versed, he may only know a couple combos comparatively. Yeah, so one big takeaway, uh, OSU sent LeBlanc down to that bot play. So... Both teams have gone for plays where one mid laner is roamed and the other hasn't, and they've both been able to get gains from the turret plates and from the loss of CS in mid for it. Now University of Michigan, after they've pushed that wave towards Cyborg, starting here to take the Rift Herald to try and be able to get some plates and some extra money to try and push a lead because right now, gold is all tied up between both teams. Yeah, so with the early advantage for Hecarim, had push in the top lane, they were able to pick up a Rift Herald. Uh, OSU wasn't able to respond yet, and a long arrow coming in, narrowly avoided by Inferno, with a fresh hook follow-up that could have been a kill if he wasn't as fast with his reaction time. Clearing up some wards here, it looks like they were interested in a fight, being able to just be pulled out by the Thresh. Yeah, you can really see the power of the Thresh there for the Ash and the Syndra. If they're ever caught out of position, all it takes is a lantern to pull them to safety. Very important with your mobile carries, especially when you have as much of a pick comp as OSU does, with the Blitzcrank and the Vi being good at punishing people caught out of position. Now, there are no wards for OSU on Dragon. It looks like University of Michigan is going to push here. Yeah, so big flash lantern in from Soma. Uh, with the 3v2, they're able to kill OSU's bot lane once again. Uh, eight kills for you, University of Michigan, in this game on OSU's bot lane. More than OSU as a team have picked up so far. A lot of focus on punishing the Straven and Blitzcrank, who are very powerful in the 2v2. As I've mentioned, don't have a good way of escaping if the fight starts going poorly. And we have a look here from Inferno and Miller, but a little bit of miscoordination, knocking him out of the route with the Vi-Q. Now, University of Michigan able to push down that first turret with the Rift Herald. They're going to let the Rift Herald just walk down that lane, be cleaned up by OSU Blue to push this lane back towards. But University of Michigan have already gotten those plates, which is huge. Yeah, so it's our first dragon of the game that we're, that's being looked at here for University of Michigan, meaning it's going to be a late soul that comes up.
now oh. timeless, and Cyborg just pushing this wave back and forth. We do see Vi looking for a gank here. Cyborg pushes a slightly too early and able to just scare off Timeless, who decides that it is not worth staying in this lane for something that might come up. Yeah. Inferno jumping in on Omli here and just backing off after getting in too deep. Yeah, so you see the power of the crown there for Omli. Uh, LeBlanc jumps in and tries to trade, but most of that is negated by the crown. Very useful when you have as much of a pick comp as OSU does, mitigating their initial burst with the crown. Now we do see this 1-3-1 one, one kind of transitioning in as the ADC and support come into this mid lane and our mids go to bot lane. Yeah, so what University of Michigan wants to do here, they've picked up a gold lead again, although there's been a lot of back and forth. They want to leverage the Hecarim around the map, look for plays where they have the numbers advantage. OSU, similarly, they're very good at picking people off with the Blitzcrank, with the Vi, both with Predator. They're just trying to find a mismatch, an opportunity where they can get onto the Syndra, get onto the Ash, get onto the Fresh, and pick up a kill with a numbers advantage. Now we do have a little bit of poke back and forth here in the mid lane. Although nothing is going to come of it. Joseph finding this ward, being able to take that out, and most players just going back to their standard operations. Yeah, so the next main fight that we should see is over the dragon. Uh, coming up in 245. As I mentioned before, because of how late the first dragon was taken, Soul isn't a particularly pressing concern here for OSU. If they feel that they're not in a good enough position or too weak to fight this drag, they don't have to worry about it. They can give it up to University of Michigan, try to scale up more and get more of their spikes before they try to contest one. And University of Michigan right now doing much better at their confidence level, knowing when to push and when to not. A couple of Fluoxetine coming in, being able to stun, get burning that flash, but Joseph coming in now, and a teleport from Omli allows them to counterattack, doing damage to Miller, although it looks like he may get away. Ooh, very nice interrupt Joseph by pushing Miller in, there. going for this final and able to clean him up. Cyborg just trying to stay out of harm's way, trying to get out, but it's not possible as there are four Umish members taking those three kills. Yeah, so looking to try and catch the Yone off there, but very well read from University of Michigan. Hecarim was in the area and able to respond. Syndra was able to teleport in and Fresh walked up from mid to help clean up a clean free for zero for UM. Now, although they did lose three players, it's not all bad for OSU as they were able to get LeBlanc that last tower on the bot lane. Although she didn't have her teleport up, she was able to push and get a little bit of money from that to try and help her stay in the game. Yeah, there's always a trade-off when you have a numbers advantage. Uh, you're always able to return something on the other side of the map. And Inferno was able to do it nicely, picking up a turret there. Uh, no objective bounties yet, but a nice amount of gold in his pocket, helping make sure that he's as powerful as he can be before this dragon fight coming up in about 45 seconds. And it definitely looks like OSU wants to fight for it. They're posturing heavily around it, and we're going to see both teams try and fight for Pryo in the mid lane before it. Now, an interesting thing, both of these teams do not have any vision on the lower side of this dragon. Now, OSU is going to find out that Syndra is down in the bot lane and be able to grab one pick and know that they have a slight numbers advantage now that Yoni is fighting Cyborg up here on top. And they know Syndra is still down bot, so they're really looking for taking this Hecarim and definitely pushing towards this dragon. Yeah, so it looks like you, Mish, has decided, all right, we've lost our support. We're not going to try fighting for this drag. Uh, they probably feel that their team comp is able to scale harder with the Syndra, with the Ash, with the Yone. They aren't looking for 
an unadvantageous fight here where they have to be walking into OSU vision. And we have another Hex Hex Soul. So again, the portals for both teams to play around with. For sure, and that definitely opens up a lot of new opportunities this preseason patch, being able to move around the map quicker and without burning any utility, it can be major for any member getting across the map, trying to get for ganks, trying to transition to another lane. It can be huge. Yeah, so, ooh, a very close arrow that you could see on the minimap, almost picking off OSU Blue as he tried to do the Raptors, but able to dodge away from it without having to blow either of his summoner spells. Hecarim now looking for a little bit of extra vision, finds the Jax, and knows why is there not interested in taking it, just interested in letting him know that he knows. LeBlanc now going back as she pushed the wave far enough and wants to take a little breather. And a 20 minute Baron being started up here by the University of Michigan. Uh, OSU will know that they're on it and that should get them to back off. Just trying to check if OSU did have the necessary vision, see if they could sneak something. With a frozen heart, Hecarim's able to do it fairly healthily. Didn't lose very much for the attempt. And OSU doing well to recognize that they could try it and being there to respond. Now we do see quite a strong mid push here. As most of OSU transfers to other lanes, we're trying to get space. A quick pick on Miller here. Grabbing him. Fluoxetine also going down. LeBlanc trying to poise to just get add a little bit of pressure to this tower. Rooting some of Yumish's players, but not enough to save this tower. As Yumish drops the... As Yumish goes back towards Baron. Yeah, so with the pick onto the jungler, it looks like they're going to start this drag up. Uh, really tough for OSU to contest, but it looks like Inferno and Cyborg want to. Uh, they do have a lot of health off the Hecarim and the Fresh. But a nice hook lands onto Inferno, and he will die in the CC. What a hook coming in from Soma. Cyborg and Blue still trying to contest. All of the members from Yumish are low here. Vi flashing in, unable to get the smite. Baron goes to UM. They will get a kill, traded back in a second, but with the Hecarim, uh, Yumish will be able to run down all of the members of OSU here. The flash, not enough, is Cyborg just slowed too much by the Ash, and it is a, an ace for the University of Michigan and the Baron buff. Five members for two. And that is just so hard being Miller, trying to get a quick pick on that turn before any jump. Slightly too early, smite slightly too early, and not able to complete the kill on that Baron, and just dying in the act of trying. Yeah, it was a really unfortunate position where Cyborg probably wasn't able to get close enough to actually see the Baron health. They knew that it was getting low, Miller took a shot, went in, tried to get lucky with the smite, but Yosef holding on to his and able to secure it for UM and a fairly substantial gold lead here as we're going into our third drake of the game. I don't think that OSU will be in a position to fight it. But it's looking like actually UM is deciding to go for a top lane turret instead and force OSU to come into them. And after getting the top lane turret, then they'll turn back into the dragon, make sure that they aren't the ones who have to walk into OSU, and OSU has to be coming into them. Now they are just going to keep pushing this fight here, trying to get this fight to happen. They are definitely trying to stay a little bit away from power, although it doesn't look like it's going to stop going, going in for Miller, taking that pick in mid, and now a top fight breaks out. Ooh, a little bit of greedy pathing there from Miller.
trying to jump over the wall and get back under the safety of his turret, but Ione able to just run him down and finish off the jungler. And with that pick, Yumish might be looking to end here. They have the numbers. They have the power. They have and the Here's the engage buff. from Hecarim going in onto OSU Blue. They're going to be able to trade off Joseph, hopefully, but just unable to find the damage. No one has gone down yet. Yone will finish off the Blitzcrank, but a lot of health loss for the Umish members. And OSU Blue taken down. Huge Yone ult coming in to finish off Miller and Cyborg. And it looks like that's going to be the game as Umish coming in and finishing a clean 2 to nothing sweep, taking down OSU and finishing them off here. What a intense game. It was much tighter than the first one. Pretty great that we won two in a row. I didn't expect anything less from my team. Uh, but definitely a little sad that we didn't see more of a fight. It was very close. Some team fights went back and forth. Great trading back and forth. And some great plans between both teams. All right, so we're going to be heading to a break now. Thank you very much. Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the broadcast. And this is the part where I have to admit defeat. If I had my little white flag, I would wave it. 
Six to one, bad guys win. Uh, my name is Kenneth Urquabot. I'm the president of the Buckeye Gaming Collective here at Ohio State. I'm joined by Spencer or Montaigne, current president at the University of Michigan. So go ahead, do your gloating. Let's get it out of the way. Yeah, I guess this has been a good year for us. We won in football, won the championship today, and now here. Um, yeah, with the win, with the W tonight. Um, but uh. thanks for putting up such a great grudge match. The production quality was great. Um, you guys did a really great job this year and uh, give you a pat on the back as condolences. <laughs> Yeah, I know, for sure. It definitely has been a lot of fun. I always look forward to this event quite a bit every year. Uh, it's a nice little way to showcase a bunch of our different teams, especially from our side. A lot of the teams that we don't get to broadcast a lot of content from on our channel. Um, so it's a really good way to kind of draw things together. And, you know, what better time to do it this time of year when everyone's, uh, you know, trying trying to uh, feed off of that football energy a little bit. But I guess we'll be going to the Rose Bowl. Like That's something. Like, maybe we'll beat Utah, I guess. Hopefully we'll crush them. We'll figure it out. But in any event, folks, uh, you know, to your point about the production, uh, Spencer, we have had 90 students work on this broadcast throughout the entire day, whether those be the 25 or so players from each school, whether that be production people or team managers or uh, other folks that were trying to coordinate logistics for this event overall. We have had 90 students and coordinating 90 students for one day for an entirely student-led initiative is absolutely absurd. So we thank you all for your support on behalf of all 90 of those students from both The Ohio State University and the University of Michigan. It's been a lot of fun uh, to be here, of course, behind the scenes, and to be, you know, I, I think I'm pretty sure it was me. I'm going to take credit for the idea of being like, hey, why don't we do like a rivalry day marathon? Like, why doesn't that exist? Um, that was me three years ago, and that's where we are today. Uh, so it's been a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to seeing where this event goes in the future. Yeah, thank you, Kenneth, for putting out this event. And again, thank you to all the staff. Uh, all the people from both, both schools who put in so much work on this day. Um, you know, the stream was great. Broadcasting was great. And, of course, thank you to the events for coordinating everything. Um, yeah, definitely looking forward to... Um, I have been playing this uh, for quite a few years as well, uh, mostly on the R6 side. Uh, but this time, you know, think, seeing it put together as uh, part of the admin team was really cool. And it was a great idea, of course, and uh, yeah, thank you again for putting this together. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a pleasure to share this all with you, the viewers, as well at home. Uh, I think we've pretty consistently kind of grown throughout the course of the day. It'll be interesting to see like, what our average viewer count was, but typically it's one of our most successful broadcasts of the year, so thank you all for being supportive of the work that we've been doing here. Uh, this is, you know, kind of one of the first things uh, to come. Uh, we've actually been broadcasting the entire day. The reason why, you know, our cast has had masks on, we've actually been broadcasting in person the entire day out of the broadcast studio in Lincoln Tower as a part of the Ohio State Esports program. Uh, so be looking f more out for broadcasts of this kind of quality, and we'll just be continuing to grow on from here. It's a little bit more to look out from, from us. Uh, Spencer, you got anything that you're excited for moving forward with your club? Yeah. Um, in the past year, we just received official sponsorship. As you can see, we got this really cool jersey now. Um, hopefully, we can work forward uh, work with the university to move forward with establishing more facilities and more events just like you you guys are. Um, yeah, congratulations on your on your broadcasting stuff. It looks really great again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a fun year. We're going to have so much more things in store with Michigan Esports, um, and I'm personally really looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a pleasure, uh, of course, working on this event for the past few years. I would love to be able to stand up here and thank every single person, but 90 people is an extremely long list. So you know who you are. If you've worked on this event, thank you so much for supporting the vision, supporting the goals of both of these organizations as we try to strive to make esports and gaming uh, a more legitimate activity on campus for collegiate students. But with that, folks, that's going to do it from us here tonight. Thank you so much for joining us over the course of the day. Cannot say that enough. And we hope to see you back here next time, whether that be on the University of Michigan side or on the Ohio State side. We'll see you next year. Take care, everybody. Thank you.